Section 1 And these are the judgments which you shall set before them. Rabbi Shimon says that the title verse refers to the rules concerning reincarnation, the judgments of souls that are to be sentenced according to their punishable acts. One Rabbi Shimon opened with the words, And these are the judgments which you shall set before them. Shema 211. Also in the Aramaic translation, it speaks of judgments. These are the rules concerning reincarnation, namely the judgments of souls that incarnate again in this world to be sentenced each according to its punishable acts. Section 2 If you buy a Hebrew servant, Rabbi Shimon continues by saying that unperfect souls are forced to be born again until they have finished correcting the six levels of Chesed, Bure, Tiferet, Net, Sachat, and Yezid. Only when they are from the aspect of the seventh, the Shechinat, are they allowed to go free. We learn of the three souls, the one called the maidservant, the one called a Handmaid and the one called the king's daughter, Rabbi Shimon also speaks of the maidservant that is the Neshama of Briah, the manservant that is the Ruash of Yetzirah, and the handmaid of the king's daughter that is the Nefesh of Asiya. A righteous man can also be given a Nefesh of Atzalut and a Ruash of Atzalut, and even a Neshama from the aspect of Ava and Iama. If he has more merit, he is given Yudhe Vavhe, which is the secret of man in the upper way of Atzalut, and he is named after the image of his master and will have dominion over the fish of the sea. He will have power throughout the firmaments too. If you buy a Hebrew servant six years, he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free. Shema 212. Rabbi Shimon said to them, Friends, the time has come to reveal some hidden mysteries concerning incarnation. If you buy a Hebrew servant six years, he shall serve, namely the soul is required to incarnate either because of sins or because it had not completely fulfilled. During its lifetime the Torah and the precepts it is forced to come back to this world and don a body that is to be born again and finish what was imposed on it for the seventy years of life in this world if it is of the aspect of the angel Metatron in the world of Briah which comprises six levels of Chesed, Bure, Tiferet, Net, Sachat, and Yezid it is written of it six years he shall serve it is required to incarnate only until it finishes correcting the six levels Chesed, Bure, Tiferet, Net, Sachat, and Yezid of the same place whence it was taken namely Metatron 3 but if the soul is from the aspect of the Sheshana which is seventh namely Malchut of Atzalot that is seventh to Chesed, Bure, Tiferet, Net, Sachat, and Yezid surely it is written of it and in the seventh he shall go out free for no work pertains to a righteous man who merits a soul from Malchut of Atzalot as he is of the aspect of Shabbat to which no work namely extracting Mokin applies since no work or Enslavement are affixed to him, it says of the soul that originates there, and in the seventh he shall go out free, no enslavement binds it for in the meanwhile behold an old sage coming down to him, he said to him, Rabbi, if this is so, what about the addition of the soul that is derived from it of which it says in it, you shall not do any work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, nor your maidservant, Shema 2010, 5, Rabbi Shimon said to him, old man, do you ask this assuredly, it was said of the soul of a righteous man which is from Atzalat that though it had to come down to incarnate in all these, namely even in a manservant or a maidservant or cattle which are wills, namely in the world of Asiyah or in any other living creatures whence human souls originated is written of it, you shall not do any work, this is the meaning of you shall not compel him to work as a bondservant, Vayikra 2539, namely you shall not compel a righteous man who is Shabbat to work as a Bon servant Metatron who is a weekday six yet old man Shabbat is an only daughter namely Malchut and the soulmate of the righteous who is also Shabbat namely according to the verse and in the seventh he shall go out free if this is so what is the meaning of if he take another wife Shema 2110 he said to him a distinction should be made there she is the secular part of Shabbat and the verse if he take another wife refers to IT for there is another kind of non-holiness that is not the secular part of Shabbat but of the impure handmaid he said to him so what is the secular part of Shabbat he said to him it is a maidservant in Briah who is the body of the only daughter as the only daughter who is Malchut of Atzalat is clothed in it as a soul in the body it is of it that it says if he take another wife seven come and see there is a soul called the maidservant a soul that is called the handmaid and a soul that is called the king's daughter each is named after the place whence it Originates or where it incarnates, there is a man here, namely a man that sells his daughter for a maidservant of whom it says Hashem is a man of war. Shemot 153, namely Zeir and of Atzalot, and a man of whom it says, and the man Gabriel. Daniel 921 in the world of Briah, this is the meaning of, and if a man that is the Holy One, blessed be he, sell his daughter to be a maidservant. Shemot 217, namely the soul of Atzalot, called the only one of her mother, Shirhashirim Hashirim 69, to incarnate in the world of Briah, to which belongs the aspect of the body of the Shechinah that is called a maidservant. Aid for this reason, if the soul that requires incarnation is the daughter of the Holy One, blessed be he, namely drawn from Malchut of Atzalot, it must not be thought of that it would be sold to a foreign body of the Klippa, where the evil inclination of the aspect of Samael rules heaven forbid one would say so, for it is written, I am Hashem, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to. Another Yeshua 428, which is the evil inclination for if the soul is from Atzalut, even though it incarnates into the world of Briah, no work or enslavement to the Klippot applies to it as mentioned. 9. And if you ask whether the body where the king's daughter abides, which is called the maidservant, is sold to the lower crowns of impurity, heaven forbid it says of it, the land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine. Vayikra 2523, the body of the king's daughter is Metatron, and the body is the Sheshanah's maidservant, which the Sheshanah dons, and though the king's daughter's soul is trapped there, incarnating there, it is written of it, and if a man sell his daughter to be a maidservant, she shall not go out as a manservant. 2. 10. Also, and if a man sell refers to the Holy One, blessed be he, and his daughter is Yisrael, who are from the aspect of the only daughter that is since they are drawn from Malchut, they are called his daughter, and if you argue that they will go out. In the future, like those who left Egypt who were from the aspect of the servant Metatron who were fleeing Egypt, IT says of it, she shall not go out as a menservants do. This is the meaning of for you shall not go out with haste nor go by flight. Yeshua 5212 11. Come and see when a man is born, he is given an effect of the animal element from the side of purity from those that are called the holy wheels, namely from the world of Asiyah. If he gains further merit, he is given a rash from the aspect of the holy living creatures, namely from the world of Yetzirah. If he merits further, he is given a neshama from the part of the throne, namely from the world of Briah. These three are the maidservant, the manservant, and the handmaid of the king's daughter. They are neshama, rash, and nefesh from the expanding of Malchut through Briah, Yetzirah, and Asiyah. The maidservant is the neshama of Briah, the manservant, the rash of Yetzirah, and the handmaid is the nefesh of Asiyah. 12. If he Gains further merit, he is given an effect of the path of Atzalut from the part of the only daughter called the king's daughter, namely Malchut of Atzalut. If he is more meritorious, he is given Rash of Atzalut from the side of the central pillar that is Zeir Enfin, and he is called the child of the Holy One. Blessed be he, that is the meaning of you are the children of Hashem, your Elohim, Devarim 141. If he has more merit, he is given an Eshamah from the aspect of Abba and Iama, which are by as written, and breathed into his nostrils the breathless Neshamah of life. Bear she 27, what is life? It is Yah, which are Abba and Iama, of whom it says, Let everything that has breathless Neshamah praise Yah, 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 Vav hey Aleph, which is the secret of man, which numerical value is 45, in the upper way of Atzalut, that is Zeir Anfin, when he is a garment to supernal Abba and Iama, which are the secret of Chakma, which is spelled with the same letters as those of the power of Het Koachmem and he is named after the image of his master, and it says of him, and have dominion over the fish of the sea. Bereshit 128, he has power throughout the firmaments over all the wheel seraphim and living creatures, and over all the hosts and legions above and below. Hence, when one merits the nefes
Starts connected and ends up divided and what is an eagle that nests in a tree that does not exist its stolen young are not creatures because they were created where they were not created when they go up they go down and when they go down they go up two that are one and one that is three what is a beautiful eyeless maiden whose body is hidden yet revealed who goes out during the morning and covers herself during the day and adorns herself with non-existent adornment sixteen he asks me all that. Along the way and I was annoyed now I have rest had we been together we would have delved into the words of the Torah instead of my dealing with other vain things Rabbi Shia said do you know that old merchant he said to him I know that his words are senseless for had he known he would have expounded with the Torah and the way would not have been spent aimlessly Rabbi Shia said the merchant is here sometimes one may find golden bells that is golden tongues in vain people he said to him he is. Here and gives his ass fodder seventeen they called for him and he came before them he said to them now two are three because after joining them there are three and three are as one as they joined together Rabbi Yossi said did I not tell you that his words are senseless and empty he sat before them eighteen he said to them gentlemen I have become a merchant but a while ago at first I was not a merchant but I had a young child whom I placed in school and wanted him to study Torah therefore I became a merchant so I could support him when I find one of the sages traveling I lead my donkeys after him today I have thought I would hear new expositions of the Torah but have heard nothing 19 Rabbi Yossi said in all your words I wondered about one only either you spoke in jest or these words are worthless the old man asked what is that Rabbi Yos I said a beautiful eyeless maiden etc 20 the old man opened with Hashem is on my side I will not fear what can a man do to me Hashem takes my part with those who help me it is better to take refuge in Hashem Tehillim 1186 to 8 how goodly pleasant precious and lofty are the words of Torah and I how could I say before these sages that I have heard from them not even one word until now yet I should speak up because I am not ashamed to speak words of Torah in public 21 that old man wrapped himself and spoke and if a priest's daughter be married to a stranger she may not eat of an offering of the holy things Vayikra 2212 this verses. Followed by another, but if a priest's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child and has returned to her father's house as in her youth, she shall eat of her father's bread, but no stranger shall eat of it. 13. These verses may be understood literally, yet the words of the Torah are undisclosed as there are secrets in each and every matter. 22. And many are the matters of wisdom hidden in each and every subject in the Torah which are known to the wise who know the ways of the Torah. For the Torah is not the context of dreams handed to those who interpret them or follow the mouth of the interpreter, yet they have to be interpreted according to their ways. And if dream matters need interpreting according to their ways, how much more so the words of the Torah, the delights of the Holy King, needs to be followed in the true path as written for the ways of Hashem are right. Hashia 1,410.23. Now we should say a priest's daughter is a supernal Neshama, the daughter of it. Patriarch Abraham, the first of converts who is Jesus, he attracts this Neshama from a supernal place that is Bina. He asks, What is the difference between the verses and the daughter of any priest? Vayikra 219 and, and if a priest's daughter, he answers, Some priests are called any priest, but not a real priest. In the same way, there is a priest in eight and a high priest, and a priest that is not high. A mere priest is higher than any priest, therefore, there are grades to the soul. There are Neshama Rash and Nefesh. The high priest is a Neshama, a priest is Rash, and any priest is Nefesh 24. And if a priest's daughter be married to a stranger, this is a holy Neshama that is drawn from a lofty place which is Bina and enters into the closure of the tree of life, which is Zeir Anpin. And when the Rash or wind of the high priest, which is Jesus of Zeir Anpin, blows and bestows souls that is clothes the souls with Jesus and puts them in that tree, which is Zeir Anpin. Soul sore from them and enter a treasury which is Malchu 25. Woe to the world for people do not know how to be careful when attracting a soul into a body during intercourse by means of the evil inclination which is a stranger and that priest's daughter which is the soul flies down and finds an edifice namely a body in a strange man since this is the will of its master it goes in there to be subdued and has no power and is not perfected in this world upon its leaving it it may not eat of an offering of the holy things like the other souls that reach perfection in this world. 26 There is something else to this verse and if a priest's daughter be married to a stranger the holy soul is ashamed to be married to a stranger that is it is drawn upon a converted proselyte and flies to it from the garden of Eden in a hidden way to the edifice namely the body that is built of the impure foreskin since its fathers were not circumcised this is the meaning of a stranger. 27. This is a loftiest secret on a pillar set for weighing in the midst of the blowing air. There are scales on the one side, the right, and other scales on the other, the left, true scales on this right side, and false scales on that left side. These scales are never quiet. The souls go up and down, come and return by means of these scales. Some souls are wrong when the man of the other side has power over the man of holiness, as written a time when one man rules over another to his own hurt. Kahilat 89. Assuredly to his own hurt. 28. But the soul that was married to the other side called a stranger and was wrong by it. It is to his own hurt that of a stranger and it may not eat of an offering of the holy things as the other souls until the holy one blessed be he does with it that which is to be done that is he corrects it as shall be explained concerning this. The verse says, And if a priest's daughter be married to a stranger, it shall be so that it may not eat of an offering of it. Holy things 29 There is a secret here about the way souls are wrong for everything in this world is guided by the tree of knowledge of good and evil which is malchute when people in the world conduct themselves according to the good side reconciled by the central column the scales are balanced and are tipped to the good side when they conduct themselves according to the evil side the scales tip to that side the other side which takes all the souls that were on the scales at that time and wrongs them 30 but it is to his own hurt the other sides because those souls subdue all they find of the evil side and consume it and indicative for that is the holy ark which was violated by the Philistines who had power over it to their own hurt since they and their deities were plagued by it here too the souls wronged by the other side it is to its own hurt 31 we have seen in ancient books what had come of these wrong souls some of them were righteous of the nations these are Bastard scholars and bastard scholars are better than ignorant high priests and are more valuable in the world even though the high priest enters the innermost holy of holies the old man wept for a moment the friends were amazed and said nothing 32 the old man opened with if she please not her master who has designated her for himself then shall he let her be redeemed to sell her to a strange nation Shema 218 this passage was said in relation to this hidden matter of wrong souls and if a man sell his daughter to be a maidservant she shall not go out as the men servants do if she pleases not of it 7 master of the universe who will not fear you who governs all the kings in the world as written who would not fear you O king of the nations for to you it is fitting your maya 107 33 how many people in the world read wrong and err in this verse they all recited yet they do not rightly explain the verses the holy one blessed be he called the king of the nations yet he is the king of Israel and he is also named in the verse when the most high divided to the nations their inheritance devarim 328 and for Hashem's portion is his people but nine so he is called the king of Israel if you argue that he is called the king of the nations it is to their advantage that the holy one blessed be he reigns over them instead as it is said that they were given to his ministers and appointed officers 34 moreover the end of the passage states for among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms there is none like you your 107 all this praise is directed to the other nations it is wonder that they are not raised in this verse to the highest heaven as the verse gives their sages and kingdoms some relation to the holy one blessed be he that it is necessary to say that he is greater than they but the holy one blessed be he blinds their eyes so they do not know him at all which is what we say that they are all nothing less than nothing and Vanity has written all nations before him are as nothing and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Yeshayah 407 yet the verse gives them great and precious importance in saying that among all the sages of the nations and throughout their kingdom there is none like you. The merchant talks about the greatness of God and how he is falsely compared to the sages of the various nations we hear of the names Elohim yod heh faithfully spelled out king of the nations and Hashem for. Among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms there is none like you. 35 Rabbi Shia said to him yet it is written Elohim reigns over the nations. Tehillim 479 he told him I see that you were behind their wall and
Idolatry is called by this name and this name reigned over the nations and not the name that reigned over Israel which is the name Yudha Bape which is unique to the unique nations of people of Israel the holy nation 38 but if you argue that we can explain the verse who would not fear you O king of the nations that the name that is king of the nations is Elohim as fear pertains to it and judgment abides in it this is not so it was not said in this context for otherwise even. Idolatry would be included in that in who would not fear you as even idolatry is called Elohim 39, but once the wall behind which you were leaning is torn down the verse prevails after some observation who would not fear you O king of the nations if you would say it refers to the holy one blessed be he as the king of the nations it is not so but the explanation is what king of the nations would not fear you nor be in awe of you or tremble before you it is as if it were written what? King of the nations would not fear you similarly hail you Yahya praise O servants of Hashem praise the name of Hashem Tehillim 1131 whoever hears it does not know what it means after saying hail you Yahya he says also give praise O or to servants of Hashem it should have been written servants of Hashem praise the name of Hashem but yet it is necessary for though it first says hail you Yahya the subject is the servants of Hashem here too though it says first who would not fear you the subject is the king of the nations it is as if it were written who among the kings of the nations would not fear you it was all said properly 44 among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms there is none like you means what is the phrase spread among them in their wisdom it is there is none like you and they all acknowledge that when they see in their wisdom your deeds and mighty actions this phrase spreads among them and they say there is none like you the lesson of the verses that among all the sages of the nations and throughout their kingdoms they say there is none like you and it is known among them the friends rejoiced and wept but said nothing he too wept again we learn about idolatry and about the soul that incarnates for evil deeds in the world as alluded to in and if a man sell his daughter to be a maid servant when God sees that a child will turn bad later in life he gathers it into himself while it is still young and fragrant it. Merchant says that when God created the world he also created all the souls that would later be incarnated into bodies and that even when souls do not wish to come to the world he makes them do so since that is why they were created when the time comes to depart from the world the soul must be free refined and cleansed so that God can be pleased with it and reward it in the garden of Eden the souls are entered into the king's book where they are recorded with their names if the soul was soiled. And not worthy it is met by strange camps of demons who bring it to Gehenna. Pure souls are protected by the garment that is spread on them, which is the name Aloha. We hear that the souls of the beloved enter into the chamber of love, which is situated underneath the holy of holies of Bria in the hidden firmament. The holy one, blessed be he, finds that holy soul there and raises it with up with him into life. 41 He opened with, so she said to Abraham, Cast out this bond woman and her son. Bear she 2110. The friends have remarked that Sarah wanted to remove idolatry from the house, therefore it is written, All that Sarah has said to you, hearken to her voice of it. 12 As the bond woman is considered idolatry, here it is written, And if a man sell his daughter to be a maidservant, Shema 217, namely the soul that incarnates for evil deeds in the world, to be a maidservant refers to that other side of the evil incarnation of the scales that reverted into false scales as mentioned in it. Is wrong by the other side in taking it out of there, it shall not go out as the men's advance do with eight, which are the wrong souls, but it receives a crown on its head as will be said. 42 He asks, Who are the souls mentioned here? and answers, This is a secret. These are the souls of young children who suckle on their mother's strength. The Holy One, blessed be, he sees that if they will live in the world, they will be bad smelling and turn sour like vinegar, therefore he gathers them one day. Are still young and emit good fragrance. 43 What does the Holy One, blessed be, he do? He allows them to be wrong by the hands of the bond woman who is little, and once they are placed under her power, she rejoices in that child and oppresses him. She takes him away from the world while he is still suckling on his mother's strength. 44 If you argue that these souls will do good in the world, it is not so as written, if she please not her master, Shema 218, as that man will turn sour by it after. Sometime if he will go on living the soul is oppressed while another is not of these it is written and considered all the oppressed ions Kahila 41 that is the meaning of if she please not her master 45 who has designated her for himself had low Shema 218 the word low is spelled with Allah to mean not if you say the holy one blessed be he gave it to the other side from the first day of its existence it is not so for now with the turnings of the scales he has designated her for himself low being pronounced as with Bob to mean for himself which it was not before 46 then shall he let her be redeemed if it what is the meaning of that he answers the holy one blessed be he redeems it now while it still emits good fragrance before it turns sour he raises it to the highest skies to his yeshiva if you say that since it was wrong by the other side he hands it as was said to scholarly bastards and to the righteous of the nations the verse proves that to sell her to a strange nation he shall have no power seeing he has dealt deceitfully with her but as he oppressed it with the turning of the scales but assuredly he will give it to Israel and to no other when it emerges from the scales it shall not go out as the men's advance do but is given a crown high on its head 47 if you say that that side comes in the child which means it has power over his soul it is not so but it takes the soul and rejoices in it he flies out of its hands and enters that place of the other side where it visits that child it is delighted with it and mocks it lusting after that flesh so that the holy one blessed be he takes its soul while it takes its body after that everything is under the control of the holy one blessed be he 48 come and see she shall not go out as the men's advance do he asks what is the meaning of go out as the men's servants and answers when it leaves the scales and that side with joy the holy one blessed be he marks it and seals it with a certain ring spreads on it his precious garment which is the holy name Aloha that is the meaning of he has dealt deceitfully with her also his garment is with her that is while the precious garment of the king is on it since his garment is upon it it is written to sell her to a strange nation he shall have no power 49 this is the meaning of as in the days when Aloha preserved me EO 292 which refers to the precious garment called Aloha is mentioned it is in reference to this secret that it is written here to sell her to a strange nation he shall have no power seeing that his garment is with her it is because the precious garment of the king is upon it since his garment is with her then to sell her to a strange nation he shall have no power 50 he asks what of the dominion that side has over that soul for he said that the holy one blessed be he gives permission to the other side to wrong that soul he answers come and see the people in the world are all under the dominion of the Holy King they all have time to live in this world until he wishes to raise them from the world the other side is not allowed to harm them before that time yet as for it has not set time to live therefore it mocks and delights in that soul and takes it away from this world thus since it was not allotted time the other side is given permission to oppress IT51 moreover these verses contain admonitions to people and much good lofty advice is present in all the words of the Torah which are all true and of a true way they are known to the wise who know and walk the path of truth when the Holy One blessed be he wished to create the world he so desired it and fashioned all the souls that will be placed in people afterwards and they were all fashioned before him in the very shape they will have later in people and he saw each and every one 52 some of them will befoul their ways in the world when their time comes to descend into the world the Holy One Blessed be he summons that soul and says to it go enter a certain place a certain body it replies to him master of the universe I am satisfied with the world I dwell in and shall not go into another world where I shall be enslaved and soiled in their midst the holy one blessed be he said to it ever since you were created this is the reason why you were created to be in that world in a body when the soul sees that it descends despite itself and there enters a body 53 the Torah that gives advice to all who realize that admonishes the people in the world saying see how much the holy one blessed be he has compassion for you he sold for free the good gem he had namely the soul so that you will cultivate it in this world 54 and if a man sell the holy one blessed be he his daughter the holy soul to be a maidservant to be an enslaved maidservant among you in this world I pray you when its time comes to depart from this world that she shall not go out as the men's do. Not soiled with iniquities but free refined and cleansed so that its master will be happy with it praise himself with it and give it good reward in the brightness of the garden of Eden this is the meaning of and satisfy your soul in drought also brightness Yeshua 5811 this is surely when the soul emerges properly clear and clean 55 but if she please not her master emerging
Who shall let her be redeemed by repentance for after he repents the Holy One blessed be he redeems them from the way to Gehenom 57 to sell her to a strange nation he shall have no power he asks what is the strange nation and answers the soul is ashamed when it departs from the world if the man deviated from the way together with it it seeks to rise up to the holy camps for holy camps are situated on the way to the Garden of Eden and strange camps that his demons stand on the way to Gehenom 58 if that soul is worthy and the precious garment is spread on it namely the name Aloha many holy camps meet it to join it and bring it to the Garden of Eden if it is not worthy many strange camps meet it to bring it to Gehenom the camps of demons will wreak vengeance on it for that the verse instructs to sell her to a strange nation he shall have no power to the demons seeing that his garment is on her which is the protective garment as the Holy One blessed be he protects it. So that a strange nation will not rule over it through that protection spread over it which is the name Aloha 59 and if he designated her for his son Shema 219 come and see how much a man should beware of not turning aside from his ways in this world for if a man gains merit in this world and properly guards his soul such as a man whom the Holy One blessed be he desires and is praised with every day before his retinue saying see the holy child I have in that world he did such and such. These deeds of his are well done 60 when the soul emerges from this world pure clean and refined the Holy One blessed be he shines upon it many lights and announces daily of it this it the soul of so and so my child the keeping shall be provided for the body it left 61 this is the meaning of and if he designated her for his son he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters what is the manner of daughters here is a secret to the wise within the strong rock which is it. World of Bria in the hidden firmament above every other firmament there there is a certain chamber called the chamber of love which is situated underneath the holy of holies of Bria there are hidden treasures there and all the kisses of the king's love are there all the souls beloved of the king enter there 62 when the king enters that king's chamber it is written of that and Jacob kissed Rachel Beersheet 29 11 as the union of kisses lies there the holy one blessed be he finds that holy soul there and immediately hastens to kiss and embrace it and raises it with him to be delighted with it 63 this is the meaning of he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters like a father would do to his favorite daughter kissing her embracing her and giving her gifts thus the holy one blessed be he does to the worthy soul every day is written he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters 64 hence it is written should do such a thing for him that waits for Yom Yashia 643 Just as the daughter namely the soul finished its doing in this world so the Holy One blessed be he finishes a different kind of action in the world to come as written neither has the eye seen that an Elohim beside you should do such a thing for him that waits for him while here it is written he shall deal do with her there is an analogy between the words do and the verses that I cannot see the doing in the second verse as well so far the old man prostrated himself on the ground and prayed he wept again 65 he said if he take another Shema 2110 he asks what does that mean did the Holy One blessed be he prepare another soul to return to the righteous in this world is it not the same soul who filled to completion in this world the wishes of its master in that case there is no surety to the righteous at all what is the meaning of if he take another 66 the old man opened with and the dust returns to the earth as it was and the spirit returns to Elohim who gave it Kahilat 127 the friends ascribed this verse to the destruction of the temple and the dust returns to the earth as it was here accords with the verse and the Canaanite was then in the land Beersheet 126 for after the destruction the land returned to be under the rule of the clipper of Canaan as before and the spirit returns to Elohim who gave it what does it mean the spirit returns this is the Shechina which is the Holy Spirit when the Shechina saw in the ten journeys. She took that Yisrael do not want to repent before the Holy One blessed be he and that the other side rules over the Holy Land the Shechina departed and returned to Elohim the friends have explained at 67 come and see the spirit of a righteous man is crowned with an image in the lower garden of Eden on every Shabbat holiday and first day of the month the spirits are crowned and take off their image of the lower garden of Eden and rise up to the upper garden of Eden just as the Holy One. Blessed be he does to the holy soul above so he does with the spirit below in the lower garden of Eden that rose before him he says this is the spirit of the body of so and so immediately the holy one blessed be he crowns that spirit with many crowns and delights in it 68 if you wonder if the holy one blessed be he leaves his dealings with the soul for that spirit it is not so but her food her clothing and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish Shema 2110 these are the three lofty names as neither has the eye seen that an Elohim beside you which is the secret of Bina 69 they all abide in the world to come which is Bina and flow from there one of them is her food which is a flowing of radiance and light which are returning light and straight light that shines in an obscure way it is sustenance that nourishes everything and is called Yudhei Bavhei with the vowels of Elohim which is the name of Bina Shear and her food with the letters in a different order. Becomes Asher Hey Asher is Bina which is the first Hey of Yud Hey Bav Hey this is the meaning of out of Asher his bread shall be fat Beersheet 4920 for food flows from IT this is the meaning of her food 70 her clothing is the covering the king spreads over it namely the precious garment of the name Aloha this is another shining flow which always protects the soul it is the covering of the garment of the king that Aloha spreads over it this is the meaning of he has dealt deceitfully with her also his garment is with her Shema 218 always never absent from it this is the meaning of her clothing 71 what is her duty of marriage it is a flow from the world to come which is Bina that contains everything it is Yud Hey Bav Hey Spoti that is the name in net sash and hot in Bina it shines with all the high hidden lights of the tree of life where the duty of marriage is hidden and whence it comes out with the pleasure and yearning of the world to come which is by the 72 these three must he not diminish when it is properly worthy if it is not as it should be these three are taken from it as not even one becomes a crown for it come and see it is written and if he do not these three to her but eleven that is it is not worthy of them and shall she go out free without money but go out from him it is pushed out it is without money without yearning or longing and derives no pleasure at all 73 up to hear the Torah admonishes from which come every kind of advice and gives good advice to people from now on let us return to the first subject of the lofty protection the holy one blessed be he spreads over it the soul so it shall not be to a strange nation because his garment is with her and always protects it 74 and if he designated her for his son he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters the old man said friends when you go to that rock that supports the world that is rabbi Shimon tell him to remember the Snowy day when beans were sown in fifty-two ways then shall you recite this verse and he will tell you its meaning the merchant turns to the question of who is the son of the Holy One blessed be he explaining that at the age of thirteen a boy is considered a son to the congregation of Israel and at the age of twenty a man is considered to be a son of the Holy One blessed be he the merchant tells of the additional soul that is attained by the righteous on the Sabbath seventy-five but said to him if you please whoever opened the discussion let him tell it he said to them assuredly I knew that you were righteous and that you are to be intimated to as the sages are as for my words to you when you mention the sign to Rabbi Shimon he will finish it that is finish my words now let us say who he is that is called the son of the Holy One blessed be he seventy-six come and see whoever reached thirteen years and on is considered a son to the congregation of Israel which is Malchut whoever is twenty years. Old or older and gains merit in them is considered a son of the Holy One, blessed be he, namely Zeir and Pen as written, You are the children of Hashem, your Elohim, Devarim 14177. When David was thirteen years old and gained merit on the day he entered his fourteenth year, he wrote, Hashem has said to me, You are my son, this day have I begotten you. Tehillim 27, what is the reason for it? Before that he was not his son, as the supernal soul did not dwell on him since he lived during the early years. Therefore it is written, This day have I begotten you, assuredly I have begotten you, I am not the other side as it was until now, but now it is I alone upon his reaching his twentieth year, it is written of Solomon, for I was my father's son, Mishlei 43, my own father's, namely the son of the Holy One, blessed be he, for at the age of twenty he merited the Mokin of Shayu, which made him a son of the Holy One, blessed be he, namely to Zeir and Pen 78, and if he designated her for his son, that is. Since he is thirteen years old or more when he is no longer under the dominion of the other side that comes his way then it is written he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters what is the man
The meaning of which I as according to the explanation given aided the old man wept again and said to himself old old man how much have you toiled to attain these holy matters and now you say them in an instance if you contemplate sparing these matters and not disclosing them yet it says withhold not good from those to whom it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do it Mishle 327 81 what is the meaning of withhold not good from those to whom it is due he says the holy one. Blessed be he and the congregation of Israel which is Malchut are here for wherever words of the Torah are spoken the Holy One blessed be he and the congregation of Israel are present and hearken to them then when the Holy One blessed be he and the congregation of Israel go away from the tree of knowledge of good and evil which is Malchut to listen to words of Torah its good side is elevated and rises high and the Holy One blessed be he and the congregation of Israel are crowned with that goodness there are those to whom it is due therefore withhold not good from those to whom it is due refers to the Holy One blessed be he and the congregation of Israel 82 again he said to himself old old man you have spoken these words yet you did not know whether the Holy One blessed be he is here and whether those present here are worthy of these words do not fear old man for you have participated in several wars with mighty men yet you had no fear yet now you fear speak up for Assuredly the Holy One blessed be he and the congregation of Israel are here and those present are righteous otherwise I would not have met them or began with these words speak up old man speak without fear we hear an explanation of Hashem by Elohim you are very great you are clothed with glory and majesty who covers himself with light as with a garment who stretches out the heavens who lays the beams of his chambers in the waters who makes the clouds his chariots who walks upon it wings of the wind who makes the winds his messengers next we learn about the souls of converts that soar from the garden of Eden 83 he opened up with the words Hashem by Elohim you are very great you are clothed with glory and majesty Tehillim 1041 Hashem by Elohim is the beginning of faith the rising of thought which is Chakma and the world to come which is by our part of the same secret without separation for Abba and I am a which are Chakma and by our two friends that never Separate you are very great is the beginning of the seven lower Sfirot the first day which is the first Sfirot Chisad they are ancient days namely it receives from the Sfirot of Attic and is the right side very is the left side namely Bure 84 you are clothed with glory and majesty these are the two branches of willow which are net sash and hot it spoke until here once it reached the tree of life which is Typhoretid it and could not be counted because of very what is very it is. The left is all the lower branches among which is one bitter branch which is Samael are included in the left therefore the tree of life hit and did not wish to be part of the count until it again praised in a different manner 85 it says who covers himself with light as with a garment of it too this is the beginning of the first day namely the first Sfirot Chisad who stretches out the heavens in Bidias Typhoret that is called heavens here the left side which is Bure is included yet it does. Not say very for the left is included in the right so it illuminates throughout the heaven that is Typhoret who lays the beams of his chambers in the waters of it three here the tree of life gladly emerged which is the tree that went out of Eden namely Typhoret the two branches of willow which are Netzach and Hod were rooted in its waters where they grow this is the meaning of who lays the beams of his chambers in the waters what are his chambers there are the two branches of willow Netzach and Hod. 86 this is the meaning of and that spreads out its roots by the river Yermea 178 this is a secret mentioned in there is a river whose streams make glad the city of Elohim Tehillim 465 who are the streams they are his roots namely Netzach and Hod they are so called his beams roots and streams they all grew roots in the water of the river which is Typhoret 87 who makes the clouds his chariots Tehillim 1043 these are Michael and Gabriel who are clouds who walks upon the wings of it. Wind to give healing to the world. This is revile from now on. He makes the winds his messengers. If before old old man, since you know these matters, speak and do not be afraid. Speak up and let the words of your mouth shine forth. The friends rejoiced and were listening with joy to his holy words. The old man said to himself, O old man, what have you got yourself into? You have come into the great sea, and now you should swim to get out of there. 88. If he take another Shema, 2110, how many ancient incarnations are here that were not yet revealed, which are all properly true? For one should not turn from the true path even a hairbreadth. First, it should be commented that all the souls of the converts soar from the garden of Eden by a hidden path to be clothed in converts. He asks once they depart from this world to where do the souls of converts merited return? That is, who raises them back to the place from whence they came, namely the garden of Eden. 89. But we learn that whoever Seizes and takes first the possessions of a convert who has no heirs gets them here to all these holy supernal souls that the Holy One blessed be he summons to come down as we said emerge in specific times namely on Shabbat holidays and the first day of the month to enjoy in the Garden of Eden where they meet the souls of the converts whichever of the souls they take they merit and clothe themselves with it and rise they all remain in that garment and descend into the Garden of Eden in that garment since all those who stay there do so only in the garment thus those souls raise the souls of the converts back to the Garden of Eden 90 if you say that for that garment of the convert souls their former delight is diminished it is written of it if he take another wife her food her clothing and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish they remain in the Garden of Eden in that garment that they were the first to take and get namely the garment made of convert souls one day. Rise they strip themselves from it because they are above they are not clothed. 91 the old man cried as before and said to himself old old man most certainly you have reason to cry surely you have justification to shed tears for each and every word yet it is revealed to the holy one blessed be he and his sacred Shechina that it is willingly and for their worship that I speak since they are the owners of every word and are adorned with them. 92 all those sacred souls when they have descended to this world come with a view to finding their proper resting place within a human being they all come clothed with these souls of converts as we have stated and in this manner pass into the holy seat and with this rhyme they are ready to be provided for in this world with the precepts and good deeds and when these vestments have been satiated with the things of this world namely the precepts and these sacred souls take pleasure in the fragrances that exude from their attire. 93 All the esoteric functions that the Holy One blessed be he performs are committed to the sacred Torah and all are found therein all concealed matters are revealed by the Torah and immediately thereafter are clothed with another vestment to be secreted therein and never to be revealed yet the sagacious scholars whose eyes are filled even though a matter is concealed in its vestment can see it inside its garment and when the matter is revealed before it again is concealed in its vestment they behold it fully and even though it immediately passes from sight it is never lost to their eyes 94 In many places the Holy One blessed be he cautioned the Holy Seed namely Israel to beware of the convert since afterwards the hidden thing came out of its case namely its covering immediately after being revealed it returned to its sheath to be covered there 95 since he cautioned in relation to the convert so many times the matter came out of its sheath was revealed and said for you Know the heart of the stranger also convert Shema 239 that is by means of the souls clothed in him as mentioned immediately it is inserted in its sheath dons its garment and hides as written seeing you were strangers in the land of Egypt which is a secondary explanation the verse reckons that since it is immediately clothed none would notice it through the nefesh of the convert the neshama is made aware of worldly matters and enjoys them being an intermediary between the soul and the body hence it says for you know the merchant says that and Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain means that the rainbow that is the secret of Malchut stripped off her three colors and gave them to Moses in which garment he ascended the mountain the old man reminds us that the Torah reveals its secret subtly and fleetingly to those who love it and who pursue it with heart and soul 96 the old man opened with the verse and Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain Shema 2418 he asks what is this cloud and answers it accords with the verse I have set my bow in the cloud Bereshit 913 we have learned that this rainbow which is the secret of Malchud when receiving the three colors white red and green from the three columns of Zeir and been stripped of her clothes the three colors white red and green and gave them to Moses in that garment Moses ascended to the mountain and from within it he saw all that he saw and took delight in all when the old man reached this place the friends came to him namely Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yosi and prostrate before him they said had we come into the world only to listen to these words out of your mouth it would have sufficed us 97 the old man said friends I have not started speaking for that alone for an old man like me does not make a
To her lover then immediately she is concealed again none of those who were with the lover looked or observed save the lover alone whose entrails heart and soul go out to her and he knows that for the love she has for him she is revealed to him for a moment to arouse the love of him it is so with the Torah that is revealed only to its lover the Torah knows that the wise heart it paces around its gate every day so it reveals its face to him from within the chamber and immediately return to its place to be hidden again none of those with him knew or beheld it but he himself and his entrails heart and soul go after it hence the Torah is revealed and concealed and lovingly goes to its lover to arouse love with him one hundred come and see such is the way of the Torah at first when it begins to be revealed to man it gives him a slight hint if he recognizes it well but if he does not it sends for him and calls him a fool the Torah says to whoever it sends for tell that fool to come here so I can talk to him this is the meaning of whoever is simple let him turn in here and as for him that lacks understanding Michelet 916 that man approaches and it begins by speaking to him from behind the veil that it spreads before him of matters according to his understanding until little by little he will pay attention this is homiletic interpretation 101 afterwards it speaks with him in riddles from behind the thin sheet this is Hagida when he frequents it it is revealed to him face to face and tells him all the obscure secrets and obscure ways that were hidden in its heart since primordial days then that man is a ruler man of the Torah the master of the house since it revealed to him all its secrets and has not kept or concealed from him anything 102 the Torah said to him have you seen the illusion I gave you in the beginning tt contains such and such secrets this is the way it is he then sees that one must not add or diminish from the words in the Torah then it Literal meaning is as it is so that not even one letter must be added or taken away therefore the people in the world must take heed to chase after the Torah and love it as we learned 103 come and see if he take another Shema 2110 the incarnations in this verse are great and lofty as all souls incarnate yet people do not know the ways of the Holy One blessed be he and how the scales are placed and men judge every day at every season and how souls are sentenced before they come into this world and sentenced after leaving this world 104 how many incarnations and obscure deeds does the Holy One blessed be he bestow upon naked Neshama without a garment of the Torah and the precepts and how many naked Rishad walk about that world not entering the presence of the King and how many worlds are turned for their sakes that is the arrangement of the grades called worlds is changed for them and the world is turned around in many obscure wondrous ways yet people do not know nor Observe and how do souls roll incarnate as a stone in a sling is written and the souls of your enemies though shall he sling out as out of the hollow of a sling. Ishmuel 2529 he now reveals that all the Neshamot emerge from the great strong tree that is the river that comes out of Eden that is Zir and Pin and all the Rishat emerge from another smaller tree that is Malchut they join together as male and female and when they unite they are called a candle as they shine forth a great light. Neshamot is enveloped in the Ruash so as to be there above in the supernal garden of Eden in the hidden chamber the Nefesh does not come there but when the Neshamot and Ruash descend to the lower garden of Eden they are clothed in another spirit the soul of a convert the explanation turns to the concept of Levi right marriage following the death of a man who left no children the merchant tells of the seven lands Eretz land Adam ground Guy Valley Nishia forgetfulness to wilderness table. World and Arca 105 now is the time to reveal that all the Neshamot emerge from the great strong tree which is the river that comes out of Eden namely Zeir and Pin and all the Rishat emerge from another small tree which is Malchut and Neshamot emerges from above and Ruash from below and they join together as male and female when they unite they shine forth a lofty light the joining of the two is called the candle Hedna which is made of the initials of Neshamot Ruash as written the soul of man is the candle of Hashem Mishle 2027 what is the candle Neshamot Ruash the joining of the two together is called the candle as written of them the soul of man is the candle of Hashem 106 the Neshamot and Ruash are male and female that shine together they do not shine without each other and when they join the whole is called the candle and the Neshamot is enveloped in Ruash in order to be there above in the supernal garden of Eden in the hidden chamber as written but the spirit should Faint or enveloped before me, Yeshea 5716, it is not written be enveloped, but enveloped, which means it envelopes others. The reason is that the Neshama that I have made there in the upper garden of Eden in the hidden chamber is enveloped and clothed in the Rash as it should be 107, since this chamber has and employs only the Neshama and Rash. The Nefesh does not come there, only the Neshama is clothed in the Rash there when it descends to the lower garden of Eden, it is clothed in another spirit that emerges from there that dwelt there, that is the souls of the converts. The Neshama dwells in this world in them all and is clothed in them, that is both in its own Rash and the souls of the converts. 108, that Rash that comes out of this world, having neither grown nor expanded in this world, that is had no children incarnates and finds no rest, it incarnates in this world as a stone in a sling until he finds a redeemer to redeem him, that is a kinsman to marry his wife and Places him in the very vessel he employed and cleft to in Rash and Nefesh and which used to be his spouse spirit to spirit namely his wife that Redeemer establishes him as before that is brings him into the sun born from his widow so he comes back to life in this world as before 109 the spirit he left with her in his prior life as shall be said that the husband leaves in his wife a spirit in his prior life that cleaves to that vessel namely his wife as it is never absent from her even. After his demise is not lost for there is nothing in the world be it ever so small that has no place or stand to hide in and go there and it is never lost the spirit he left in that vessel is therefore there and it surely follows its root and foundation whence it came namely the husband who died childless it brings him and establishes him in his place that is the place of the spirit which is his spouse that went out with him that is his wife there he is newly built and is now a new creature in. The world a new spirit and a new body 110 you may argue that the spirit in the born baby is what it used to be namely the man himself and not the spirit he left with her when he incarnated before which is but a part of him he answers it is so but he is established in the born son only by means of the other spirit he left in that vessel his wife here is the most secret of mysteries in the book of Enoch the edifice built in the son born to the Levi marriage is built only by means of it. Other spirit he left in that vessel namely his wife in the prior life when it begins to be built the spirit attracts the naked childless spirit and draws it to itself so two spirits are made there into one afterwards the one becomes a rash and the other neshama both being one 111 if he merits to be properly purified the two become one so that another supernal neshama will be clothed in them just as other people in the world have a spirit that the neshama that come first hold on to that is to the souls of the converts and another spirit above and the holy Neshama above is clothed in both so he too has two spirits his own and the spirit he left in his wife in a former lifetime so that the supernal Neshama will be clothed in them 112 he asks now that he has a body newly built by Levi right marriage what is made of the first body he left either the one or the other is in vain according to human understanding it seems that the earlier body that was not completed first is lost because it did not acquire merit if so in vain was it occupied in the precepts of the Torah even if it dealt with but one of them yet we know that even the most ignorant people of Israel are full to the brim with precepts so this one though it was not made whole in procreating and writing and growing in the world yet kept other precepts of the Torah and did not lose them was it for nothing 113 friends friends open up your eyes for I know that you think and know that all those bodies are Noted for distinction in vain that they have no everlasting existence this is not so we must not look into these matters 114 the old man opened with who can utter the mighty acts of Hashem who can declare all his praise Tehillim 1062 who in the world can speak of the mighty acts the Holy One blessed be he constantly performs in the world the first body he left is not lost it will exist in the future to come for it already received punishment in several manners and the Holy One blessed be he does not withhold the reward of any creature he created except those who came away from the faith in him and never had anything good in them and those who did not bow at Madam in the amateur prayer from these the Holy One blessed be he makes other creatures as that body will not be built in a human form and will never resurrect but it is not so for those who died childless 115 if the spirit attained improvement in this world in that other body what did the Holy One blessed be he do the Spirit of the Redeemer who redeemed him, namely his brother that he put in there and mixed with the spirit that was in that vessel which his brother left in his former life is surely not lost what is to become of it seeing there are three
Since it did not merit growth by children, so it is brought down into Adama close to Arca, for there are seven lands, Eretz land, Adama ground, Kai Valley, Nishia, forgetfulness, Tia, wilderness, table, world, there he is punished, and it is brought up to table where we are, and it descends back to Adama, now it rises, and now it descends, it has no rest save on Shabbat holidays, and the first days of months 118, these are those that sleep in the dust of the ground, ground, Iso called since it is. From Adama dust, Iso called since it is from table of those it is written, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth have Adama shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Daniel 122 If the naked spirit, namely the spirit of he who died childless, was worthy of coming back into the world as before in the child born to the Levi marriage to perfect itself, it is meritorious for the spirit he left in his wife in the former life of which we said it. Was hit in the rock will be corrected in the former body that the childless deceased left behind of these it is written some to everlasting life and some to shame namely all those who did not attain perfection 119 these are the lofty mighty acts of the holy supernal king that nothing is lost even a breath has a place and rank and the holy one blessed be he does something from it even a man's word even a voice are not in vain everything has place and station 120 he who was just built namely the childless dead man who incarnated in the child born to the Levi marriage and came into the world a new creature has no soulmate this is why his soulmate is not announced before he is born because he lost his soulmate who became his mother while his brother became his father the merchant during these expositions constantly berates and questions himself about the propriety of revealing these secrets but then regains strength and sureness of purpose and continues now he speaks of Go forth, O daughters of Zion, and behold King Solomon saying that Zir Anpin calls Malchut daughter, sister, and mother. Everything is in her. The merchant explains at length the complicated arrangement of souls in the dead husband, the widow, and the children of a Levi right marriage. The question of the role of soulmates in this instance is also addressed. 121 He said to himself, Old old man, what have you done? Silence would have been good for you, old old man. I have told you that you entered the great sea without ropes or a flag. What shall you do if you mean to rise up? You cannot if you intend to descend. Behold the depth of the great abyss. What shall you do, O old man? Woe, it is not for you to turn back in such times. You were not want to weaken in strength, for you knew that no other man in the generation would enter in a ship to the depth where you are. 122 The son of your king, namely Rabbi Shimon, knows how to guard his paths. Had he entered the deep sea, he would pay attention before. Entering how he is to pass in a certain time and then roam in the sea, yet you old man have not looked first now, old man, since you are there, do not weaken in strength nor leave your path to roam right or left to the length of width to the depth or height. Do not fear, old man, strengthen yourself in your power. How many mighty men of strength have you broken and how many wars have you conquered? 123 He wept then and opened with the verse, Go forth, O daughters of Zion, and behold King Solomon with the crown with which his mother crowned him on the day of his wedding and on the day of the gladness of his heart. Sure, Hashirim 311 This verse has been expounded and it is so, yet go forth and behold, who could behold King Solomon have Shlomo that is the king that peace have Shalom is his name, Zeir and for he is concealed from all the celestial high armies that are in that place that neither has the I see that an Elohim beside you, Yeshayah 64 3, which is by yet you say, Go forth, O. Daughters of Zion and behold King Solomon moreover as his glory all the celestial angels ask saying where is the place of his glory which is the concealment so what is the good of go forth 124 he answers yet in the words go forth O daughters of Zion and behold King Solomon it is written with the crown instead of and the crown for whoever sees that crown which is Malchut sees the pleasantness of the king that the peace is his with which his mother crowned him refers to Malchut. That's around CEIR and for we have learned that he calls her daughter sister and mother she is all that and everything is in her whoever looks to know it Malchut will have knowledge of precious wisdom 125 the old man said to himself what shall I do now if I say yet this obscure secret must not be revealed if I do not speak these righteous men will remain bereaved of the secret the old man fell on his face and said into your hand I commit my spirit you have redeemed me Hashem Elof. Truth tale him 316 the vessel below namely the widow who used to be the dead childless man's wife and was under him how could it be above and become his mother her husband namely he who died childless who was above her how could he turn to be under becoming her son his spouse turns into his mother wonder upon wonder his brother is his father if the father of the former his wife would have redeemed him and marry his wife it would have been well but that his brother would be his father is not it a wonder assuredly it is a world turned upside down the upper below and the lower above 126 but blessed be the name of Elohim forever and ever for wisdom and might are his and he changes the times and the seasons he knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him Daniel 220 to 22 come and see whoever is in a lighted place cannot look to see what is in the darkness but it is not so with the holy one blessed be he, he knows what is in the darkness even though light dwells with him and from within the light regards the darkness and knows all that exists there. 127 here we should first introduce something the ancient people said in regard to visions at night. We learned that whoever comes into his mother Hebam in a dream should expect Bina as written if Hebam you cry after wisdom Bina Mishle 23 we should check this if the reason for this is that it is a mother that he should expect Bina it is well but it should have said that he who sees his mother in a dream should attain Bina but not he who comes into his mother wherefore I ask that 128 he answers this is a high mystery for he turned and rose from below upwards at first he was a son namely below her once he rose up and came into her the tree turned over so he became part of the supernal world and ruler over her and attained Bina 129 he explains his words at first when a man reaches his 13th year it is written Hashem has said to me you are my son this day have I begotten you. Tehillim 27 For he became a son of Malchut and Malchut his mother then he is under her once he came over her and became her husband he is of the supernal world Zeir Anpin because he rose to the grade of Joseph who is Yezid of Zeir Anpin assuredly he merits by the like Zeir Anpin that has Mokin of by the 130 the same with the vessel the widow at first he her dead husband was of the grade of Joseph Yezid of Zeir Anpin that is the husband of the lower tree Malchut she obeys his wishes and he rules over her because every woman is fashioned in the shape of the Mokba which is the lower tree Malchut since he did not wish to abide in the grade of Joseph and did not live to use it and multiply in the world and beget offspring but died childless he went down and incarnated in the child born to the Levi marriage while she his wife becomes his mother the redeemer his brother received the inheritance of Joseph that he his brother had before while he descended and incarnated in the born. Child 131 Since he descended it was fulfilled in him Hashem has said to me you are my son this day have I begotten you for he became her son the tree turned over whatever was below that he had power over as a husband over his wife now that he descended to incarnate in the child born to the Levi marriage he who inherited the place of Joseph namely his brother the redeemer is called his father and is his father everything is now in place as it should be 132 before he was of it. World of the male the aspect of Joseph but he was uprooted there and is now of the world of the female which is Malchut he used to rule her but now she rules him and he is back in the world of the female therefore he has no spouse at all and no proclamation regarding spouse is made on his behalf as is done for any man before he is born the daughter of so and so to so and so for he was returned to the world of the female 133 if people would know the grief of the first body which he who Died childless left when it is uprooted from the world of the male and returned to the world of the female they would know that no grief equals that grief he has no spouse since he is not in the place of the male no wife is proclaimed for him because he is of the world of the female if he does have a wife it is with mercy through prayer that he meets a woman who until now had no husband in relation to that we learned that maybe another will precede him through mercy the meaning of another is that he who died childless is called other and everything is in order 134 regarding this it is written but if a priest's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child and has returned to her father's house as in her youth may I cross 2213 we have explained the phrase a priest's daughter as the soul it is a widow from the former body of the childless dead man divorced because it does not enter the king's curtain because all those not of the world of the male have no share in it he has Gone and uprooted himself from the world of the male, so he has no share in the king's eir and hence it is
eats of the bread of the noble that descends from above from Zeir and but it cannot behold and enjoy what the rest of the righteous enjoy because it is a stranger there is written of it no stranger shall eat of the holy thing they I cross 2210 since the holy things are in the world of the male but it does eat of the heat offering because it dwells in the world of the female 137 since it is of the world of the female it eats it only at night when the Nukva Malchud reigns as written and when the sun is down he shall be clean and shall afterwards eat of the holy things because it is his food of it seven for the holy things that are from the world of the male are eaten only by day the time of the reign of the male Zeir and hence it is written Yisrael is holy Jehashim the first fruits of his increase your 23 it is called first because the highest beginning of the whole world of the male is holy namely supernal and I am that are the mokin of Zeir and whatever came out of holiness is Yisrael, namely Zeir and hence Yisrael is holy Jehashim the first fruits of his increase 138 when spirits visit the cemetery at appointed times namely from nightfall until midnight they do not visit those who died without children since they do not attain the world of holiness is written no stranger shall eat of the holy thing and their spirits have no abundance to bestow upon the body in the cemetery and if the spirit did not attain proper correction once it Reincarnates even in that place of the world of the female it does not eat of the heat offering and is considered a stranger even to the lower world the female world and does not eat in it up to here concerning the secret of Levi marriage 139 he said to himself old old man once you started to sail in the wide sea go as you wish in every direction in the sea it is now the time to reveal for I have said that the redeemer namely the kinsman when he comes and enters the vessel I mentioned namely the widow brings his spirit there and causes it to cleave to that vessel thus nothing is lost not even a breath it is well and it is so old man if you talk and reveal speak without fear 140 as for other people who depart from the world we know that the spirit one left in the wife he had the spirit he placed there in former life what has become of that spirit and if the wife remarries what becomes of the spirit her first husband left in her seeing that another man came into her 141 for a spirit to coexist with a spirit is impossible for the one who just came into her inserted a spirit in her and also the first one who is gone placed a spirit in her the first who is gone had children so the current man is not a redeemer hence the spirit the first husband left in the vessel and the spirit the other who came and brought into her also surely cannot coexist in the body of that woman if you say it is lost this is impossible as nothing is lost so what has become of it 142 also if she does not remarry what becomes of the spirit her husband left in her if you argue it is lost it is not so all this has to be revealed now he said to himself old old man see what you have done what you have got yourself into arise old man raise your banner rise old man and humble yourself before your master the talk turns to hashem my heart is not haughty and we are reminded how important it is to be humble of heart before the holy king however powerful we are in the world it Merchant then begins a section about divorce and the rules about remarriage. We hear of persons mentioned in scripture who were reincarnations of other named persons. For example, the merchant says that Boaz was a reincarnation and that good often emerges from what had been evil. 143. The old man began with the verse, Hashem, my heart is not haughty nor my eyes lofty. Tehillim 1311. King David said that because he was a hiking ruler over all hikings and rulers from east to west, that is, they were afraid of his power, yet it did not enter his mind to deviate from the way, and he always humbled his heart before his master when he was occupied with the Torah. He became strong as a lion, and his eyes were always cast to the ground for fear of his master when he walked among the people. He had no arrogance at all. 144. Therefore, it is written, Hashem, my heart is not haughty, my heart is not haughty, though I am king and ruler over all the other kings in the world, nor my eyes lofty when. I am before you delving in the Torah nor do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me even when I walk among the people of King David said so how much more so the rest of the people in the world and I how humble of heart I am and lowering my eyes before the holy king far be it for me to be proud in the holy matters of the Torah he wept and his tears fell on his beard 145 he said to himself old man weary and powerless how becoming are the tears on your beard the good old man is becoming as the precious ointment running down on the beard of Aaron speak up old man for the holy king is here other people when they depart from the world leaving a spirit in the vessel they use namely their wives what happens to the first spirit if she remarries and another comes and puts another spirit in that vessel as I mentioned 146 come and see how lofty the mighty acts the holy king performs are who could tell them when the second husband comes and inserts a spirit in that vessel in the wife the first spirit of the first husband denounces the coming spirit and they do not get along together 147 for that reason the woman does not get along well with the second husband since the spirit of the first is tapping inside her she then remembers him always weeps for him or sighs for him since his spirit taps in her innards like a snake and speaks ill of the other spirit that came from the second husband they assail each other a long time 148 if the one coming from the second husband removes the former spirit of the first husband it leaves and goes away at times the first pushes away the second and attacks it until it takes it out of the world in relation to this we learn that from two or more that is after her two husbands died a man should not marry this woman because the angel of death is strong in her but people do not know that once the spirit of the first husband prevailed and overcame the other second spirit and pushed it out of it World from now on no one should mix with her 149 friends I do know that now you should raise a question and say that in this case the second husband died unlawfully and was not judged from above but was rejected by the spirit of the first husband come and see everything is according to law because it has been decreed above that either one would overcome one or that one would not attack one he who marries a widow is like he who enters the sea with strong winds blowing without ropes and does not know whether he will pass in peace or drown in the deep 150 if the second spirit that just entered prevails and overcomes the first spirit the first goes away from there and goes its way he asks whither does it go and what becomes of it he said to himself old old man what have you done you thought you would speak a little and come away but you have entered a place where no one else has entered since the day do eg and a kind of form these questions of the 400 questions they we're asking about the tower soaring in the air none had answered them until King Solomon came who properly clarified each one old old man you have come to reveal a concealed lofty secret what have you done 151 old old man you should have guarded your path in the beginning and observed when you started but now is not the time to hide old man answer with your mind whither does the spirit go which left you wept and said friends all these tears I wept were not for your sakes but I feared it. Master of the universe for revealing hidden ways without permission but it is known before the holy one blessed be he that is not for my own glory or the glory of my father but my wish is to serve him and I have seen the preciousness of one of you in that world and I know it is the same with the other though it has not been disclosed to me but now I see 152 we have learned that a man is pushed aside for another and they are rejected in many hidden ways the first spirit that was pushed. Aside before the second where does it go he answers the spirit leaves and goes to roam the world unbeknownst and goes to the grave of that man from whence it goes about the world to be seen to people in dreams they see in a dream the image of that man who informs them of things according to the way of the first spirit that came out of him as things are in that world it goes about and informs so in this world 153 in this manner it goes about the world always visiting that grave when spirits visit the graves of the bodies then the spirit itself of the first husband goes to the grave to visit its body then the spirit which is just a part of the main spirit joins its main spirit which is clothed in it and goes its way and when the spirit enters its place it is divested of it and it has place in the chambers in the garden of Eden or outside according to the way of each individual there it hides 154 and when the spirits visit this world the dead are engaged with the living only. By means of the attraction of that spirit namely the spirit the husband leaves in his wife in the previous life in which the other main spirit is clothed if it is said that it is for the good of the spirit and the woman does good in every way because by means of the spirit her husband left in her the spirit is attached to the living it is not so for had she not married another and had the first spirit not been rejected before the other man the second husband he would have derived benefit in another way and not toil in that world as he does nor be attached to the living in this world roaming to and fro 155 he asks if so the second marriage of the woman is not decreed from above because you said one man is rejected before another he answers yet I say that the second husband who married this woman she is his very soulmate
It is taken of the net Mishlei 117 since it is not known if she is his real soulmate or not 157 an unmarried widow who does not wish to marry even if her soulmate comes the Holy One blessed be he does not force her to by law and the Holy One blessed be he arranges that man another wife and the widow is not judged for this in that world even if she does not have a child since a woman is not commanded to be fruitful and multiply as we explained 158 what becomes of the spirit in this woman who does not remarry whose husband left in her in his last life he answers it remains there in the wife 12 months and every night it comes out visits the nefesh and returns to its place after 12 months the sentence is alleviated from that man namely her husband for during the 12 months the spirit is downcast with sadness the whole day after 12 months it goes away from there from the wife and goes to stand at the gate of the garden of Eden and visits in this world that Vessel the woman which it left when the woman leaves the world that spirit comes out and is clothed in her spirit of the wife and she gains it by her husband and they both illuminate worthily united into one 159 having come to this place it is now proper to reveal the hidden ways of the master of the universe which people do not know of they all follow the true path as written for the ways of Hashem are right and the just do walk in them but the transgressors shall stumble in them Hashia. 1410 but people do not know nor care how lofty the deeds of the Holy One blessed be here and how diverse yet the people in the world do not know if they are all in the path of truth not turning right or left 160 as for those incarnated who were driven out divorced of that world and have no spouse he asks the spouses they marry in this world who are the women whom they marry in this world for any man has a spouse except him who incarnates 161 see now how great and lofty is mighty. Acts are we learned that whoever divorces his first wife the altar sheds tears for him he asks why the altar and answers I say that all the women in the world are fashioned in the shape of the altar which is Malchut as every woman's root is in Malchut they therefore inherit seven blessings all from the congregation of Israel which is Malchut and if he divorces her his first wife the stone of the supernal altar namely the root of that woman which is in Malchut reverts to a state of deficiency. And lack what is the reason for this ITIS because the two divorcees are united just as she was divorced from her husband it is divorced from its root in Malchut 162 this is the secret of the words then let him write her a bill of divorce and give it in her hand and when she is departed out of his house she may go and be another man's wife Devarim 241 he asks seeing that she may go and be another man's wife do I not know he is not the one who divorced her why does it say another he? Answers it is as we learned it we learned of the other and it is written of another and he is called another as written and out of the earth shall others spring. Eof 819 hence the incarnated is called another and the divorcees are joined together he who is divorced from that world namely the incarnated man who has no spouse who is driven away from that world into this world who married the divorced woman and the divorced woman in this world from her husband as this woman who had the supernal shape of Malchut is now enslaved to the lower shape namely to the incarnated man without a spouse who married her who is called another as mentioned before for he cleaved to another for which reason he again incarnated in this world 163 and he is called last whence do we know he is called ladder from the words and that he who outlives all things little ladder will rise. Eof 1925 so the incarnated man is called ladder and here it is written and if the ladder husband hate her. Devarim 243 or, or if the latter should die but he asks it says latter while it should have said second if you say the purpose of the verse is to forbid that she would marry ten one after the other it is not so for she would marry this husband and no other wherefore should she be forbidden to another why is he then called last 164 he answers this is the last we mentioned he is another and is last for now the stone turns in the sling which means that in relation to the first body that died the incarnated in the sling who came again into the world is called by the name another and latter last since he has no spouse he marries the divorcee and hence the verse calls him another and last he asks why is he called another in relation to the first body that died seeing that the whole edifice namely the first body collapsed and returned to the dust and is as if it never existed and that the incarnated is what the first body was and not another why then is he called another and also why latter if he is the latter because he straightens his ways and improves it as well because he is last and incarnates no longer but if not he incarnates again to be planted as before why then is he called last 165 yet come and see it is written and Elohim saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good bear sheet 131 what is good it is the angel of good very is the angel of death the holy one blessed be he summons ways of correcting for everyone so that even the angel of death reverts to being very good 166 come and see and a river went out of Eden to water the garden bear sheet 210 which is C E I R and that waters Malchut that is called garden this river never ceases from multiplying increasing and producing fruit while another L is sterile and never has any desire does not fertilize or produce fruit for had it produced fruit it would have troubled the world 167 this is why the man who caused that side to increase in the world is called Evil and never beholds the face of the Shechinah is written nor shall evil dwell with you. Tehillim 55 An incarnated man who transgresses and cleaves to another L which does not produce fruit nor multiplies in the world is therefore called another the name of the other side brought it upon him that even if he the dead man is the incarnated one he is called another like the other side another surely 168 latter he is called latter since from the first time onward one is always called latter and named latter in the Torah be second he is called latter forth with and the holy one blessed be he calls him thus latter so that he will be perfected in this incarnation and be last and come back no longer to incarnate again the third two is called latter and so each time he incarnates after the first time he is called latter and he should be called latter for where he called second an excuse would be given for him to incarnate again and for the current edifice to collapse 169. Whence do we know that from the second temple that is called ladder as written the glory of this ladder house shall be greater than that of the former first Chagai 29 for from the first onward it is called ladder so there will be no excuse that the edifice will collapse and will be built again as before 170 in this case too the incarnated man also is called last like the second temple hence it is written her former husband who sent her away may not take her again to be his wife Devarim. 244 he asks why may not it should have been will not take her he answers once the woman cleaved to another and went down to be enslaved to the lower grade of the other side the holy one blessed be he does not wish the former to descend from his grade and produce fruit and cleave to a grade that is not his 171 and come and see if that woman does not marry even if she whores with all the men in the world if her husband wishes to he may return to her but if she cleaved in marriage to Another she cannot return to the former grade she had hence it is written may not assuredly he may never return to that grade 172 after she is defiled David we learned that she is defiled in his heart he asks if this is so even if she goes out to her without marriage she should be forbidden he answers once she cleaves to the other she accepts upon her the portion of that evil side her first husband is of the other good side but she shall never have a portion of that good and he must not increase that place at all hence if the latter man sends her out or if the latter husband should die but three she is forbidden to the first one but she is permitted to other men perhaps she will find a place again and a latter one to come and marry her 173 whoever has children from the first wife yet brings this woman into his house cleaves that day to the relentless revolving sword for two reasons the first is that she has already rejected two men and he is the third another is that how could he put his spirit in a vessel that another had joined to join her and cleave to her not because she is forbidden but it is a bad alliance for himself 174 Rabbi Lavid is the leader of Kfarono used to laugh and joke about such a woman when he saw someone marrying her he would say it is written and she laughs at the time to come Mishlei 3125 if she marries a latter man he later becomes a laughing stock 175 let us come back and contemplate a certain great and lofty place that was in the world a true stock and root it is Obed the father of Yeshai father of David we learned that the incarnated is a latter and Obed was an incarnation of Maklon who died childless how could a true root come from such a place 176 he answers but Obed was improved by lofty correction and the root of the inverted tree where the wife becomes the mother was set right again and he rose in it and was duly perfected hence he is called Obed derived from work something that none of it People in the world merited 177 Obed came cultivated had habit and hoed the trunk and root of the tree came out of the bitter face and again improved the branches of the tree Malchut Yishai his son came strengthened and fixed it and held to the boughs of another higher tree Zeir and he joined one tree to
The most secret of mysteries and I do not know whether I should tell it or not speak up old man assuredly I say that in this way are recognized all the incarnated though Obed fixed the tree when King David came he remained in the lower tree of the female which is Malchut and had to receive life from another for of himself he had no life and if this is so for he who was perfected and perfected everything this is much more so for other people who cannot be thus perfected the merchant tells it. Rabbis about the levels Jesus, Bira, Tiferet and Malchut attaching to the grades Reuben, Shimon, Levi and Judah and how this relates to barrenness he speaks a great deal about Judah and about the twelve tribes of Judah saying that they are celestial shapes after the supernal shapes since they were real people in this world the Sheshanah was perfected by them 180 in every respect this turns to incarnation Peretz was so an incarnation of Er Boaz was so an incarnation of Judah Obed was so an Incarnation of Maklon in them all the tree came out of the evil side and then cleaved to the good at first and er Judas firstborn was wicked in the side of Hashem Bershi 387 Maklon was also evil though not as much but in these evil was consumed and good then emerged that is him of whom it is written good looking Ishmael 1612 and Hashem was with him a bit 18 here the lower tree Malchut reached completion and Elohim reigns over the nations Tehillim 479 181 in the very beginning the grades Reuben Shimon Levi and Judah struck root in the supernal essence and foundation there Jesus Bura Tiferet and Malchut it is written of him now I will praise Hashem and she left off bearing Bershi 2935 this is the meaning of sing O barren one you that did not bear Yeshayah 541 since when Judah was born the Nukba Malchut came out attached to the males Eir and but they were not well set face to face and Malchut was not capable of bearing when the Holy One blessed. Be he sought her that is detached her from the back of the male and fixed her she became capable of conceiving and bearing as will be explained 182 in the book of Enoch it is written that she left off bearing does not refer to Leah who is the Mukba of Zeir and above the chest but to Rachel who is weeping for her children Yermeah 3114 it is she the Mukba of Zeir and below the chest who struck root in Judah who is composed of the letters Yud Hay and Dalit Hay and she left off bearing because she is not yet corrected 183 at first everything had the upper form and even Rachel ascended above the chest Reuben is composed of the segments or Ang like Ben Ang son which is the secret of an Elohim said let there be light bear she 13 which is right namely she said of Zeir and Shimon is the left and is light together with the ores of gold because Shimon is composed of the segments Shemavon and name of iniquity which is the left bureau of Zeir and Levi is. Overall unity the joining of the two aspects being the central column that unites the right with the left he is Tiferet of Zeir and after the emergence of Chesed Bura and Tiferet above the chest the Nukba called Rachel came out that is Judah who is the Nukba the female cleaves to the male who is Chesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and Yod Hayvab is the male namely Chesed Bura and Tiferet Dalit and Hay are the Nukba Rachel who was with him with the male 184 he asks the Nukba is alluded to in the letters Dalit Hay while Dalit Hay he answers the Nukba is called Dalit while evil cleaves to her namely when she is of the quality of the left only and is attached to the back of the male she is Dalit which means she is for Hadela and needs to reincarnate referring to the incarnations from Judah to King David to destroy that evil wither in the dust and grow again on the good side namely by building Abba and Iamayanu according to the secret of the verse and of the side which Hashem Elohim had taken from the man he made a woman bear she 222 to emerge from poverty to wealth she is then called Hay and hence Judah is composed of the letters Yud Hay Bob and Dalit Hay Yud Hay Bob being Chesed Bura and Tiferet of the male and Dalit and Hay are the Mukba in her two states mentioned before that unites with the male 185 he said to himself come old man out of the depth have no fear how many ships are waiting for you when you sail in the sea to rest and he wept again and said master of the universe lest the celestial camps shall say that I am old and cry like a child it is known before you that for your glory I do that and not for my own glory for at first I should have kept from entering the great sea yet now that I am in it it behooves me to sail in every direction and come out 186 Judah you are he whom your brethren shall praise bear she 498 that is when we say blessed are you he is blessed when Yezid of Zeir and Pencorus Chesedim upon Malchud. It is called blessed and she you Malchut is called you since the name you alludes to Shesedim as in you shall be a priest. Tehillim 1104 as shall be said Jacob mentioned you in relation to none of his sons except the needed place for Malchut is drawn from the left side where Chakma illuminates without Shesedim she needs the name you which is Shesedim with which to clothe Chakma for without Shesedim Chakma does not shine and is in the secret of darkness this is why he said to Judah you 187 he whom your brethren shall praise they shall all praise you for that name assuredly you are he whom your brethren shall praise for it is due to that name that the other side was gone and subdued this is because when the name Judah is called and mentioned the other side comes out with it namely in the Dalit of Judah that alludes to its first state when she is drawn from the left alone where the other side feeds due to the lack of Shesedim in the right once you is. Uttered which is the drawing Shesedim from the right she has power and greatness and the other side is subdued and not seen there assuredly it is by means of this name that she is marked and extracted from the other side because when she is clothed with Shesedim the other side is distanced from her this is the elevation and power of Malchut and breaking and evil to the other side once your brethren shall praise you for the name you then your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. If it immediately the other side is subdued before you which is brought about by that name 188 I know friends I do know that you ascribe the name you to another higher place as written you shall be a priest forever Tehillim 1104 which is at the supernal right namely Chakma it is well because since the high and low praise Rabbi Shimon and he attained everything everything he said is so and is well 189 but when you arrive at his place tell and remind him of the snowy day when we Planted fifty two kinds of beans for you shall be a priest means that here the cup of blessing which is Malchut called you is attached to the right which is Jesus called priest without any separation hence you shall be a priest forever for here the cup which is Malchut is properly attached and so endures forever one hundred and ninety in regard to this the verse says Judah you and to you your brethren shall praise for it is not written just Judah is he whom your brethren shall praise but the name you his brethren will praise this place Malchut needs the name you and none other one hundred and ninety one Judah is the father first of Er and Onan and father a second time to Peretz and Zerah who are the incarnations of Er and Onan he was never exchanged as the grade never changed by the brother becoming the father for the childless dead incarnates in the son born to his brother who becomes his father which is considered a descent in grades and a blemish but there was no change and descent of grade. In Judah because he was also the first father of Er and Onan who incarnated in Peretz and Zerach this is why Peretz was very forceful as written of him why have you made such a breach for yourself Bear she 3829 this is because his grade did not descend which is not the case for any other man in the world who incarnates who descends as the brother becomes his father therefore the establishment of David begins to be counted with Peretz and not with Boaz who suffered a change not being the first father of the incarnated man who is Maklon friends if you observe my words such words are not spoken vaguely without possibility of understanding them though they are big 192 hence Judah achieved the name called you he was properly established the first time with Er and Onan and the second time with Peretz and Zerach and never changed his children and descendants praise and say you are our father Yeshua 6316 since they did not suffer a descent when the brother becomes the Father this is not so with other incarnated in the world other people who incarnate two fathers and two mothers have a party in their edifice for in addition to his first father his brother becomes his father so he has two fathers and also two mothers as in addition to his first mother his wife becomes his mother these mysteries are in the depths of the sea in the middle of the abyss who could take them out of their eyes old man grows strong with your might and drop pearls out of the depths. 193 Boaz seems to have changed when he begot Obed since Obed is changed for he is his second father he says it is not so I beat son is Boaz why is he called Boaz because he is the first father to bring no change namely Judah who is the first father incarnated in him you may argue that it was he himself and no incarnation of Judah yet surely when he was roused to perform the act of Levi marriage he who was f
yourself performed Levi marriage here all your brethren praise you that the lineage of kingship did not come from them from none of them but from you alone it is you who performed it from beginning to end and from you the whole lineage and race of the lion emerged 196 your descendants are lion cubs who have not turned into your brothers nor changed into a lemon ox or a kid for there are 12 shapes in the 12 constellations which correspond to the 12 tribes the children of Judah had all the image of a lion not the image of other tribes a lion began to establish and a lion concluded the edifice your whole lineage is of lion cubs for had anyone on the side of your brothers incarnated into your children the images would have changed and mixed with each other for that your brethren shall praise that none of them incarnated into your descendants ancestry raise your hand for none of them was mingled 197 this is the meaning of from the prey my son you are gone up there she 499 for there is no prey or food for another on your table he stooped down when he are died he cast one on and died he then got stronger as a lion to sire parrots and as a lioness to raise up Zerak who shall rouse him up if it is written and he knew her again no more there she 3826 which is translated into Aramaic as and he stopped not this is the meaning of who shall rouse him up who can say this woman is forbidden who can say that once she completed her practices you need her no longer than once the widow has finished her practices she is of no more use to you and you are beholden to withdraw from her but who shall rouse him up from now on she is his because she bore him who was moving about in her belly namely the spirit of her first husband which he left in her in his former life it was moving in her belly and now she bore it 198 there is a hidden mystery here why should a man's brother marry his widow and moreover why should Judah his father Marry his widow instead of a stranger who is not a kinsman he answers because he who moves about in the belly of the widow namely the spirit her dead husband left in her sees him who keeps him that is his kinsman and charges against him in every manner had he been a strange man he would have rejected him but he does not wish to push away his kinsman hence he wishes to go away from there once he leaves he summons the other namely the other main spirit of the dead and the two enter the woman's belly again until he is newly established namely incarnates in the semen of the kinsman this came about by means of the fierce denouncement against his brother for which reason he decided to go away from her from now on the woman is permitted to him since the denouncing spirit has already left her this is why the kinsman should marry her because a strange man who is not a relative would have been rejected by the spirit 199 happy is the portion of Judah at first he was a wealth and a lion. As he grew greater and stronger as a lion, he finished as a lioness. It is not so with other people in the world. Hence, Judah, you like we said, 200 Reuben, Shimon, and Levi are threesome, as we said that they are Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet, Judah, who is Malchu, joined them. So everything is as it should be. Issachar and Zebulun are the two thighs, Netzach and Hod. Once the true prophets are sustained, Issachar is the right thigh, which is Netzach. It is written, and of the children of Issachar men, who had understanding of the times, I of Rahim, and 1233, which means that Netzach draws the light of bondage to Malchu, called times, and it is written, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out to Aram, 3318, which means that Hod is the last of the five Sphira, Chesed, Bura, Tiferet, Netzach, and Hod, which is a measure of the expanding of the light of bondage from it down. It is considered going out of the grades in the greater reckoning. There are seven Sphira, Chesed, Bura, Tiferet, Netzach, Hod, Yezid, and Malchut, then it is written Zebulun shall dwell at the shore of the sea and he shall be a haven for ships. Here she 4913 namely down to Malchut that is called both a sea and a ship. What is the reason he dwells all the way to Malchut? Itis because his border or thigh shall be Xide and of it as the measure of his thigh hot expands to Malchut that is called Xide and 201 Benjamin remained above between the thighs being Yezid and though Joseph is Yezid Joseph was its image on earth which is Malchut for use in this world which is Malchut Moses used him as written and Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. Shemot 1319 Benjamin rose up to Yezid of Zeir and, and Benjamin is the righteous one of the world being Yezid 202 below the knees there are two more parts there Dan and Naphtali Gad and Asher in the left leg Dan reaches the joint of the foot namely the middle part Naphtali is the foot segment namely the lower section hence Naphtali is a hind let loose. Bereshi, 4921. Being light footed in the right leg is Gad who shall overcome at last Ibid 19 that is down to the heel joint which is the middle part Asher is in the section of the right heel namely the lower part hence let him tip his foot in oil your shoes shall be iron and brass Devarim 3324 thus in the three segments of the right leg are Issachar in the upper Gad in the middle and Asher in the lower part in the three parts of the left leg are Zebulun in the upper Dan in the middle and Naphtali in the lower part all these twelve tribes are celestial shapes after the supernal shapes since they were real people in this world the Shechinah was perfected by them through the twelve parts which are the twelve flows that were drawn from Israel himself who is Zeir and Ben has written all these heavily are the twelve tribes of Israel Bereshi 4928 the flows from Israel are called Eli from which the name he spreads out to make the building fit so that Israel will be included in the name Elohim Aleph Lamed Hayyud Emi Emily Aleph Lamed Hayyud Israel in general and me Emi Emyud unites Eli with it to make the building duly whole into one real name two hundred and three. This is what the minister of Esau said to Jacob as written for you have contended with Elohim. Bereshi three thousand two hundred and twenty nine that I as above since he rose with the letters of Elih of male and female to be included in the name Elohim which was their joint and made whole through the first correction in the first establishment. All these heavily are the twelve tribes of Israel. Surely this is the first edifice where the joining of Mi with Elih is effected two hundred and four. Therefore Israel will never ever perish. Had they perished, heaven forbid the name Elohim would not have existed. This is the meaning of and cut off our name from the earth. And what will you do for your great name? Yahshua seventy nine namely this great name the first establishment the first name Elohim. Now that Israel are in exile it is as if the whole establishment collapsed in the Future to come when the Holy One blessed be he will redeem his children from exile me and Eli that were apart in exile will join and the name Elohim will be duly whole and the world would be sent. This is the meaning of who had me are these heavily that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows. Yeshea 608 205 since the name is one whole it is not written me and Eli that fly as a cloud but me Eli as an indivisible name this is the name Elohim for now in exile me has gone up so to speak into Malchut and the mother namely Malchut is gone from the children Israel the children fell and the name Elohim which used to be whole being the first great name collapsed 206 for this we pray and sanctify in synagogues the name Elohim so it would be established like it used to and we recited the Kaddish may his great name grow exalted and sanctified amen may his great name be blessed forever and ever what is his great name it is the first one namely the name Elohim that was completed in the first establishment for it is established only in us as me will be only built with the letters of Eli therefore at that time Eli that fly as a cloud and the whole world will see that the celestial name is well composed 207 and if his great name Elohim is corrected and well built Israel rule over everything and all the other names reach perfection and Israel have power over everything since they all depend on his great name the first of all establishments 208 the secret behind it is that when the holy one blessed be he who is by the created the world's male and female this name was built as the first establishment as written lift up your eyes on high and behold who had me has created these heavily Yeshayah 4026 has created his name Elohim well formed when he created Eli he created it with all the powers proper to it to be his name suitably formed as written that brings out their host by number of 290 asks what is by number in that brings out their host by number and answers the Holy One blessed be he has a son that shines from one end of the world to the other he is a great and strong tree is it of Zeir and his top reaches the height of heaven which is Zeir and that is called heaven and at his ending his root spread and strike root in the holy earth which is Malchut according to the verse for all that is in heaven and on earth I did Rahim 2911 his name is number he originates in the upper heaven that is Zeir and and five firmaments hang in heaven which are Shesed, Vira, Tifer, Netzach and Hod down to this number which is the sixth firmament namely is it all the firmaments receive the name number Heb Misbar for is it as written the heavens declare Heb May Supreme Tehillim 192 due to that
and the number of the fourth part of Israel, Bimidbar 2310. There were two who counted the flock that was numbered by them because the evil eye had no power over them. Who can count the dust of Jacob refers to one who counts the number of the fourth part of Israel is the second enumerator 211. Over these two, the evil eye has no power for who can count the dust of Jacob refers to the holy stones, strong stones from which water sprouts into the world of this. It is written, and your seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Bear she 2814, as the dust of the world is blessed for his sake, so and in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Bear she 2218, like the very dust of the earth, number is the second enumerator who counted so as to cause all those females, the celestial pearls, to rest on the bed on which Jacob was lying, which is Malchu 212. From then onward, it counts everything because it is, it has a good eye, hence it is written, he counts the number of the stars tail in 1474 which means that they are all reckoned by it in the future to come it is written shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that counts them your maya 3313 yet we do not know who that is whether the first or second one but since at that time everything will be together indivisible all will be conducted by one enumerator 213 he said to himself rise old man wake up and grow strong to sail in the sea he opened with the verse who can count the dust of jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel when the holy one blessed be he will awaken to raise the dead those who were incarnated who are two bodies with one spirit namely the body of the dead man and the body of the incarnated who both have but one spirit they have two fathers the father of the dead and that of the incarnated body and also two mothers how many incarnations do they undergo for that until one is corrected for though we learn this and it is so yet who can count the dust of Jacob which is the first one to count that will amend everything all the incarnated bodies and nothing will be lost so everything will rise to resurrect 214 we have studied and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake Daniel 122 the dust of the earth is as was said in the book of Enoch that the friends looked at the letters floating in the air which are all of I and Dalit pay M-E-M fresh which form dust of the earth 215 hence so I praise the dead that are already dead Kahila 42 which are the letters of dust of the earth that is both the dead of the aspect of dust and the dead of the aspect of earth a voice is roused to inform saying so during the second edifice which is the body of the incarnated which corrects both the body of the dead of the aspect of dust and the body itself which is the aspect of earth it is it that says so I praise the dead that is fixes and the dust is the first dust which is the body of the dead man the earth is the second corrected one the body of the incarnated man to which the sterile first one is refuse for the body of the childless dead man which is sterile is as refuse in relation to the incarnated body which corrects it hence it says so I praise the dead that is fixes them 216 those sleeping in the dust of the earth shall all wake up those that were corrected are destined to live forever live for the world which world is that it is the lower world namely malchute for they did not merit being in the upper world but descended to the female world those who did not merit correcting will be to shame and everlasting contempt Daniel 122 he asks what is contempt and says that the other side will be removed from the world and the holy one blessed be he will leave those who flowed from that side for people to wonder about this is a meaning of to shame and everlasting contempt 217 who brought all this about the man who did not want to be fruitful and to procreate in the world or to uphold the holy covenant he thus brought about all that and all the incarnations I mentioned until now he said to himself up to here old man he was silent for a moment the friends were stupefied and did not know whether it was day or night or whether they were there or not 218 the old man started with if you buy a Hebrew servant six years he shall serve and in the seventh Shema 212 this verse proves all that we have said come and see every male is in the image of the male world which is Zeir and, and every female is in the image of the female world which is Malchut when one is a servant of the holy one blessed be he cleaves to the six primordial years namely Chesed Vira Typhoret Net Sachot and Yezid of Zeir and, and but if he tears himself away from worshipping him the holy one blessed be he tears him from the six years of the male world namely Chesed Vira Typhoret Net Sachot and Yezid of Zeir and, and he is given to the man of six extremities Chesed Vira. Typhoret net Sachot and Yezid whom he serves for six years torn away from the supernal six years of Zeir and 219 after that he descends from there and is given to the female world he who did not want to dwell in the male goes down to dwell in the female which is Malchut the Nook becomes which is the seventh sphere and takes him of her it is said and in the seventh he shall go out free of it from now on he is of the female world 220 if he did not want to be maintained by her or her redemption saying I love my master he will not go out free of it five he goes down to cleave below attaching himself to the other side from now on he is torn from the world of the male and the world of the female because he has joined the servants of the other side 221 now that it is so and he is attached to the other side he needs a blemish to be branded with a mark of blemish namely and his master shall bore his ear through within all of its six since every blemish pertains to the other side then he shall serve him forever live to the world if it that is until jubilee called world from the jubilee on he incarnates again and goes back into the world as before cleaving no further than the female world if he attains merit he begets offspring in the world of the female which is malchute which are all described in the verse the virgins her companions that follow her shall be brought to you tell him 4515 he is worthy when he perfects himself to attain that 222 if he has no merit even when he incarnates at the jubilee he is as if he never was for he incarnated again yet did not perfect his life by marrying in the world and siring offspring it is then written if he came in by himself he shall go out by himself shema 213 if he entered the world alone without children and did not care to strive after that but left the world alone without children he moves like a stone in a sling up to that place in the strong rock behind the garden of eden there he enters but alone Spirit blows at once that left his wife and came there this is the spirit that remained in the wife by her first husband which goes solitary like a snake that does not keep company on the road for it is separated from the two spirits in the woman and goes alone it blows on him on the spirit of the childless dead man that just came there that is pushes it away from there so it will incarnate and perfect itself 223 whereupon he leaves that place of the strong rock alone without a wife and roams in the world until he finds a redeemer to bring him back to this world for his improvement that is if he came in by himself he shall go out by himself without a wife he who did not wish to marry and have children since he has no spouse he has to marry a divorced woman 224 but if he is married but he who did marry and tried with her but could not beget children such a man is not driven away like the other nor comes out alone but if he is married the holy one blessed be he does not withhold reward from anyone even though he did not have children it is written and his wife shall go out with him but the two incarnate and are able to unite again he does not marry a divorced woman like the other who has no spouse but marries the same woman with whom he tried before yet they had no children now they shall attain it together if they act well hence it is written and his wife shall go out with him 225 if his master has given him a wife before the verse returns to another subject to him who went out alone without any wife the place called seventh namely Malchut shall redeem him and that seventh is considered his master it is the master of the whole earth if his master has compassion for him and brings him back to the world solitary as he was and gives him a woman for whom the altar sheds tears namely a divorced woman they marry and she bears him boys or girls the wife and her children shall be her masters if it of holy Malchut as we learn 226 for if he repented and corrected the place he blemished during his life he is accepted before the holy king who receives him and then sets him right he is considered a penitent since he inherited a dwelling in that place of the flowing river namely Malchut for the river that comes out and flows is yes at its bed is Malchut he improves his former state once he is corrected and has repented he achieves perfection for there is nothing in the world no key in the world that the penitent cannot break. 227 he asks what is the meaning of he shall go out by himself Hebgipo he answers we have already studied it yet it contains another hidden meaning he shall go out by himself Hebgipo is the same as in the highest Hebgipi places of the city Michelin 93 as in the latter Gipi is an expression of exaltation and praise here to Gapo has the meaning of exaltation and praise in the place to which the penitent rise even the most accomplished righteous cannot dwell therefore once he repented. The Holy One blessed be he accepts him 228 we have learned that nothing in the world withstands repentance and the Holy One blessed be he surely accepts everyone if one repents
and repented the Holy One, blessed be he accepts them two hundred and thirty. Therefore such a man even though he rebelled against him and blemished where he must not have blemished but repented before him he accepts him and has pity on him for the Holy One, blessed be he is full of compassion and is filled with compassion for all his works as written and his tender mercies are over all his works. Tehillim 1459 his mercy reaches even beasts and fowl so if his mercy reaches them all the more so people who Recognize and know how to praise their master when his mercy reaches them and dwells on them. Regarding this, David said, Great are your compassions, Hashem, give me life as is your want. Tehillim 119,156, 251. And if his mercy reaches the wicked, the righteous, all the more, but who needs healing, those who suffer pains, who suffer pain, the wicked, who need healing and mercy for the Holy One, blessed be he takes pity on them, so they will not be forsaken by him, and he does not go away from them, so they will return in repentance before him. When the Holy One, blessed be he beckons, he does so with the right, and when he repels, he does so with the left. When he repels the right, beckons, he repels with one side and beckons with the other. The Holy One, blessed be he does not withdraw his mercy from them. 232, come and see, but he went perversely in the way of his heart, followed by, I have seen his ways and will heal him, I will lead him also and bestow comforts on him and on his mourners, Yeshua. 45,717 to 18 he explains but he went perversely means though the wicked do what they do willfully and follow the way of their heart and others admonish them but they care not to listen to them nevertheless when they repent and take the good path of repentance remedy awaits them 233 we should observe now whether the verse refers to the living or the dead for the beginning of the verse is not as its ending nor the ending the beginning the first part of the verse points at the living saying but he went perversely yet the latter part points to the dead saying and bestow comforts on him and on his mourners he answers the verse speaks of living man and it is thus he went perversely in the way of his heart because the evil inclination within him is strong and gains power hence he went perversely and does not care to repent 234 the holy one blessed be he sees his ways that he walks in evil to no use he says i need to hold his hand as written i have seen his ways walking in the darkness I wish to give him healing as written and will heal him the Holy One blessed be he brings into his heart the path of repentance and healing for his soul I will lead him also, what does this mean it resembles the words go lead the people Shema 3234 and the Holy One blessed be he leads him in the true path as one holding someone's hand leading him out of darkness 235 and bestow comforts on him and on his mourners he asks it seems as if he is dead not as in the first part of the verse he answers assuredly he is dead even though he is alive since he is wicked he is considered dead what is the meaning of and bestow comforts on him and on his mourners he says the Holy One blessed be he acts kindly with people ever since one's thirteenth birthday he gives two guardian angels to be with him and they guard him one to his right and one to his left 236 when man walks the right path they rejoice in him and uphold him with joy announcing before him saying give Honor to the image of the king, but when he treads the crooked path, they mourn for him and leave him. When the Holy One blessed be, he holds him and leads him in the right way. It is written, and bestow comforts on him and on his mourners. First, I will bestow comforts on him, for he regrets all that he did formerly and what he has done now, and repents then on his mourners, who are the angels that mourned him when they departed from him. Now that they have returned, there are consolations. Heb. Nishumim in every aspect, he both regrets Heb Midnachim his deeds and takes comfort Heb Midnachim for his troubles and mourning. 237. Now he is surely alive, he is living in every respect, holding to the tree of life. Since he is attached to the tree of life, he is called the penitent for the congregation of Israel, which is Malchut, is also called penitence for repentance. Heb Teshubah is composed of the segments Let Bob return, Heb Tashav to Hey the Bob is the tree of life, Zeir and Ben and Hayes. Malchut hence Malchut is called repentance and he is called repentant and the ancient sages called him man of repentance literally namely the husband of Malchut called repentance which means he bestows plenty on her therefore even the holy righteous cannot dwell where the penitents do the old merchant talks about David's situation when he took Bathsheba to wife and when he slew her husband Uriah with the sword of the children of Ammon he says that David did no sin when he took Bathsheba but that he should have killed Uriah when he rebelled against the kingdom rather than using the Ammonites to kill him some sins are against other men and some are just against God 238 King David said against you you alone have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight Tehillim 516 what is the meaning of you alone he answers there are sins man commits against the holy one blessed be he and against people sins against people but not the holy one blessed be he and sins against it. Holy One blessed be he but not against people King David sinned against the Holy One blessed be he alone but not against people hence he said against you you alone have I sinned 239 he asks yet if you argue that he did commit that sin by Bathsheba we learn that whoever commits a sexual transgression with a man's wife renders her forbidden to her husband and thus sins against his neighbor and against the Holy One blessed be he answers this is not so the sin you mentioned was permitted and David took that which was his for she had a letter of divorce from her husband before he went to war it was then the custom that men in Israel who went to war gave their wives a letter of divorce applicable after a certain time Uriah did the same with Bathsheba after the time had elapsed she was permitted to any man and David married her whatever he did was permitted 240 for had not it been so but prohibited the Holy One blessed be he would not have let her stay with him Thus it is written as testimony and David comforted Bathsheba his wife 2 Samuel 1224 this is the testimony that she was his wife assuredly she was his wife and soul made ready for him from the day the world was created this testifies that David did not commit sin by Bathsheba as we said 241 what was the sin he committed against the Holy One blessed be he and not against another it is that he slew Uriah with the sword of the children of Ammon instead of killing him when he said to him and my Lord Job 2 Samuel 1111 seeing that he himself was his master this the verse proves in the words these are the names of David's warriors 2 Samuel 238 and not Job's warriors thus he is a rebel against the kingdom which is punishable by death yet he did not slay him at that time but rather by the sword of Ammon 242 the text says that there was no fault found in him save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite I may 155 save only indicates exclusion that he sinned in the Matter of Uriah and not sent by Uriah himself the Holy One blessed be he said and have slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon I Shmuel 129 on each of the swords of the children of Ammon a crooked serpent was engraved an image of the dragon which is their idol the Holy One blessed be he said you have empowered that abomination for when the children of Ammon killed Uriah together with many of the children of Israel the sword of the children of Ammon grew strong at that time and much strength was added to that idol and abomination 243 you may say that Uriah was no righteous man since it is written of him that he is Uriah the Hittite but it is not so he was righteous only he was Hittite after his place just like Hittite the Gileadite Shoftim 111 was so named after his place the same applies to Uriah the Hittite 244 hence it is written in the matter of Uriah the Hittite and not against Uriah himself for he was already liable to death penalty for rebelling. Against the kingdom as mentioned this is because he caused the abomination of the children of Ammon to prevail against the camp of Elohim of David's army who had the very shape of above of the host of supernal Malchut when David caused a defect in his camp he caused a defect above in another camp David therefore said against you you alone have I sinned against you alone and none other was the sin he committed hence the verse says in the matter of Uriah the Hittite and hence with the sword of the children of Ammon which means that the sin was not against Uriah himself but in the matter of Uriah by giving power to the sword of the children of Ammon 245 it is written for the eyes of Hashem run to and fro throughout the whole earth to the and 169 which are female as run has a feminine suffix and it is written the eyes of Hashem they rove to and fro through the whole earth Zechariah 410 which are male as rove is masculine so they are distinct some of them are Considered male and some female David said and done that which is evil in your sight eyes Tehillim 516 he asks it says in your eyes while it should have been before your eyes he answers yet the reason for saying in your eyes I asked that David said the place against which I have sinned was in your eyes because I knew your eyes were ready and set before me yet I was not mindful of them thus the sin I committed was against your eyes 246 so that you are justified in your sentence and clear
said there are two chambers in the heart one with blood and the other with air the one filled with blood is an abode for the evil inclination yet my heart is not so because it is empty and I have not given place for the evil blood to allow the evil inclination to dwell in it my heart is surely clear without an evil dweller since it is so it was not befitting David to commit that sin only to give a pretext for the wicked to say that if King David sinned and the Holy One blessed be he forgave him. How much more so the rest of the people in the world hence David said then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall return to you Tehillim 5115 249 and it is written and David went up by the ascent of the Mount of Olives and wept as he went up and had his head covered and he went barefoot 2 Samuel 1530 he asks wherefore was his head covered and he went barefoot and he answers he was reprimanded he made himself reprimanded in order to receive punishment and the people were four cubits apart from him happy is the servant who serves his master this way and makes known his sin in order to wholly repent it 250 come and see what Shema the son of Gera did to him was greater than all the troubles he had until that day yet David did not answer back anything for so it became him and thus his iniquities were atoned for 251 we should now observe this Shema was a sage and had great wisdom why did he come to David and do what he did to him he answers this came from a different place that put it into him whatever he did was for David's benefit for what Shema did to him caused him to wholly repent and broke his heart greatly so he shed many tears from his heart before the Holy One blessed be he hence it says because Hashem had said to him curse 2 Samuel 1610 he knew that this has come down from another high place 252 David bade his son Solomon do two things one concerning Job the other Shema among the other commands he bade him one Concerned Job has written moreover you know also what Job the son of Triad did to me I may lash him 25 it was something unknown that even Solomon could not have known but since others knew Solomon found out hence he said moreover you know what he was not supposed to have known 253 one concerned Shimei is written and behold you have with you Shimei the son of Gerah Ibedade what is the meaning of with you he answers he is always at your disposal since he was his teacher this is why he did not say of Job and behold you have Job with you but of Shimei who was constantly by him he said and behold you have with you 254 and the king sent and called for Shimei and said to him build you a house in Jerusalem Ibed 36 he asks where was King Solomon's wisdom in doing this and he answers he did everything wisely and noticed every aspect that Shimei was a sage Solomon said I want Torah to increase in this land by Shimei and that he shall not leave it 255 another thing is that Solomon observed wisely the words he came out cursing as he came to Samuel 165 why does it say came twice he came out cursing should have sufficed and he answers once he came out of the study hall to curse David and once he came out of Jerusalem for his servants for which he died he came out once for the king and once for his servants Solomon saw all this and looked through the Holy Spirit at the second coming out hence he said for it shall be that on the day you go out I may lash him 237 he knew that he will die going out 256 and cast dust to Samuel 165 he asks what does it mean and cast dust and he answers it was dust by my father and water by Shimei is written for it shall be that on the day you go out and pass over the wadi of Kidron it was dust there and water here Solomon took account of them both so that he will be punished by dust and water like a soda wife suspected of adultery he who accused his father by the way 257 it is written who Curse me with a grievous curse and I swore to him by Hashem saying I will not put you to death with the sword. I may lash him 28 he asks what is with the sword was Shimei a fool that he did not understand that had he sworn this way he may not say later not with the sword but with a spear or an arrow 258 he answers there are two matters here the child the son of the great fish whose scales rise to the height of the cloud spoke of the first when David wanted to swear an oath he would draw his sword on which the engraved name was imprinted and thus swore it so he did with Shimei is written and I swore to him by Hashem saying I will not put you to death with the sword how did he swear with the sword the other matter is that Solomon considered and said he came cursing to my father that I swore so I too have words for him so he slew him with the tetragrammaton and not with the sword this is why Solomon acted this way 259 we should now observe if David swore to him why did he Kill him for it seems as if this oath was false since he did not speak his mind he answered surely David did not kill him it is known that every body part receives but the heart does not receive even a hair's breadth King David was the heart of Israel but received what was not befitting for him to receive namely Shimei throwing stones and casting dust at him therefore know what you ought to do to him but nine moreover the tree namely as being of the aspect of Malchut the small tree caused him to be vindictive and grudging as a snake 260 it is written for you desire not sacrifice or else I would give it you delight not in burnt offering the sacrifices of Elohim are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart Elohim you will not despise Tehillim 5118 to 19 he asks for you desire not sacrifice does not the Holy One bless be he desire a sacrifice to be offered him he did decree that the wicked would sacrifice an offering so their iniquities would be atoned for and he answers but David addressed that to the name Elohim which is the attribute of judgment a sacrifice is not brought to the name Elohim but to the name Yadvav Dalat hey Aleph Bav Aleph Bav hey Aleph for a sacrifice is not brought to severe judgment the attribute of judgment is written if any man of you bring your offering to Hashem Vei Ikra 12 to Yad hey Bav hey and not to the name Elohim it is also written and when any will offer a meal offering to Hashem Vei Ikra 21 a sacrifice of peace offerings to Hashem Vei Ikra 2221 and a sacrifice of thanksgiving to Hashem Vei 29 yet the name Elohim is not mentioned 261 therefore since King David addressed the name Elohim it had to be written for you desire not sacrifice or else I would give it you delight not in burnt offering for to that name only a broken spirit is offered as written the sacrifices of Elohim are a broken spirit a sacrifice to Elohim is sadness and a broken heart hence whoever had a bad dream needs to look sad because he is under the attribute of Elohim and the sacrifice to the attribute of judgment needs to be sadness and a broken spirit sadness is useful for bad dreams so judgment has no power over him for he offered the proper sacrifice to the attribute of judgment 262 a broken and a contrite heart Elohim you will not despise Tehillim 5119 he asks is you will not despise indicative that there exists a heart to be despised he answers yes namely a heart that is haughty a heart that is presumptuous such is a heart he despises but a broken and contrite heart Elohim will not despise 263 do good in your favor to Zion build you the walls of Jerusalem Ibid 20 he asks what is meant by do good is it not apparent that there already exists something good in it thus why do we need to pray to do good to that which is good answer it is certain that prayer is needed for the purpose of doing better as from the day that the Holy One blessed be he was involved with the construction of it. Supernal temple until this day no good will dwell in that edifice and so it was never completed but when the moment arrives when his favor on high is aroused he will do good and kindle the lights of that edifice which shall project to such an extent that even the angels on high will not be able to gaze at that edifice the temple then the temple with its auxiliary tasks will be completed concerning this he prayed do good in your favor to Zion 264 build you the walls of Jerusalem he asks is it possible that from the day that he endeavored to build the temple to the present he did not construct them if the walls of the temple were not built then surely the temple was not built and so why does he say to do good in your favor to Zion meaning the temple normally walls are built first then the temple itself answer the works of the holy one blessed be here not similar to those of man when building the temple below man first constructs the walls of the city then the temple the walls of the city must first protect them then work can be done with the temple this is not so with the Holy One blessed be he first he constructs the temple and later after lowering it from heaven and placing it upon its side he builds the walls of Jerusalem which are actually the walls of the city therefore David may he rest in peace said do good in your favor to Zion first and then build you the walls of Jerusalem 265 here there is a secret generally in all doings of the Holy One blessed be he at the outset he proceeds to work upon what is on the outside and then he proceeds to the inner part within yet here it is not so since he proceeded with the construction of the temple prior to constructing the walls which are in the exterior why he answers come and behold in all doings where the Holy One blessed be he proceeds with the outer work in the planning stage he begins with the inner meaning the innermost however in actual doing he
The world as the thought of Israel came first, as in thought the innermost preceded the shell as mentioned before the heathen nations are like the shell to Israel they came first indeed because in action the shell comes before the inner part of the fruit as listed earlier as written and these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before there reigned any king over the children of Israel. Beersheet 3631 In the future the Holy One blessed be he will bring forth the fruit without. The shell as written Israel is holy to Hashem the first fruits of his increase. Yermeah 23 meaning that the fruit comes before the shell even though the fruit will stay without a shell who would dare extend his hand to eat of it because of the verse all that devour him shall be held guilty evil shall come upon them says Hashem Ibn 268 of that time it is written then shall you be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness Tehillim 5121 because then all will be enjoined into one end. The name will be whole in all its aspects and there will be a whole sacrifice to Hashem Elohim presently Elohim is not enjoined with the sacrifice for if he was enjoined with it numerous other Elohim would raise their ears in an attempt to join and nurture from holiness heaven forbid however in the future time it is written for you are great and do wondrous things you are Elohim alone Tehillim 8610 without any other deities at the time of resurrection we are told all those who have not died will experience death from the Holy One blessed be he and will then immediately rise back to life this is in order that none of the impurity in the world will remain and that the new world will be brought about from the workings of God 269 at that time it is written see now that I even I am he and there is no Elohim with me Devarim 3239 he asks see now that I even I am he this would be sufficient so why mention the word now answer the situation never existed before but from this time on it will exist the Holy One blessed be he said see now what you were unable to see before 270 that I even I am he he asks why is I written twice answer it is to stress that there is no other Elohim but him there sometimes where it writes I once and not more there may be the other side but now I even I am he and there is no Elohim with me for the other side has vanished stressing exclusively that I alone am he 271 I cause death and bring life of it until this moment Death was brought about by the other side from this time on I will cause death and give life meaning from that time on, meaning a time of resurrection, all those who did not experience the taste of death from him from the Holy One blessed be he will then experience death and rise immediately back to life death will be brought about by the Holy One blessed be he in order that none of that impurity in the world will remain there shall be a new world brought about from the workings of it. Holy One blessed be he 272 and if the servant plainly said I will not go out free Shema 215 as we explained and he is impaired with a blemish meaning his master shall bore his ear with an all if he came in by himself if it three what is meant by by himself we learned with the Aramaic translation that this alone is a fine translation however we did learn that the world maintains itself with only one fin of the Leviathan 273 this is its secret where there was both male and female. Leviathan as the Holy One blessed be he created them as male and female wherever they went they caused the earth to tremble had not the Holy One blessed be he sterilized the male and cooled down the female they would have disturbed the earth as a result they do not produce offspring this is the essence of if he came in by himself had meaning if he comes under the wing of GF of the Leviathan that is if he produces no offspring he shall go out by himself he is thrust away there and can not enter in the vicinity of the king at all he is thrust away and caused to be lost from that world thus he shall go out by himself truly alone 274 come and behold it is written they will die childless Vayikra 2020 the word childless comprises male and female he arrives through the secret of the male and departs by the secret of the female he arrives with one and departs with the other this is the place that he clings to in that world meaning in Malchut the Holy One blessed be he does not want anyone to come before him who sterilized himself in this world 275 come and behold this is the example of the sacrifice they did not offer before him that which has been castrated they would remove it so as not to offer it before him he commanded neither shall you do thus in your land Vayikra 2224 and so unto all generations it is prohibited to emasculate any creature created by Hashem as emasculation stems from the other side 276 if he endeavored and married and did not produce offspring or he did not want to although married or she did not want to produce offspring and later came to that world childless we find the verse says if he is married and he did not give proper attention to, to the work of the holy one blessed be he to have children then his wife shall go out with him he enters under the wing of the male and she under the wing of the female denoting Malchut and each one of them who came in by himself shall go out by himself also his wing as we explained everything fits in well 277 if his master has given him a wife as we learned if his master refers to the master of the universe notably Malchut who has given him a wife we see here that man does not have the complete authority to marry a woman all depends on the scale meaning according to the measure of his merits and so he has given him a wife as this is not under his authority who is she she is not his not his mate and not set for him who is she she is a woman designated for someone else but through mercy he won her first and married her this woman was given to him though she was not the proper one for him 278 the holy one blessed be he sees this from afar that this woman is poised to bring offspring into the world and after this man initiated with pleas of mercy she was given to him he thus had offspring and planted a seed with the woman that was not his therefore the wife and her children shall remain her masters and he shall go out by himself see how wretched poor man toiled for not to bring forth fruit in a garden that was not his and departed empty handed 279 he says to himself old man in a time such as this you were not as one who pushes a gate open with his feet as one who lies on the ground without strength and as a result of his weakness he is unable to open the gate so he pushes on it with his feet have courage old man do not fear this poor unfortunate toiled for not why is it because he did not plant in a garden of his own and we could understand but here the holy one blessed be he gave him this garden to plant he did not take it on his own initiative 280 but come and behold all the things the holy one blessed be he has done are according to the law there is nothing found wanting if the holy one blessed be he gave him a wife and he produced fruits and plants he is not like other incarnated ones one who endeavors in this world to enlarge the tree but is unable is not the same as one who makes no effort to enlarge but instead uproots causes leaves to fall from the tree and diminishes its fruits 281 he whose master gave him a wife to produce offspring who strove before to enlarge the tree but was unable does not possess many merits had he possessed the proper merits he would not need to reincarnate as it is written and to them will I give in my house and within my walls a memorial better than sons and daughters Yeshua 565 but now that he does not merit the holy one blessed be he sees that he tried to have children and was unable then his master has given him a wife as we learned and as a result of the holy one blessed be he showing mercy that he gives him a wife out of mercy he takes his own back he takes what caused that well to diminish from before this for this reason the wife and her children shall be her masters later he must return and work on himself to compensate for his loss here ends the secret of the verse 282 he said to himself Old man you are saying that he toiled in vain to beget children but you really did not pay attention to yourself that you walk in vain for in regard to what you said there is a verse that contradicts your entire construction and you thought that you were swimming in the sea to your heart's content what is this verse it is written if the servant plainly says I love my master my wife and children Shema 215 we see that he again merits them and so he did not toil in vain 283 woe old man weary without strength what shall you do you thought that there was no one pursuing you but there is a verse pursuing you coming out from behind the wall like a doe in the field that is that he did not remember before but suddenly remembered as if it's hopping after you with 13 hops behind you denoting the 13 words in the verse from if the servant plainly says until the word free with the last word not included it did reach you what should you do old man now strengthen yourself because you were a mighty person until now old man remember the snowy day we planted beans and there were mighty warriors against you and you alone defeated 13 warriors who had each slain a hungry lion 284 if these 13 mighty ones have you defeated then how much more so these 13 words in the verse if the servant plainly says which have no more power than words it is written he will surely say the way of the holy one blessed be he is to execute his judgment with all when the time arrives for that woman that the servant took to find her real mate what does the holy one blessed be he do he slays the servant that married her not being her real mate and her real mate takes her and the servant departs this world alone 285 and if the servant shall plainly say let's speak saying the friends have maintained
requests daily before the Holy King just as he acquired her through mercy so too the ending is with pleas for mercy this is the essence of speak saying he speaks at the beginning to hasten the taking of her through mercy and later pleads that he should not be shunted aside before her real mate and that his petition be received with mercy he says I love my master because of his numerous prayers he is beloved by the Holy One blessed be he immense his actions saying I love my master my wife and my children I will not go out free the Holy One blessed be he receives his penance and manifold prayers 287 what does the Holy One blessed be he do though he was prepared to reincarnate him and cause him to endure punishment in this world for his actions he does not return him to this world what does he do he brings him near to the heavenly council he judge him submit him to the house of punishment and the Holy One blessed be he brands him with all he is handed over to Punishment house to remain under the dominion of the uncircumcised until a specific time and then he redeems him 288 if at that time when he is being marked with the all the jubilee has arrived and even if it is one day until jubilee it is thus considered as if he spent the full time until jubilee this is a penalty and no more with the arrival of jubilee he is redeemed and brought into the presence of the holy one blessed be he the old man closed his eye for one moment the merchant now begins a long section to do with strength speaking about strong mountains about the strong foundations of the earth about king solomon and about the mighty patriarchs this leads to the issue of the birthright that jacob took from esau and jacob's strength over his brother the serpent was able to seduce adam because adam lacked strength and might that quality first appeared in seth jacob's strength already existed in the form of joseph 289 he began and said here o mountains hashems Controversy and you strong foundations of the earth for Hashem has controversy with his people. Misha 62 He then said to himself, Old man, until now you were in the depths of the sea, and now you have skipped over the powerful mountains to wage war with them. Until now, surely you were in the strong sea, but prior to coming into the deep sea, you met these powerful mountains that are located in the midst of the sea. Now you need to wage war against the depths of the sea and these mountains. 290. Weary old man without strength who put you into this, you were in a state of peace, but you wanted this, you caused this, you are going to suffer. Now there is no other way for you but to wage war and conquer everything and not turn back. Be strong, gird your loins, and do not fear to smash these mountains so they do not overpower you. Say to them, High mountains, mighty peaks, how strong you became. 291 Two verses are written, one writes, Arise, content before the mountains, and let the hills hear your. Voice of it, one another writes here, O mountains, Hashem's controversy. There are mountains, and there are other mountains. There are mountains very lofty, denoting Chesed, Bura, and Typhoret. About these, it is written here, O mountains, Hashem's controversy. There are other mountains whose heights are somewhat lower, denoting Net Sashat, and yes, regarding these, it is written, Arise content before the mountains, because the pursuer of quarrels is upon them, meaning there are judgments in them. Hence, there are different mountains. 292, you may say that yet it writes, Let the hills hear your voice. These hills are below, and you make mountains of them. He answers, It is so when compared to the lofty mountains, these are called hills, but by themselves they are called mountains. 293, come and behold, it is written, and you strong foundations of the earth. He asks if it wrote here, O mountains, who then are these strong ones? He answers, Mountains and strong ones are really the same, however. Mountains are the three upper ones over top of the strong ones denoting Chesed, Bura, and Typhoret. The strong ones are three lower ones namely Net Sashat and Yezid. It is all one concerning the upper mountains. David said, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Tehillim 1211. These refer to the three primary ones namely Chesed, Bura, and Typhoret. Strong foundations of the earth refer to the three secondary ones below the primary which are the supports of the temple namely Net Sash and Hot. And one is the joy of the temple namely Yezid. These are called the foundations of the land. They are strong and are called strong. 294. He said to himself, Old man, you are aware that he who wages war if he is not on guard cannot win wars. He needs to strike with his hand and be on guard in his thoughts. Whatever the other plans he must anticipate and be on guard. The right hand is designated at all times to strike and his left hand and his thoughts to receive and be on guard. The thoughts to be on guard. The left hand to receive blows from the adversary, the right serves in anything. 295. Now you speak of the strong ones. The strong ones have Itanum are below, denoting Net Sashat and Yezid, and mountains above, denoting Bura and Typhoret. Be on guard, old man, as there is another thought that conflicts with yours, as written a masculine of Itan, the Ezrakite, Tehillim 891, referring to old Abraham called Itan. So if Abraham is known as Itan, then Isaac and Jacob must be referred to as Itanum. Lit strong ones, and we know that the fathers denote Chesed, Bura and Typhoret, for Chesed, Bura and Typhoret are referred to as strong. Rise, old man, as you see that this thought conflicts with your thought. 296 and took up his discourse and said, Strong is your dwelling place. Bimid bar 2421. Itan refers to the morning of Abraham, as written as soon as the morning was light. Bear she 443. This refers to the pillar denoting Yezid, that the entire earth denoting Malchud leans upon it. Light is received from Abraham denoting Chesed the river exiting Eden is so called denoting Yezid and so Yezid is referred to as Itan he said to himself old man one thought is in opposition to you and you are unable to be on your guard how can one wage war old man where is your strength surely nor the battle to the strong Kahilat 911 297 it is written a masculine of Itan the Ezraite and there is a verse a masculine of David denoting the river that flows from Eden alluding to Yezid that clarifies David representing Malchut to inform him of these concealed heavenly matters and so Yezid becomes referred to as masculine Eredite now if masculine alludes to the river flowing from Eden meaning Yezid that is below in Net Sashat and Yezid then Itan the Ezraite alludes to Abraham whom I know to be above with Chesed Bura Typhoret and though I am an old man I overcome this thought but Itan the Ezraite points to two grades as the verse says as soon as the morning was light. Light denotes Abraham who is Chesed morning is the river which is Yezid so in relation to Itan the Ezraite Ezraite alludes to Abraham and Itan is as we said that river flowing from Eden namely Yezid 298 now old man stand upon your chariot as you will now fall and will not be able to rise behold King Solomon he came with his host chariots warriors and cavaliers and they come towards you rise and leave the field so they will not find you there it is written and all the men of Israel assembled themselves to King Solomon at the feast in the month of Adonim I Melashim 82 this means the month that the Itanim lit strong ones were born who are these they are the fathers who are the mighty ones of the earth this month is Tishrei in which the alphabet is in reverse order from below upwards meaning proceeding from top to Shinresh Kuf so also the letters of Tishrei represent the letters going backward for the Itanim are the fathers who are Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet. 299 furthermore from your own words saying that Itan the Ezraite represents two levels you had better leave the field and not be found for had the verse said a masculine Itan the Ezraite then things would be fine since as you maintained IT represents two levels but now that it writes a masculine of Itan the Ezraite your fight is meaningless because now it appears that it is one level not to depart the field unwillingly and do not be seen 300 oh poor unfortunate old man how are you going to leave the field if you do they will be victorious over you and you will have fled the field everybody will chase you and you will never have courage to see anyone no now I swear that I will not leave the field I will see King Solomon face to face and any man of Israel with the warriors cavaliers and chariots the holy one blessed be he will help you old man as you are weary and without strength arise old man have courage for until now you were a mighty force 301 he commenced it is Written a masculine of Itan the Ezraite had it been written a masculine of David the explanation would have been as you said reflecting is it that offers bounty to Malchut called David but it is written a masculine of Itan he answers there is masculine and there is masculine masculine on high and one below masculine of Itan is to tell us when that river is it rises with yearning all limbs rejoice and join with him if it rises to the point that that supernal mind Chesed becoming Chakma is favored to him and rejoices in him then you have a masculine of Itan the Ezraite for it instructs have masculine Itan the Ezraite instructing is it and informs him through Abraham his beloved representing Chesed that rose to become Chakma with all that is necessary that supernal mind being Chakma is masculine of Itan denoting is it when King David denoting Malchut is established with yearning to Yezid, Yezid inform
pleaded before him saying Moses all the upper and lower keys are dependent upon this key Moses said master of the world what is its name you replied Itan and all other Itanim are dependent upon it within it are maintained net sashat and Yezid which are outside of the body of the written Torah which is Zeir and Penit Zeir and Penit forms it meaning flowing with knowledge and instructs it and it the diadem of Yezid is the principle and the key of the written Torah Zeir and Pen 304 and when oral Torah which is Malchut affixes itself to it then it the diadem of Yezid becomes its key meaning of Yezid of Malchut then surely Yezid is referred to as a masculine of David who is Malchut and due to the fact that the oral Torah inherits it and it becomes its Yezid called Rish Shintop that illuminates from down upwards so in IT the letters are in reverse order and as a result its Yezid is called Tishrei in which the letters are in reverse order that is Tafshin Rish Kuf the letters are Tafshin Rish but being the secret of the holy name namely Malchut the holy one blessed be he imprinted a letter of his name Yud thus called Tishrei Tafshin Rish Yud upon the altar also a name of Malchut he added in its Yezid the letter Hey of Yud Hey Bob Hey such as the Hey of that the net had Hershit Hey Rish Shintop may reach the midst of the altar Shema 275 Borah came also being a name of Malchut and he placed in her Bob as it is written and sang Hab Badishar Bob Tafshin. Rest for and in this place Yezid of Malchut the seal of the holy name is imprinted upon it 305 when that key the diadem of Yezid opens the oral Torah meaning when it is affixed to its Yezid it is necessary to understand that this is the meaning of Tanya lit it has been taught in the variety consisting of the letters in Itan and then applies strong Hab Itan is your dwelling place Bimit bar 2421 as Malchut is called dwelling place when it receives from the diadem of Yezid it is mentioned regarding its strong is your dwelling place called Berita meaning something outside of the body of Zeir and Berita stems from the word outside which is external Itanum in the written Torah Zeir and becomes the Tanum of the oral Torah Malchut these are supporting pillars outside of the body meaning Net Sachat and Yezid now it needs to be known that when these Net Sachat and Yezid are called with regard to the written Torah Zeir and Itanum then with regard to the oral Torah they are called Tanim which is spelled with the same letters Itan is used with regard to the written Torah Tanya with the oral Torah and everything is as it should be 306 friends behold I am in the field King Solomon the king and his mighty warriors will come and find an old weary man who is strong a warrior victor of wars I know that he will come standing behind the rock in the field he watches me how my strength abides in the field he alone watches me he is a man of peace who has peace go now old man with your strength you are alone in the field return to your place remove your weapons from yourself 307 your own mountains Hashem's controversy and you strong foundations of the earth your own mountains is to be explained as we have said and you strong foundations of the earth is the foundations of the earth indeed which is Malchut referred to as earth for from them the strong ones Net Sachat and Yezid Malchut is nurtured and receives bounty daily therefore they are the foundations of the earth 308 for Hashem has controversy with his people who can stand his ground when the Holy One blessed be he quarrels with Israel regarding which he says to them your own mountains Hashem's controversy this is one dispute arise content before the mountains is the second dispute the Holy One blessed be he one in all disputes with Israel and all the admonitions are as a father admonishes his son so we have explained it 309 about Jacob it is written concerning the time he came to be victorious over him Hashem has also a controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob Hashia 123 what is the controversy it is as it is written he took his brother by the heel in the womb before and this resulted in the admonition and all these controversies this is an important matter that he took his brother by the heel in the womb what he did in the belly is not a simple matter he asks was he deceitful in the belly he answers assuredly so 310 so we Learned that in every way Jacob rejected Esau so that he would not have any share in holiness. Esau complained only about one which equal two as it is written for he has supplanted me these two times. Bereshit 2736 it should have been written he has supplanted me two times what is the meaning of the word these have they lit this he answers he was insinuating about one thing which has the value of two one that turned into two what is it when rearranging the letters of my birthright have. Bekeretai it becomes my blessing have Bereshit this two times means one item equaling two three hundred and eleven Esau did not know what Jacob did to him in the belly but his appointed minister knew the holy one blessed be he caused the heavens and the hosts to tremble from the sound of the voice of the accusation of the minister of Esau he could have claimed blessing and birthright but said nothing he should have put in a claim for the blessing but did not he claimed brotherhood as it is written and that you hide not yourself from your own flesh. Yeshayah 587 Jacob did not want to give him any food before he took the birthright from him. 312 What birthright did he take? He took from him the birthright of above and below, meaning the holy birthright on high to offer sacrifice and the birthright below to receive two shares. The word Bekor birthright is written minus above. He then supplanted Hebikef his brother and made a heel of him and threw him backwards. What is backwards? He caused Esau to precede him into this world. Said Jacob to Esau, You take this world first and I will follow. 313 Come and behold, it is written. And after that came out his brother and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. Bereshit 2526 What is meant by Esau's heel? Do you really believe that his hand was grasping the other's leg? Not so his hand was grasping someone who is a heel and who made that be it is Esau. Esau is known as a heel from the time that Jacob followed him and from the day. Of creation, the Holy One, blessed be he called him heel as Esau is of the aspect of the serpent as it is written concerning him, it shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Bereshit 315, meaning you who are called heel will bite first and in the end he will bruise your head who is his head. I the head of the serpent that strikes in this world. 314, and so in the womb he was insidious and deceitful to his brother, and so Esau took first this world as the verse writes. And these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before there reigned any king over the children of Israel. Bereshit 3631, the secret is alluded to by King Solomon who says, An estate may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but its end shall not be blessed. Mishlei 2021, by the end of the world. 315, and so he took his brother by the heel in the womb and by his strength he strove with Elohim. He asks what is meant by his strength, he answers, they explained it as his might and this. Is well, but actually it is not so. The true clarification of the matter is that Jacob was a supernal image and holy body to the extent that since Adam there was no body and beauty, as that of Jacob, the beauty of Adam was literally the beauty of Jacob, and the image of Jacob was actually the image of Adam. 316 When the serpent came and seduced Adam, the serpent was able to overcome him as Adam lacked strength or might, as up until that day he who was comprised of his strength and might was not. Born and who is Adam's strength and might, this was Seth who possessed the identical image of Adam as it is written, and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Bereshit 53 What is the meaning of in his own likeness after his image? It means born circumcised. So when the minister of Esau came to Jacob, Jacob's strength and substance already existed in the form of Joseph. This is the meaning of and by his strength he strove with Elohim as Joseph was his strength. 317 What is the sound of the woman which the sound of the snake can join with as do a male a female dog? He answers the serpent's voice cannot cling to any voice of a woman but there are two kinds of women with whom he can unite. One is a woman who does not observe the days of her menstrual impurity and the day of cleansing and purifies by immersion a day too early or a woman who delays the marital visits despite her husband unless her husband does not mind or does not care about it. 318 With these two women as one hastens to immerse before the proper time one also tarries with the voice of the serpent until the voice is merged just as she delays her marital visit to distress her husband in postponing the performance of a precept so the voice of the serpent advances to merge with the voice of the woman. These two women with whom the sound of the serpent is caught up are comparable to the union of the male and female dog. Uncleanliness follows uncleanliness a species seeks out its own 319 one may ask why it should bother us if one voice is caught up with another or not he answers woe that the people in the world perish unknowingly if the woman's voice mingles and joins with the voice of the serpent when sinful evil Lilith comes out of her lair when she meets these two voices the voice of the serpent and the voice of the woman the
Wait, meaning the serpent about whom it is written sin crouches at the door. Beersheet 47 being the door of Malchut stands by the door like a dog when the last sound is emitted when the woman about to give birth cries just before birth he skips from the door and goes after the woman. Why? Because the Holy One blessed be he sends a key to open the womb and when the voice flies forth the key comes the serpent follows the voice that is emitted and goes to the hill of the stomach, denoting Yezid as Netzach hot and Yezid are called the lower mountains. It bites that place opens the womb and knocks there until such time that she is cleansed from the filth of the bite of that evil serpent. The Holy One blessed be he brings about situations and performs fitting actions. 323 All this nurturing of the serpent comes because that belly was rejected. It is sure that the serpent was shunted from that belly and has no part in it. Also he is shunted from the belly below of other women in it. World as women below are branches of the supernal nukba so even though he can distress them he has no right to dominate them which belly does he have authority to dominate it is the belly of the so a married woman suspected of adultery about whom it is written and her belly will swell. Bimid bar 527 with this belly he acts with vengeance as this belly is his to do with what he wishes and the holy one blessed be he allowed him this in order that he not be totally shunted my friends. Listen I have not seen you or spoken to you all things are full of weariness Kahilat 18 no one can speak even Torah words are wearisome 324 it is written and Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him Beersheet 3225 and, and when he saw that he did not prevail against him he touched the hollow of the thigh from that hollow did the other side profit from Jacob that thigh was in a state of weakness until Samuel came what is its weakness it did not draw the light of prophecy. When Samuel arrived he took that thigh and removed it from the place of the other side and snatched it away from it from that time that it was removed from it it had no part of holiness at all 325 the Holy One blessed be he did not withhold or reject it totally when Samuel took the thigh but gave it one portion he gave it the thigh and belly of the soda in exchange for the thigh and belly taken from him both things the Holy One blessed be he gave to the other side so that the place of holiness would be free of it altogether 326 it is written and your thigh to fall away be midbar 522 he asks it should read and her thigh shall fall away it is written to make the belly to swell but yet it should be written and her belly shall swell he answers this is similar to one who throws a bone to a dog and tells him this is your share hence the verse says to swell to fall away nothing hurt it so much as when it was deprived of the thigh for which it struggled as indicated from the verse and there wrestled a man with him it earned it yet it was taken from it so the holy one blessed be he threw it the bone of the soda as we said and with that it was happy and satisfied 327 all these chariots and its companions always desire the thigh and yearn for it as a result the knees of the sages are weary from the other side as all its yearning is for the thigh and particularly for the sages thigh everything is returned to its place and the holy one blessed be he lacks nothing and he wishes that only his people his lot his portion shall approach holiness as the holy one blessed be he does above so the children of Israel do below and so it should be as we learn the children of Israel are prohibited from teaching Torah to the heathen as it is written he declares his word to Jacob he has not dealt so with any other nation Tehillim 14719 to 24 it is necessary to distance them from sanctity 328 and so Jacob and Samuel shunted it aside so that it would have no part of holiness for this reason all the preservation of hatred towards the children of Israel is about this it is similar to a dog that sees a clean bird from the market and before he had a chance to shatter it a man came snatched it from him and later gave him a useless bone to carry about 329 so it is with the minister of Esau he was removed from the womb the thigh taken from him and later given a bone namely the stomach and thigh of the soda and of none other this is the bone given to him as his share and lot and this was delightful to him all judgments of the holy one blessed be he are truthful yet people do not realize or pay attention to the holy one blessed be he however all is with truth she the other side deviated from her husband as the verse says who forsakes the friend of her youth Mishle 217 and so to the corresponding wife on earth meaning the soda is handed over to her 330 come and behold one who finds a friend like himself who acts like him will love him cling to him and favor him with kindness however the other side is not so when it finds someone who has left the holy side of the holy one blessed be he and behaves like it and clings to it then it attempts to destroy him this woman imitated its way and clung to it look what it did to her and her belly shall swell and her thigh shall fall away the holy one blessed be he is not so he will love that person who leaves the other side and clings to the holy one blessed be he and he will dispense every kindness in the world to him he said to himself now old man prepare yourself as the serpent tries to entice you but is unable the old man's talk returns repeatedly to the issue of one who has no offspring he says that god does not want anyone who practices evil to produce future generations that might devastate the world the merchant tells the story of king solomon riding on the eagle 400 parasangs until arriving at the mountains of darkness there in the area of the olive tree king Solomon learned the foreign wisdom that he was interested in and then went aboard the eagle again and returned home and he contemplated that wisdom that he had learned he knew of the many oppressed signs of the world 331 he began to say what profit has a man of all his labor wherein he labors under the sun Kahila 13 he asks Solomon trying to teach us only this had he said in his labor that he does I would understand that there is work that brings profit however when he writes of all his labor that includes everything that nothing has profit 332 he answers Solomon did not make a statement regarding all people there are people that are constantly busy doing evil and harming others and do nothing positive at all therefore the verse uses the expression his labor instead of his toil his labor Hebamalo means in evil deeds as a verse writes his mischief Hebamalo shall return upon his own head Tehillim 717 or nor has he seen perverseness Hebamal in Yisrael, Bimidbar 2321, the word toil is used to imply positive acts as the verse says, for you shall eat the toil Hebyeji of your hands, Tehillim 1282, and Elohim has seen my affliction and the labor Hebyeji of my hands, Bereshit 3142, but Abamal it says mischief and spite, Tehillim 1014, hence he said, what profit has a man of all his labor wherein he labors under the sun, for it is under the sun, alluding to the other side which is below the sun, 333, when man practices. Evil the verse writes, he will have no child nor offspring among his people, Eof 1819, the Holy One blessed be, he does not want him to produce future generations, for if he produced offspring he would devastate the world, and so it says, what profit has a man of all his labor, one who does not try to have offspring becomes part of this evil man and finds himself under his wing, 334, Ruth said, spread therefore your skirt also wing over your handmaid, Ruth 39, so that she would mate with it. Righteous man to produce offspring and the Holy One blessed be, he spread his wings over people in order that they should be fruitful, but the one who refuses to produce offspring, he came in by himself also in his wing, the wing of the evil man who remains childless as a serpent who operates alone, he shall go out by himself, refers to one who did not try to have offspring, we have already discussed this sufficiently, 335, the dispute that the Holy One blessed be, he engaged with, we have. Learned is as the verse says arise contend before the mountains who are they there are the mountains below namely Netzach and Yezid what is the essence of this contention with them are intertwined all sins that Israel commit before their heavenly father how is that Israel knew of the worship the conjuring of the heavenly angels not even one name of theirs was unknown to them nor their worshiping 336 in two ways they used to whore after them one they knew how to draw the powers of it stars and constellations on earth and two they knew how to cause them to call upon them and all that is needed for this the holy one blessed be he was to engage in contention and judgment against them the mountains as all angels and heavenly ministers receive their power from Netzach and Yezid referred to as mountains inasmuch as they are subject to contention and judgment their lights will be blurred the entire chain meaning the angels of Bria Yetzira and Asiya shall fall as they will be of no use since their powers have been made void and therefore it says arise and contend and let the hills hear your voice he asks who are the hills he answers these are the mothers namely the seven chambers in Bria who are levels called the virgins that follow her Tehillim 4515 meaning seven maidens that service Malchut so did Israel do until they took part with the lower levels he said to himself old man return to the earlier words 337 Israel sharply struck the other side
The sages they represent he who is sitting in the tent Jacob there is no accusation without a cause nothing happens without justice and judgment and so everything returns to its place 339 Solomon said so I returned and considered all the oppressed signs that are done under the sun and behold the tears of such as were oppressed and they had no comforter and on the side of their oppressors there was power but they had no comforter Kahila 41 we have spoken of what he is hinting at the verse says I returned from where did Solomon return one may conclude that it means after this matter he repeated something else and so he means I have gone back this is fine but if so he should have said returned and considered why does he say I returned 340 there we learned that daily Solomon would rise early turn his face eastward namely to Tiferet and the central column and see what he saw later he would turn to the south namely Chesed and the right column and see what he saw later he would turn northward being Bura and the left column stand there lower his eyes and raise his head 341 at that moment a pillar of fire and pillar of cloud would come on the cloud pillar was an eagle large and powerful in this manner did the eagle approach the right wing was over the pillar of fire its body and left wing on the cloud pillar that eagle brought two leaves in its mouth all three the pillar of cloud pillar of fire and the eagle bowed before King Solomon 342 the eagle came bent before him and presented him with the leaves King Solomon took them smelled them and recognized the sign he said that one is from falling down and the other is of having his eyes open Bimidbar 2416 when the two leaves were before him he realized that both falling down and having his eyes open wished to reveal something to him 343 what did he do he stamped his throne with the same seal in which the holy name was engraved he took the ring that was engraved with the holy name and went up to the attic he rode on top of the eagle and took off the eagle climbed to the highest clouds and wherever he passed the light dimmed the wise men where the light dimmed understood and said that King Solomon was passing by but they did not know where he was going the fool said the clouds are causing the darkness 344 the eagle lifted the bird with him and flew 400 parsangs until arriving at the mountains of darkness there Tarmod lies amidst the wilderness in the mountains he descended there raised his head saw the mountains of darkness and knew all that was needed he realized that he must enter there he rode the eagle again and flew into the mountains to that place where the olive tree is located he cried loudly Hashem when your hand is lifted up they will not see Yeshayah 2611 345 he entered and approached the area of the olive tree placed the ring before them and approached there he learned whatever he wished of the foreign wisdom that interested him once told what he needed he again boarded the eagle and returned to his place once again sitting on his throne he thought of and discussed this precious wisdom with himself he then said so I returned and considered meaning I have returned from that trip I have brought back this wisdom and I have assembled it in my mind and considered then all the oppressed signs that are done 346 do you really believe that all the oppressed in the world were seen by King Solomon that the verse says that I considered all the oppressed signs he answers but the oppressed mentioned are the children dying while on the knees of their mother deprived in several ways oppressed in the supernal area above from the standpoint of their spirit and oppressed below from the physical standpoint the friends have commented about this yet there are many oppressed besides these he said to himself old man rise be alert speak your words for surely you will speak without fear 347 there is no one so oppressed as those whom one oppressed previously by sinning or if due to his sin the third generation to the fourth after him are punished the children die without sin and so their oppression is not that harsh this is not so if they themselves their fathers or their grandfathers sin as it is written punishing the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation Shema 205 348 he asks how would he oppress what was his sin he answers King Solomon cried out a man that is burdened with the blood of any person shall flee to the pit let none support him Mishlei 2817 now that he is oppressed with the sin of shedding the blood of the soul he his son or grandson will be held hostage upon the scale by the other side as it is written shall flee to the pit let none support him so to the pit of the other side let him flee from holiness without support in this world once guilty of the sin of blood of any person he or his seed will be oppressed by the other side 349 There are those oppressed more than others, they are oppressed because of the sin of you shall not defraud which his father or grandfather has transgressed as written you shall not defraud your neighbor. Vaikra 1913 He transgressed and oppressed so he is repaid measure for measure thus he becomes oppressed by his sons through the hands of the other side. Therefore Solomon says of all the oppressed signs also oppressed I am aware and know of every oppression from whatever side it comes. It was not necessary that he saw every oppression in the world. 350 He asks why in the verse the oppressed signs also oppressed that are done under the sun does it say that are done when it should have been that dwelt also if the doing is praiseworthy then their doing is above the sun where benefit and correction take place but here the verse mentions beneath the sun 351 He answers assuredly they are done but how so if they are deprived of their spirit why come to this world? Through reincarnation the expression doing had ACI applies to the body which is in the world of ACI spirits are surely completed fashioned with spirit and body in this world when the body is perfected and that spirit is fashioned and clothed in a pure clean body without the soil of sin in this world then the body becomes as deprived as the spirit this is the body that the other side enjoys above all others there are other oppressed spirits of various types not fashioned into bodies never incarnated in this world but these are the oppressed that are done with bodies and so the verse is written that are done 352 there are others that were made where people implored their master who are they the child born from one who oppressed his neighbor's wife secretly or openly is oppressed as the consent of their master was not obtained and it was without knowledge of the husband of the woman these creations are oppressed signs and they make it imperative that the holy one Blessed be he provide them with a body and design an image there are the oppressed signs that are made since their bodies are made by compulsion for this reason King Solomon said I considered all the oppressed signs I am aware and know of many kinds of oppression made in Asiyah 353 like these there are oppressed signs that were done by the foreskin that took cause the body to grow made it and later upon becoming bar mitzvah they snatch it from it this is another example of oppressed signs that are done about all these King Solomon said I am aware and know of all the oppressed signs that are done 354 and behold the tears of such as were oppressed everybody shed tears with complaints before the holy one blessed be he because the foreskin the other side caused them to reach 13 years and then later they were taken from the foreskin and the holy one blessed be he takes them these are oppressed signs that were already done 355 a 13 year and a day old that committed a sin for which the penalty is death is put to death these people have reason to complain and may in the future say master of the universe a child one day old who has sinned is so judged I am like a child one day old is right after bar mitzvah the holy one blessed be he called me son as it is written Hashem said to me you are my son this day I have begotten you Tehillim 27 master of the universe is a child who is one day old to be so judged these are the tears of such as were oppressed and they had no comforter 356 there is another example of oppressed this oppressed one is called a bastard when he is deceased he is set apart from the holy congregation this poor unfortunate bastard this refers to a real bastard born to illicit relationship pours out tears before the holy one blessed be he with the following complaint master of the universe if my forbearer sinned what wrong have I done my actions are proper before you here are the tears of such as were oppressed and they had no comforter it is the same with all these oppressed who have reason to complain to the Holy One blessed be he with this complaint there is no comforter and no one to soothe their hearts 357 this that says behold the tears of the oppressed refers to those who die in the bosom of their mother these are bound to shed tears for mankind for there are no other tears from the heart like these tears for all the people in the world stand in wonder and say but the judgments of the Holy One blessed be he are true and follow a truthful course why do these innocent children die where is the judgment of truth that the Holy One blessed be he practices if it is due to the sins of the parents why is this so assuredly they had no comforter 358 moreover behold the tears of such as were oppressed refers to their tears in that world that protects the living we learn there is a designated place in that world where even the completely pious have no standing and the Holy One blessed be he loves them, clings to them, and places them in his supernal yeshiva about them. It is written out the mouths of babes and sucklings have you found its strength. Tehillim 83 What is the gain from their being there, and why do they ascend there as the verse continues? Because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. There is also another place for those who repent. The merchant
Of Elohim Shema 3216 he asks wherein do we see that they were created just before Shabbat perhaps they were created a thousand years later or at the time Israel stood at Mount Sinai he answers it surely was just before Shabbat come and behold throughout creation we do not find the full name but only Elohim that name is found throughout until creation is completed at Shabbat only after the completion of creation do we find the full name Hashem Elohim 360 even though with the name Elohim he created all it did not go into effect until just prior to Shabbat only then was the work completely done as it is written his work which he had done Bereshit 22 and from all his work which Elohim had created with three meaning only then did it go into effect and so the verse and the tablets were the work of Elohim means when the world was completed and done with the name of Elohim which was at Shabbat even not later as when the verse refers to Hashem Elohim and completion came to the world and it was set 361 come and behold at the time Moses smashed the tablets as it is written and broke them at the foot of the mountain Shema 3219 the ocean rose from its position to flood the universe and at once he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and scattered it upon the water of it 20 Moses rose against the ocean and said waters waters what do you want they replied the universe can only survive through the Torah upon the tablets but the children of Israel have rejected the Torah and made a golden calf instead we wish to inundate the world 362 immediately he said to them all that transpired with the sin of the golden calf is known to you is it not enough the thousands that perished because of it immediately he scattered it upon the water but the waters were not pacified until he took water from them from the ocean and caused the children of Israel to drink of it then the ocean sank to its position 363 for in the wilderness there was no water as it is written it is no place of seed nor is there any water to drink. Imidbar 205 so he must have used the waters of the ocean one may think that he threw the ashes into the well of Miriam but heaven forbid that Moses would throw a memorial of this terrible act there and drink of it afterwards furthermore at that point they did not have that well it was only when arriving at the wilderness of Matna as it is written the well dug by the prince and from it. Wilderness they went to Matna of Imidbar 2118 at that point they acquired the well it is written here upon the water Shema 3220 and it is written elsewhere upon the face of the deep bear sheet 12 just as there the reference is to the ocean so it is here 2364 engraved upon the tablets what is meant by engraved had upon the tablets he answers we have that it means freedom had from the angel of death freedom from subjection of nations freedom from everything what is. Freedom it is the seal of the world to come wherein there is freedom expressed in all kinds of freedoms had Moses not broken the tablets what followed in the world would not have happened Israel would have retained an angelic image above and below this is what the verse proclaimed and the tablets were the work of Elohim do not say that once the world was completed and the complete name of Yudh Hav hey Elohim was mentioned and the tablets came about it is not so but rather when the world was completed with the name of Elohim prior to the Shabbat 365 he asks it is written where Hehima the work of Elohim what is meant by Hema which is superfluous he answers switch its letters into Mahalat from Hehe meaning from two sides the two Hays of the name Yudh Hav hey and Malchut one indeed namely the last Hay Malchut one of the freedom above which is the first Hay registered above in Bana to watch over everything hence it is written Hema the Writing is the writing of Elohim, meaning black fire on white fire is head who the writing of Elohim resembles the verse the lovets shall do the service of the tentlet of him who imidbar 1823 referring to Bina called who denoting freedom as we said for jubilee denoting Bina is also called freedom as it proclaims freedom to all the old merchant now reveals himself to be Yabasaba the elder and Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi prostrate themselves before him and weep they said to him may we be favored that our image be engraved in your heart as your seal is engraved in our heart 366 until this point are my words from here on be advised that the evil side will not have any hold on you I Yabasaba the elder stand before you to make you aware of these things Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi rose as one who had awakened from sleep prostrate before him unable to speak after some time they wept 367 Rabbi Shia commenced the discussion set me as a seal upon your heart as a seal Upon your arm, Sher Hasharim 86, set me as a seal when the congregation of Israel Malchut clung to her husband's Eir and she said, set me as a seal. The way of a seal is as follows. Once it comes in contact with something, it leaves its mark even though the seal itself moves about and does not remain there. It left its shape there and there remains its shape. The congregation of Israel says the same. Once I have clung to you, my mark will be engraved with you even though I move from place to place. My mark will remain with you and you will thus remember me. 368, as a seal upon your arm like the verse, his left hand is under my head and his right hand embraces me. Sher Hasharim 26, so here my mark will be engraved and so I will always adhere to you and not be forgotten by you. For love is as strong as death, mighty as that place where death dwells. Love is the place known as eternal love. 369, jealousy is cruel as Sheol. The same is here as mentioned earlier with love these. Names such as love jealousy stem from that side meaning the left side the coals thereof are coals of fire he asks what are these coals he answers these refer to precious stones and pearls formed from this fire representing supernal levels meaning from these flames emanating from the supernal world from the left side Bina takes hold of the congregation of Israel to become one unity and he said to the old man as for us our love and flaming heart is with you may we be favored that our image be engraved in your heart as your seal is engraved in our heart the old man kissed them blessed them and they left 370 when they reached Rabbi Shimon they told him what transpired he stood in awe and said how fortunate are you to have merited this you were with the supernal lion this mighty hero compared to whom almighty people are nothing and you did not recognize him at first I wonder how you were saved from his penalty but the holy one blessed be he wished to protect you he said about them but the path of just men is like the gleam of sunlight that shines ever more brightly until the height of noonday Mishlei 418 when you go your steps shall not be confined and when you run you shall not stumble Ibid 12 your people also shall be all righteous they shall inherit the land forever they shall be the branch of my planting the work of my hands that I may be glorified Yeshua 6021 until this point all comes from Rab Y.E.B. of the elder section for if men strive the title verse is explained as saying that if Michael representing holiness and Samael representing defilement strive and hurt the congregation of Israel Samael will be punished by the Holy One blessed be here I may him the faithful shepherd 371 if men strive Shema 2122 these are Michael and Samael Michael represents holiness Samael defilement and hurt a woman with child Ibid this is the congregation of Israel denoting Malchut so that her children depart from her refers to the exile he shall be surely punished refers to Samael according as the woman's husband will lay upon him refers to the Holy One blessed be he section 5 returning that which was lost Rabbi Shimon says that the thing that was lost was Malchut that Moses lost when the tablets broke Malchut can rise only with the aid of her husband Moses and this is the lost thing returned he tells Moses that the Torah was revealed to him because it is like the waters of a well the well is said to be Malchut which recognizes its master all the waters of the universe are gathered within her as it is endless and broader than the sea drawing water from this well brings all the world's wisdom Rabbi Shimon says that in the future God will set aside cities of refuge for Moses as in every generation there is the incarnation and expression of Moses 372 the following precept is regarding returning lost articles and to return that which was stolen the Holy Luminary meaning Rabbi Shimon said to Moses the Holy One blessed be he will in the future return the article you lost because of the mixed multitudes this is your bride denoting Malchut as Moses is considered the husband of the matron when the mixed multitudes made the calf your bride fell as the verse states he threw the tablets out of his hands Shema 3219 alluding to Malchut 373 it is mentioned with you go get you down of it 7 that verse alludes to your demotion into the fourth exile go its explanation I is similar to get you out of your country Bereshit 121 meaning entering into exile here in the name of Moses there is a shin consisting of three lines in the secret of Loel does all these things twice or three times with a man Eo 3329 here in the three lines of the shin it is indicated to you Israel to go three times in exile while with the fourth exile get you down on behalf of your only daughter meaning Malchut who is really your bride that fell as
Torah it is said, and from hence they went to be well that is the well, Imidbar 21.16. The well is full, its waters do not spill out, it is the well of water of Torah, as Torah is referred to as water that produced all waters, meaning the entire Torah and all waters in the universe enter within it, and its waters do not spill out, but rather they are gathered within her 375, even if all mankind were to draw the water of this well, and even if all the clouds did it would not miss even a Here's breadth of it. This well is endless deeper than the Torah as it is written and broader than the sea. Eof 119, one who draws water with the pitcher had cat caf dalit of the well meaning of the 24 caf dalit holy scriptures absorbs all the world's wisdom and surely the well itself 376. And so in the future the Holy One blessed be he will return that which was stolen from you namely the staff as it is written and pluck the spear out of the hand of the Egyptian to Shmuel 2321. For it was you who was referred to as an Egyptian man in your exile and your incarnation as in every generation there is the expression of Moses he will set aside for you cities of refuge to save yourself from your endless pursuer section 6 setting aside cities of refuge Rabbi Shimon continues to speak to Moses telling him that he has merited the last hay due to his seeking it with repentance returning it to his master leading it out of exile and not Seeking any reward God put his name in Moses and he put his thoughts with Moses Moses endeavored his whole life with truth so God allowed him to be raised with the Torah of truth and to be incorporated with all its qualities and letters, with the holy name Yadhei Babhi 377 now we have the commandment of setting aside cities of refuge for one who killed due to the Egyptian man you slew in Egypt who contained within him the primordial serpent and his encampment that surrounded him you killed him prematurely and you did not fear his followers numerous women pursued you in your youth, the Klippot and Amagrat, Black Lilith and the Holy One blessed be he gave cities of refuge to save you from them these are the gates of repentance 378 this is because you are a son of Yadhei as Moses was at the level of Bob denoting Zeir and being the son of Abba and Iamah who are Chakma and Bina Yudhei and after you returned with repentance with the last hay of the name Yudhei Bav. Hey, you ascended to Bina and merited now the name Yehavah, which is the tree of life. For Bina is called living Elohim, and Zeir and that ascends to Bina is called the tree of life, and therefore you have merited the last Hey, which is Malchut. All this is due to your bringing yourself after it with repentance, returning it to your master, leading it out of exile, and not seeking reward. Three hundred and seventy-nine. And the Holy One, blessed be He, put His name in you, and since your thoughts were with the cause of causes, notably Keter, He put His thoughts with you, denoting the secret of Chakma, which is why Yehavah hey, fully spelled with Aleph is with the numerical value of Mem Hey equals forty-five. As Chakma Chet Caf Mem Hey consists of the four Caf Chet of forty-five Mem Hey. For through the name of Mem Hey, which is the central column of the Mokin, which is Chakma, revealed the cause of all causes, unifies all these letters within you in order to reorganize and know Him through these letters. Three hundred and eighty. After being. Included in thought, which is the secret of the first three Sfirah, he goes on to explain how he received the other six Sfirah and says, Since you dispense kindness with the Shechen, all the precepts are yours with which to provide for the pious, have chased man who is pious to his possessor. So he gave you the quality of Chesed, you observed the negative commandments and had to overcome your inclinations to tie it under you, and you strove with this precept only to tie up Samael under the Holy One. Blessed be he, and to have the maid of Samael who is an evil maid servant bound under her mistress, namely Malchut, and then all their appointees and their hosts. Therefore, the Holy One, blessed be he, has given you the quality of Bure that will be at your assistance to cause Samael his maid and all their hosts to fear and be tied in a chain under you. 381. And since you repented with the sign of the covenant, namely Yezid, by the descended being the letters Yehavah to join with it. Righteous namely is it for your sake and so the Holy One blessed be he gave you the sign of the covenant of the righteous namely is it as you did everything with a pure thought so descended the explicit name upon you and from there from the thought which is three first Sfirah did it descend on you 382 and because you strive daily with both of your lips in prayer to extol your master with Adonai open my lips utilizing both lips with words of the prophets and the writings and all types of song and tune in prayer the Holy One blessed be he lowers them through your two lips net sash and hot even more so in your level being the middle pillar namely Tiferet with which you endeavored all your life with truth the Holy One blessed be he allowed you to be raised with the Torah of truth incorporated with all qualities and letters such as Jesus Bureau Tiferet net sash hot and Yezid with the explicit name consisting of four letters Y U D A Bob which is the first three Sfirah. 383 Before you repented, you were associated with the tree of knowledge of good and evil servant and child were your original names as it is written, and behold, a weeping boy Shema 26 or a devoted servant as written by servant Moses is not so, for he is the trusted one in all my house. Bimid bar 127 The evil that is the partner of a servant caused you to sin by the rock as the staff handed you came from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, meaning Metatron and Samael. Metatron is good and Samael is evil. Section 7 MEM 10 and MOT The rod Rabbi Shimon tells Moses that the staff given to him will be a tree of life denoting Bob, which will become a rod. He explains that two precepts were validated. You shall surely help him to lift them up again, and you shall surely unload it with him. These allude to Messiah the son of David and Messiah the son of Joseph. The third precept is that of the gleaning the forgotten sheep and the poor man's tithe rising. Meaning redemption is in Moses level 384 and now that you have repented and enjoined yourself with the tree of life and you have relinquished the role of servant and returned to be a son to the Holy One blessed be he the staff have made a given to you will be a tree of life, denoting Bob which is the son of Yudhei the Bob will penetrate the MEM 10 equals 49 aspects you have in Torah and will become a rod have MOT MEM Bob 10 and as such can be fulfilled with the verse he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved have MOT Tehillim 5523 the 49 aspects are the secret of the 49 letters in SH Yisrael and blessed is the name of your glorious kingdom forever representing the six words of supernal unity pointing to the supernal Bob equals six denoting Tiferet and then the six words of blessed is the name is a second group of lower unity meaning to point to the second Bob in the letter Bob fully spelled Bob Aleph Bob denoting the righteous reflecting is it and they are a rod have MOT we Find in the middle of two bobs there is an Aleph the secret of the verse and they carried it between two on a pole. Bimidbar 1324 meaning two VABS 385 if it lacks a bob in the middle the word becomes MEM meaning the righteous bends have met before the villain what caused this Aleph equals one one of fifty as fifty gates minus one were given to you as the masters of the mission explain fifty gates minus one of Bino were given to Moses this is the missing Aleph from the fifty so only MEM equals forty nine remain this is why the righteous bends before the villain who is the villain it is a male three hundred and eighty six this MEM stems from your staff have made a as it is written with the rod have made of the Elohim in my hand Shema one hundred and seventy nine your staff is that of Moses and therefore the letter Aleph which is Bina comes back to you as recorded in the mission Aleph is Bina it returns to you as a result of repentance and enters between the two bobs to become Aleph is fulfilled in you. The verse, but with great mercies will I gather you, Yeshayah 547, for the sake of Israel, from this point will be fulfilled. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Have MOT 387. At that time, two precepts were validated. One, you shall surely help him to lift, lift, lifting, will you lift them up again? Devarim 224, and two, you shall surely unload it with him. Shema 235, surely help lift together with the supernal Bob alludes to the first Messiah, namely Messiah the son of David, and in helping with the second Bob, namely the second Messiah, being Messiah the son of Joseph, him refers to the son of Amram that ascended to Bina, which is equal to Allah situated between the two VABS as mentioned. They refer to the Bob written out fully as Bob, 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 Bob 388, whom shall you help to rise? It refers to the letter, hey, namely Malchut that fell in the fifth millennium after 72 years, according to the counting, you shall surely unload Hevizov with him, Azovian. Zayin Babet equals the letters Ayin Bet Z
To support them as the poor are from the aspect of the righteous meaning Yezid you shall surely unload it Yezid the righteous with him refers to the son of Amram this is the meaning of you shall leave them for the poor and strange you are a stranger a poor nation as it is written about you at the start I have been an alien in a strange land Shemot 183 390 but the rising meaning redemption is in your level lifting points to the lower Bob the fulfillment of Bob denoting Yezid lift with him with the son of Amram with your level being Tiferet using the name M E M H of yours being Yud Hey Bob Hey fully spelled with Aleph is that numerically reach M E M H which is the explicit name in its completeness following the two cups of lifting lift Hakam Takim Takab Yud M E M remain Tafiyud M E M he asks what does this teach he replies it points to Jacob was a plain Hatam Taf M E M and Bereshit 2527 denoting Tiferet so the explanation of the verse is with him meaning with the son of Amram he will rise lifting refers to the righteous meaning Yezid lift refers to the plain one meaning Tiferet section eight redeeming a Hebrew servant the section tells us that we must strive to serve our master to become his servant a person who toils in Torah in order to merit the world to come is called an acquisition as in when you acquire a Hebrew servant six years he shall serve after the acquisition he will achieve redemption Rabbi Shimon. Speaks of the Kriyat Shema and says that the cantor can fulfill a man's obligation for one who is incapable of praying. The six years correspond to the three initial and the three concluding blessings of the Amid of Prayer. Rabbi Shimon closes by saying that in the world to come one will not be able to find redemption through another. If I am not for myself, who is for me? 391. The precept that follows is to redeem the Hebrew servant and the Hebrew maid servant to marry off the Hebrew maid servant. And to contemplate the method of acquisition of the Hebrew slave, you shall furnish him liberally. Devarim 1514. As the verse reads, when you acquire a Hebrew servant six years, he shall serve. Shema 212. He asks what is meant by six years he shall serve and how is he to be purchased. He answers with the secrets of Torah. The angel Metatron I the servant of Hashem incorporating the six ends, namely Chesed, Bure, Tiferet, Netzat, Hot, and Yezid with the same number of the six letters being the Secret of the six orders of the mission with them one should strive to serve his master to become his servant money represents the right and Abraham whose level is Jesus and Torah was given from them 392 one who toils in Torah in order to merit the world to come is called an acquisition his money refers to the world of pleasure the buying is derived from to the most high all the possessor of heaven and earth Bereshit 1422 get wisdom get understanding Mishlei 45 393 after he acquires him redemption will come to him there are those bought forever and others bought for six years of those bought forever the verse writes his master will bore his ear with an all and work for him forever forever meaning jubilee denoting bina referred to as jubilee which amounts to 50 this alludes to the reading of shma which contains 25 and 25 letters of the morning and evening services which are the 50 gates of bina 394 after man joins the holy one blessed be he through their means becoming a servant through the yoke of Tephilin on his head and his ear pierced meaning open to hear cry at shma, as the word shma means in any language that you hear, here means meaning had mishma as one must understand the reading of shma since it is the secret of the unity 395 for that person whose redemption is dependent on the reading of shma which is the secret of 50 alluding to Bina there can be no redemption through the intervention of someone else. As he is pierced only for his master in this verse we do not find mentioned one of his brethren may redeem him Vayikra 2549 in regard to man's prayer he can be like a slave as it is written six years shall he toil here toil means prayer six years shall he toil points to the first three and last three blessings of the Amidah with which the cantor can fulfill man's obligation for one who is not capable of praying in this case there is redemption through someone else inasmuch as the cantor redeems him as the righteous who lives forever, denoting Yezid referring to the cantor, is then called by the names of Boaz righteous kinsman near kinsman faithful the message from those names illustrates that they redeem one who cannot help himself which is the secret of the law of the Levirate marriage and incarnation 396 Hashem is near to all those who call upon him Tehillim 14518 it is better for man to be a neighbor that is near than a brother far off Mishlei 2710 meaning the middle pillar denoting Tiferet, as Yezid is called a close neighbor and Tiferet is called a distant brother that is considered as the son of Yehudah that ascended above to Bina this world is the world of Jubilee consisting of the 50 letters of the unity of Kriyat Shema being the 50 gates of Bina as explained above in this world namely Malchut man can redeem himself through the righteous denoting Yezid being six years that incorporates the three initial and three concluding blessings. Of the Amid prayer, this is the secret of the small Bob denoting Yezid. This is the meaning of six years he shall toil. 397. However, in the world to come, the world of Jubilee denoting Bina, where there is present the 50 letters of Kriyat Shema, the cantor cannot exempt another from his duty as there is no redemption through others. So here have Shema in whatever language you understand, but it is critical that you read it yourself. Present here is the hint if I am not for myself, who is for me? I denotes Malchud, who had me refers to the world of Jubilee denoting Bina. This insinuates about Shema, where I does not apply, but M.I. does. Section 9A, two edged sword, the head rabbis of the Yeshiva have descended with Rabbi Shimon and are addressing Moses. They speak about the verse, the high praises of El are in their throats, and a two edged sword in their hand. They tell Moses that he is the mouthpiece of the higher and lower Shechina with which God. Spoke to him mouth to mouth for this reason they tell him Elijah has been delayed above and cannot come down because while he would bring wealth the poverty of Moses is a redemption for Israel Moses replies that he releases him from his oath and that they should all work to release Elijah so that he may descend to them 398 as soon as these head rabbis of the yeshivas who descended with the holy luminary rabbi Shimon heard these things they commenced to say to Moses faithful shepherd you are the mouthpiece of the higher and lower Sheshana being Bina and Malchud with which the holy one blessed be he spoke to you mouth to mouth through Kriyat Shema as it is written the high praises of El are in their throats and a two edged sword in their hand Tehillim 1496 as the yud of Yud Hey is the top of the sword surrounding your lip the Bab of Yud Hey is like the tongue of your sword the two Hays of Yud Hey are two edges in your two lips and surely the name. Of your master being the Sheshana speaks through your mouth, Yad Bab Dalit Hey Aleph Bab Aleph Bab Hey Aleph is in your thought that produced these fifty gates of Bina from your mouth. 399 Surely for these reasons cited above, their root is to perfect Malchud in Bina and place them side by side, and because of this Elijah has been delayed above where he is confined as in prison, and he does not descend to you because he would have come down with wealth for you, but he is confined above and descends not as your poverty is in reality redemption for Israel. Hence the Messiah says, Until a poor man comes, as the verse says, and by his injury we are healed. Yeshua 535 400 He said to them, If so, let us give him a release so that he can descend as he is more precious to me than all silver in the world. Behold, I pardon him, free him, and release him of the oath you to release him. If he needs pardon, pardon him, let us work to release him so he may descend to us. Section 10 A vow and an oath Rabbi Shimon says that Hashem's oath is the Sheshana the only daughter and that three people are required to release one from an oath a vow is superior to an oath because while an oath can take effect only on something of substance a vow can take effect even on something insignificant a vow is considered as being made on the life of the king Moses reminds the head rabbis that from darkness emanates light and that Elohim has made the one as well as the other he says that vows stemming from the world to come being by surpass the oaths which are considered only of this world anyone who swears by the name of Hashem falsely is considered as though he is demolishing the construction of heaven and earth and restoring the world to void and formlessness Moses says that falsehood abides in Samael's place and that the false oath can be compared to building heaven and earth on a base of falsehood falsehood cannot prevail as it must become void and Therefore he has demolished the structure and caused the fall of heaven and earth at the end the yeshiva had say that they will ask God to lower Elijah to Moses laden with riches for him 401 the holy luminary said to him Hashem's oath is the Sheshana the only daughter called Hashem's oath it is not for naught that it was decided that three people are needed to
Of Torah I wish to say that from for Hashem Elohim is a sun and shield Tehillim 8412 it is to be inferred that he illuminates and shields even below the sun this is true in his world meaning the world of Atzalut but not in the common world meaning the three worlds of Bria Yitzra and Asiya which contain Klippot that deny his unity this is so even though Elohim has made the one as well as the other Tehillim 714 meaning that the Klippot are also the work of Elohim for from darkness which is the Klippot emanates light when people overcome them this is until they are considered as common world and the light of the sun that is Zeir and Pen of Atzalut does not extend to shield them 404 most certainly the world to come being by is above the sun being the middle pillar denoting Zeir and Pen thus vows stemming from there surpass the oaths and take effect even in insignificant matters an oath is considered of this world denoting Malchud which survives only three years it is a verse Rights, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. Mishlei 1025, so it can only take effect on a matter of substance. 405 within Yizit are oaths made as it is written as Hashem lives lie down until the morning. Rod 313 lives I is called Yizit as the lower Sheshanah is called the western wall being Malchud his dwelling being the Mount Hetel Toflamed which all turn to the wall Hetel is spelled C-A-F Bav Toflamed Yud Hei Bav Hei denoting Z-E-I-R and numerically equal C-A-F Bav and surely the Sheshanah is the Mount Hetel of Z-E-I-R and based on the verse his locks had kept it so tough are wavy Hetel Talim and black as the raven Sure Hashirim 511 it was established that every tip had cots of any letter contains each Hetel of rules the Dalit of one Hebeshad Aleph Shet Dalit is a hill that all turn to denoting Malchud this tip of the Dalit that differentiates it from the Resh form which denotes Yizit is caught between the Aleph and Shet of the word Eshad denoting Zeir Enpen and the Dalit of Eshad denoting Malchut thus the verse for all that is in heaven and on earth I de Rehamim 2911 as Targum Yonatan reads it is caught between heaven and earth meaning that all I is another name for Yizid and it is held between Zeir Enpen referred to as heaven and Malchut referred to as earth 406 upon it Yizid have the masters of the Mishnah stated in tractate Chagigah on what does the world stand on one pillar whose name is righteous meaning Yizid or as it is written but the righteous is an everlasting foundation surely it is the covenant in the oath denoting Malchut upon this pillar stands Aleph Shet and Dalit which are heaven and earth as it is written if my covenant be not day and night it would be as if I have not established the ordinances of heaven and earth here may 3325 Aleph Shet point to heaven as written then hear you in heaven I may Lashim 832 which refers to Zeir Enpen and Dalit points to earth as the verse reads and it Earth is my footstool, Yeshaya 661, denoting Malchut 407, and since the covenant denoting Yezid is held between heaven and earth, denoting male and female, and contains an oath being Malchut, where the verse reads, As Hashem lives lie down until the morning, so an oath is dependent upon Yezid, referred to as living one who swears by his name falsely, is considered like one who demolishes the construction of heaven and earth, and restores the world to void and formlessness when man removes it. Tip being Yezid from the Dalit of Eshad being Malchut, what remains is another Hebeker Aleph Shetresh, namely Samael, referred to as the other in whose place abides falsehood, this can be compared to building heaven and earth on a base of falsehood, truth prevails, falsehood cannot as it must become void, as such he has demolished the structure and caused the fall of heaven and earth, 408, this one who swears falsely is like the verse he threw earth from the heavens, the glory had Tiferet. Of Israel, Egypt 21, he asks who placed earth in heaven so that it could be cast out from there. He answers, it points to the Sheshanah called earth and Tiferet called heaven. Hebshamayim is with her as it did not part from her even at her downfall. This concept is found in the verse Hashem is my name and my glory I shall give to another. Yeshayah 428, how do we know that truth denoting Zeir and fell with her? As it is written, and it cast down the truth to the ground. Daniel 812, so we see. That which causes the fall of Malchud likewise causes the fall of Zeir and and so he who swears falsely causes the downfall of heaven and earth. One who swears truthfully fulfills the verse, truth will spring out of the earth. Tehillim 8512, the initials of which spell out Emma truth, which is the middle pillar, meaning Zeir and that is called truth upon which stands the structure as written. Elohim created the Beersheet 11, the last letters of which spell out Emma, then the verse continues. The heaven and the earth, so we see that the structure of heaven and earth is based on truth 409 as the oath is the edifice of this world, Malchut, it having no continuity without Yezid, which is a matter of substance of how alluding to the world to come by the supersedes the oath and can take effect even on matters lacking substance as in order to prevail by it does not require Yezid, the male organ which pertains to marital relations for in the first three Sfirah Chakma does not need Shasadim with which to be clothed as also mentioned earlier, hence on Yom Kippur Day of Atonement signifying the world to come by for which the prayer called Nidral all the vows was composed, as the vow stems from Bina, prohibits marital relations as the mating of Yezid is not practiced in Bina as indicated 410 there in Bina the letter of the covenant Yod, meaning Yezid of Bina is the crown of the Torah scroll, namely the righteous denoting Yezid of Zeir and as explained in. The world to come there is no eating, drinking, and no marital intercourse, but only righteous people sitting with their crowns on their heads. 411. And since there can be no use made in this world, namely Malchut with the crown, being the crown on the head of the righteous practiced only with Bina, so the masters of the mission have announced that all who make use of the crown shall depart from this world. The crown in this world is below Yezid and not at the head of the righteous. The vowels are to be used by the letters, however, in the world to come, being Bina, there will be no use of the letters which insinuate male and female. Hence, in the Torah scroll, there are no vowels but crowns drawn from Bina, and they are the crown on top of the letters being male and female. So he who makes use of a Torah scroll will depart this world, and also one who makes use of one who studies Halacha, the rabbis predicted, will die. 412. All the Ashiva heads prostrate before him and said, Surely the Holy One, blessed be he speaks through your mouth, and to him do we bend. We realize from these words that no human being beside yourself could utter them. These prove the verse which testifies about you. With him I speak mouth to mouth. Bimit bar 128. Elijah must not be withheld from you. We must ask of the Holy One, blessed be he, to lower him to you, laden with riches and treasures for you. Section 11. The threshing flower and the one press. We are told that the Hebrew letters of one press are the initials of unison, holiness, and blessing. This is the Sheshana, the blessing of God. God is always with one who is well versed in the Torah and the Halacha. Moses speaks of the two worlds and says that for those who are clothed with the lowly body, the spirit cannot see what is above it, but that one should know what is above you. A watchful eye and attentive ear, and all your deeds are recorded in a book. He who is in the body has no permission to look at the angels or the Sheshanah or the Holy One, blessed be he, due to their sins, men are separated from God who covers himself with his wings yet in the time to come, yet your teacher shall not withdraw himself anymore, your eyes shall see your teacher, 413, a faithful shepherd, loyal servant in relation to you, it was said of the Hebrew slave, you shall furnish him liberally, Devarim 1514, you shall furnish him and be liberal to his sons with these concealed things, out of your threshing flower, but the threshing flower of your Torah, and out of your one press, the verse refers to the threshing flower and to the one press the same way as the scholars of the mission established, namely to the residue of the threshing floor and the one press, 414, the one press, Hebyak Hebyak Kabet are the initials of you, Shadlid Yunus and Kadesha Holiness and Barachah, blessing of the Holy One, blessed be he, this is the Sheshanah denoting Malchut, being the blessing of the Holy One, blessed be he, when she is the secret. Of the right, namely Shasidim, it is the holiness of the Holy One, blessed be he when she finds herself in his left, meaning in Chakmah, she is the unison of the Holy One, blessed be he when it is found in the central column, the letters of the Holy One, blessed be he equal 112, Yudbeka being also the letters Yudkabet for the Holy One, blessed be he is Zeir Enpen, and the Mukba is the secret of the numerology of Zeir Enpen, 415, the Holy One, blessed be he is with one who is well versed, Heb. Beki Bekab which is sp
Say the angel who redeemed me from all evil. Beersheet 4816 refers to the Sheshan of whom it is written, The angel of the Elohim removed. Shemot 1419 He will bless you in the world to come, which is by it, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Referring to this world, namely Malchut, so your governance shall be in two worlds where you live, one who is from this world. Malchut is called living as it is written, She is a tree of life to those who lay hold on her Mishlei. 38. Life there in Bina and life here in Malchut 418. This is not so with whoever is clothed with the clipot of the skin, flesh, bone, and sinews of the lowly body. His spirit dies there just as a corpse sees not, hears not, speaks not, and has no limb movement. So the spirit sees not what is above it as it is written of them in the Torah. Know what is above you. A watchful eye and attentive ear, and all your deeds are recorded in a book. 419. Numerous angels accompany him as it is written. For he shall give his angels charge over you. Tehillim 9111. But he who is in the body has no permission to look at them or hear their voices as they are fiery creatures that speak, sanctify, and bless both the Holy One. Blessed be he together with Israel. This is all the more so with regards to the Sheshanah that is above them, and even more so with the Holy One. Blessed be he who is above the Sheshanah that receives the supplications of Israel. 420 due to sins they were clothed with these. Clipot like people who possess the sins of their fathers or as the sages of the mission express when they maintain the sins of their fathers due to these clipots stemming from the sins the verse says but your iniquities have made a separation between you and your Elohim Yeshayah 592 and as a result of these clipot the Holy One blessed be he covers himself with numerous wings as it is written with two he covers his face and with two he covers his feet Yeshayah 62 421 in the time to come the verse says yet your teacher shall not withdraw himself lip you winged anymore your eyes shall see your teacher Yeshayah 3020 when you are in this world Malchut where you have no clipot skins and you may look at other humans and they at you thus you are called living and your world is the world of living but this lowly world is the world of the dead as all the deities of the nations are dead except Hashem section 12 he looks in at the windows rabbi Shimon tells Moses that Moses can see everything with the wisdom of his heart, the inhabitants of the world to come angels the Holy One blessed be he and the Sheshanai prophet can see only with his eyes but the wise man who perceives with his heart is better and in the hearts of all that are wise hearted I have put wisdom such as not so with eyes he says that for one who possesses a heart that sees more than a prophet surely his thoughts which are endless can see him who is endless, that which could not be perceived with eyes he looks in at the windows means the windows of the eyes ears nostrils and mouth with prayer the soul ascends through these seven openings 422 Rabbi Shimon said to him faithful servant with your eyes you are not able to see the inhabitants of the world to come nor angels certainly not the Holy One blessed be he nor his Sheshanai but with the wisdom of your heart you can see everything the inhabitants of the world to come angels the Holy One blessed be. He and the Sheshanah therefore Solomon about whom it is written for he was wiser than all men I may lash him 511 said for my heart has seen much wisdom and knowledge Kehillah 116 namely through his mind's eyes 423 but when it comes to prophecy a prophet cannot see through his mind's eyes but with his eyes alone as it is written I Hashem make myself known to him in a vision Demon bar 126 that is a sight by night or a vision by day both by eye the two eyes serve as two agents of the heart that mediate between the evil inclination of the heart and man and servant and it is their king for this reason the wise man who perceives with his heart's eyes is better than the prophet who sees with his eyes and similarly the two ears are two agents of the heart 424 for this reason the sages have declared that a heart sees ears understands knows and in the hearts of all that are wise hearted I have put wisdom Shema 316 so we see that wisdom understanding and knowledge are in the Heart with which heaven, earth, and the deeps were made, also it says, and I have filled him with the spirit of Elohim in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge. But three such is not so with eyes. Four hundred and twenty-five faithful servant, one who possesses such a heart that sees more than a prophet. Surely your thoughts, which are endless, can see him who is endless. That which you could not perceive with eyes, as it is written, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Shema three thousand three hundred and twenty-three, four hundred and twenty-six. Foolish-hearted people are dead, blind with the clipot of the body. With you, these do not matter and do not act as an obstruction between you and the Holy One. Blessed be he and his Shechinah members of the world to come and angels. He will come to you through the windows of the eyes, ears, nostrils, and mouth, as a king who enters a secret compartment to speak with his son. Such is the prayer of Israel. You may search all the inward parts of the belly, examine the kidneys and heart, and nothing is. Hidden from you 427 thus spoke Solomon he looks in at the windows Sure Hasherim 29 these are the windows of the eyes ears nostrils and mouth through these seven openings does the soul ascend with seven types of spice and so does prayer rise with these seven types of spice which are an art and saffron calamus and cinnamon with all trees of frankincense myrrh and aloes with all the chief spices Sure Hasherim 414 at the time the prayer so rises perfumed with myrrh Sure Hasherim 36 the Holy One blessed be he asks about it who is this coming out of the wilderness like columns of smoke perfumed with myrrh assuredly who had me is this indeed from the side of me that represents Bino which incorporates the seven types of spice which are Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadiyazit and Malchut that illuminate in the secret of fragrance of the illumination of Chachma 428 Kriyat Sh is composed of the fifty gates of Bina, consisting of twenty-five plus twenty-five letters twenty-five from the morning. SH Mod and 25 from the evening SH Mod it is composed of the seven blessings in the morning two before and one following in the evening two before and two following they are the seven Sphirot the greatness and the power of and the glory Typhoret and the victory Netzach and the majesty hot for all that is in heaven and on earth denotes why yesod years is the kingdom of Abraham 2911 denoting Malchut she consists of three spices perfumed with myrrh denotes Keter frankincense denotes Chakma and the powders of the merchant denotes Binacom and complete the precepts of your master section 13 you shall not follow a multitude to do evil we are told that a judge who does not render a truthful verdict is equivalent to having given dominion of the world to Samael when a judge is about to render judgment Gehenom is open before him on the left the sword the angel of death is at his next Samael stands behind him the garden of Eden is open to the right and it Tree of life is open above his head depending on his judgment he is killed and punished or rewarded as appropriate we learn that the judgment of the kingdom is the law the law that is in the heart and as we have already been told the heart sees the eyes of God the judge are open upon man and he looks in at the windows 429 you shall not follow a multitude to do a though incline after a multitude to pervert justice Shema 232 he explains a multitude is no less than three of the judicial court lacks three members you are not bound by its judicial decisions the court represents the Shechinah with three are the living creatures of the chariot namely Chesed, Bura and Tiferet the Shechinah is called the law of Torah truthful law the middle pillar namely Zeir and been referred to as truth Shechinah is his promulgated law a judge that does not render a truthful verdict is equivalent to having given dominion of the world to Samael and it cast down the truth to the ground Daniel 812 referring to Zeir Anpin who cast the Shechinah with him causing Gehenom which is the mate of Samael to rise with Samael instead of rendering true justice he encourages falsehood the truthful justice is considered the middle pillar while falsehood is Gehenom and Samael 430 as a result when a judge is about to render judgment the Gehenom lies open before him on the left being the mate of Samael a sword is by his neck which is the angel of death Samael stands behind his neck the garden of Eden is open to the right and the tree of life is open above his head 431 if he delivers a false judgment the angel of death seizes him and slays him and later burns him in Gehenom if he judges truthfully the Holy One blessed be he brings him into the garden of Eden and gives him a taste of the tree of life as it is written about him and take also of the tree of life and eating life forever Beersheet 322 forever as it is created by the Torah of which it is written she is a tree of Life to those who lay hold on her Mishlei 318 a tree of life Tiferet, its life is Chakma and by the life of the king indeed 432 forever the judgment of the kingdom is the law the law that is in the
Hey, that are in the first three fully spelled is Yud Bob Dalad equals seven letters. With these seven letters, he examines the seven openings of the head. They are called openings after the female derived from aperture, denoting the supernal IMA whose openings are open to receive the two letters Bob Hey in the body, meaning lower session. Not fully spelled is Bob Bob Hey equals seven letters. With these seven letters, he examines the seven lower limbs, hands, neck, and so on. They complement the body with which to perform the precepts 434. The wife of Zeirn and denoting Sheshanah is like the body, as the body of men below is drawn from her, and after the precepts it is called limbs, denoting the 248 limbs. After the Sheshanah it is called body, because from the other side the body means only the garments such as skin and flesh as written, You have clothed me with skin and flesh and have knit me together with bones and sinews. Yof 1011. Wherever the Sheshanah is not the body of lower man is called but the garment of man, denoting Zeirn and alluding to Torah called man as it is written, This is the Torah when a man dies in a tent, Bimidbar 1914, and according to the beauty of a man that it may remain in the house, Yeshayah 4413, where there is a precept denoting Sheshanah, so the body of lower man is called the body of man, just as we find the expression the essentials of Halashah and sentences of laws which are names of the Sheshanah 435, the Holy One, blessed be He is judge, denoting the central column being Zeir and from the standpoint of Bina, meaning the Mokin of the first three Sfirat drawn from Bina, being Yahweh Bahay, He is referred to as magistrate judge, I is called so from the aspect of Malchud, an officer is the ruler as it is written, and Joseph was the governor, Bershi 426, all the Sfirat are judges from the standpoint of Ima supernal being Bina, wherein are the Mokin as Tiferet, that is, drawn from IT is the judge, wherein are included all Sfirat, these are officers from Malchud, from which comes rulership and the righteous rules from their section 14, keep you far from a false matter, the commandment is to treat the protagonist equally and be far from falsehood, the section explores the issue of the evil man, goodness befalls him and the righteous, evil befalls him, even in the evil man there is still goodness existing somewhere, perhaps he will. Repent and overpower his inclination when evil befalls the righteous it stems from the tree of knowledge of good and evil the good inclination controls him and so he is righteous although there is evil present in him which is under domination the perfect righteous who has no evil inclination stems from the tree of life 436 keep you far from a false matter Shema 237 the commandment is to treat equally the protagonist and be far from falsehood so that no one will say there is favoritism in the matter regarding the holy one blessed be he it is written who favors no person and takes no bribe Devarim 1017 the last letter of these words equals one have a judge must be like the one dash one yud have without bribe so as to be in his image 437 so in judgment one should treat both protagonists the same and not bend the law to favor one over the other but give them similar importance until they receive judgment later each is judged according to his deeds 438 Masters of the mission have established that the righteous is judged by the good inclination and the evil man by the evil inclination. The intermediate man is judged by both the one who stems from the tree of life which is drawn from Zeir and has no judgment at all. No evil inclination such as the perfect righteous. The righteous goodness befalls him and goodness means only the Torah as it is written for I give you a good doctrine forsake not my Torah. Mishle 42 the righteous evil befalls him stems from the tree of knowledge of good and evil denoting Malchud. Why is he called righteous if he has evil which is the evil inclination referred to as evil. The answer is that the good inclination controls him and so he is a righteous man even though there is evil present which is under domination 439. He asks the wicked goodness befalls him refers to Torah that is called good as mentioned if so why is he called evil. He answers he is at the head of his evil inclination goodness is under his control like a servant serving under his master even though the evil one crowns the righteous and the perfect righteous can punish him neither is it good to punish an innocent man let the righteous Mishal 1726 because of that goodness that still exists beneath the feet of the evil man perhaps he will repent and overpower his inclination and the evil inclination will become as dust beneath his feet 440 from the aspect of the evil man goodness befalls him the Sheshana lies as the verse says and uncovered his feet and laid herself down rod 37 this is in essence and a handmaid that is heir to her mistress Mishal 3023 the maid is considered the female of the evil inclination the evil inclination is male and so it says and my glory will I not give to another Yeshua 428 and it says and the stranger that comes near shall be put to death Bimid bar 151 for the evil inclination is called another and a stranger 441 from the aspect of the righteous Evil befalls him. The Shechinah here is like a crown on the head of man. The maid, the evil inclination, is subjugated beneath her mistress. From the standpoint of the perfect righteous, there is neither a stranger nor an evil inclination here. From the aspect of the completely evil man, he has no part with the Shechinah because man can only have a share in the Shechinah from the good side. 442. Not all of the Shechinah is the same. The Shechinah of the tree of knowledge of good and evil is considered a throne situated in the world of Briah or body of man. But of the Shechinah of the tree of life being the world of Atzalat, it is written, Nor shall evil dwell with you. Tehillim 54. But since it is written, and his kingdom rules over all. Tehillim 10,391. One who causes a defect in her side in Briah or body of man is considered as one who causes dishonor in the matron herself. In Atzalat, dishonor of the matron is considered of one who cheapens her in her abode. Dishonor of the matron. Is equivalent to disgrace of the king Zeir and results in disgrace to Zeir and 443. Even more so for the one who causes her to move from her position in Bria and appoints the maid in her stead for wherever he dishonors her, the matron does not abide, but rather the maid who is defected and dwells in a defected place. The defect of man due to his sins causes defects to all his limbs to the extent that the matron finds no place to dwell. There is no remedy for him until he returns her. All his limbs, meaning he repents his sins. 444. The holy luminary Rabbi Shimon said, Faithful shepherd, you therefore make ready with this composition of 248 precepts the means to coronate the holy one. Blessed be he upon all the limbs of the Shechinah in each and every precept. And you are not concerned about your honor. Happy is your lot as you coronate the holy one. Blessed be he over the limbs of the Shechinah that are the men of virtue of all Israel, and as much as the men of virtue are the Sheshanah's limbs, so does the Holy One blessed be he cause his name to dwell upon you and coronate you over the upper and lower encampment. Section 15 The order of laws in tractate Nezekin cause of injuries here we learn about the judgments regarding the laws of damage. The four primary causes of injury are the ox, the pit crop, destroying beast and fire. Lastly there is man who is always prone to harm. Moses says that the letters of Adonai when rearranged form Dina, which is judgment. All judgments are executed by that name. Moses lists other laws which require judgment and he talks about damage, idleness, shame and weakness. We are reminded of the blessings that were stolen from Israel through heavy tax burdens, different kinds of harsh judgments and temple sacrifices deprived from the Sheshanah. The bull that has gored thrice has devastated everything with sin and destruction, anger and wrath. Moses also speaks about the exile of the children of Israel. He tells. Us that there are angels that serve the body and angels that serve the soul and there is a difference between them every lower level receives from the higher in man there is division between body and soul one being material and the other mental one being life and the other death but the holy one blessed be he is life and his Shechinah is also life 445 arise faithful shepherd to arrange the judgments regarding the laws of damage in the order of the name Yod Hei being the chariot of Elohim are twice ten thousand thousands upon thousands Lichin and Tehillim six thousand eight hundred and eighteen that is the ox eagle lion and man from the right side where there is Yod Hei such is the order of the four living creatures man lion eagle ox meaning that ox being viewer is listed last and according to the changes that take place in them so is their movement and order the animals on the other side are the caves of injuries on the left Chin and thousand also angel meaning the initials of ox eagle Lion man hence it starts with ox which is connected with the four primary causes of injury the ox the pit crop destroying beast and fire their last one is man who is always prone to harm 446 arise awaken with judgment the faithful shepherd commenced to say Adonai open my lips and my mouth shall reh
Elohim is the judge. Tehillim 757 447. What are these judgments? First, to judge the damages by the ox. Secondly, damage of the pit. Thirdly, fire damage. Fourth, damage by man. Later, the law of the four washes. Namely, he who washes free of charge. He who washes for a fee. The borrower and the renter. These correspond to four laws. The law of division between partners. Division of lands. Laws of male and female slaves. Laws of a claimant and a respondent in matters of money. Theft. Lost articles. Injury to fellow man and the four types of death penalty through court. 448. The Holy One. Blessed be his master. Had Adon through Adon. I as Adon stems from Dinlit law to judge with various judgments against the wicked maid servant who is heir to her mistress from whom stems all harm being demons and from whom come the souls of the wicked as established by the masters of the mission that the souls of the wicked cause havoc in the world and other allies harmful a thief evil and another else made is. Deadly poison 449 damage idleness shame and weakness must be paid to the Shechina and her children the children of Israel he explains idleness means idleness from studying Torah which the other side brings upon the children weakness because it causes them to be slack from the words of the Torah damage the various injuries by damaging demons anger and wrath shame because they shame the Shechina with their idols and asked where is your Elohim so much plunder did the evil maid servant Pilfer as it is written the robbery of the poor in your house Yeshua 314 450 so many blessings did the evil maid servant steal from the Shechina through heavy tax burdens different kinds of harsh judgments against the Shechina's children numerous temple sacrifices deprived from the matron the shaming of the matron who remained deprived of her four golden garments sparkling from the four rows of precious stones meaning Jesus Burit Tiferet and Malchut on the twelve gems as each of the Chesed Burit Tiferet and Malchut is part of three columns equaling twelve the cloak with bells and ornaments four garments of white with which the matron adorns herself before the king as the verse says and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant bear sheet 916 and also the stealing from the mistress namely the Shechina of numerous sacrificial offerings 451 the bull that has scored thrice the husband of the evil maid enters the abode of his master the king. With his four primary causes of injury, namely sin and destruction, anger and wrath, all calculated to destroy with his body, he crushes the vessels, altar, menorah, table, and other vessels, he lies upon them and destroys them with his tooth, he consumes the sacrificial offerings on the table, the rest he tramples with his feet, with his horn, he gores the priests and levites and devastates everything, he has profaned the kingdom and its princes, each of 22, 452, the pit represents the evil wife Lilith in her house, namely the prison, the evil maid sees the matron and her children, namely the children of Israel, put them in her exile, place them in twisted chains and tied their hands to the back, she dwells among the nations, she finds no rest, each of 13, furthermore, all that honored her despise her because they have seen her nakedness, she herself also sighs and turns backward, debate 453, and in addition to this is the evil clip of the harlot, the consuming fire as it is written, the fire. Engulfed Zion Ibid later a vile man came forth in the series of principal damages which is the damage of crop destroying animal as it says regarding man that he is eternally liable whether awake or asleep he sent in his cattle to graze meaning his legions which ate consumed pillaged the vineyards and orchards of Jerusalem and devastated everything 454 master of the universe you are true your Torah is truth you gave us the precept of Tephilin for the perfect righteous it serves as reward. For their deeds an article of beauty upon their heads and they serve their father and mother with this being male and female such as the body where all limbs serve the head and so the woman denoting Malchut and the hand Tephilin serves her husband meaning Zeir and 455 there are angels that serve the body and angels that serve the soul just as there is a distinction between body and soul so there is a difference between angels of the body and angels of the soul there is a soul over the Soul and angels over the angels as it says for there is one high one who watches over him that is high and there are yet higher ones over them. Kahila 57 this is the soul of a soul coming from Atzalat all of them one no division among them at all even though metaphorically every lower level compared to a higher one is like a body compared to soul it is because they receive one from another so the Shechina when compared to other lights in the world of Bria is like the soul to body but when compared to the holy one blessed be his E.I.R. and she is considered like a body but it is all one the body and soul not so with man where there is division between the body and soul one is material the other mental one is like the other death but the holy one blessed be his life and his Shechina his life as written she is a tree of life to those who lay hold on her Mishlei 318 section 16 those marked with the signs of the holy one blessed be he and his Shechina. We are told that God marked Israel so that they will be recognizable to the angels. Those who have Torah in them are marked on the right with Jesus. Those that did precepts are marked on the left with Bura. Those who keep Tefal and Shabbat and the covenant are marked with the righteous. Yes, the evil doers are without any markings of purity. Their punishment is poverty. Yet when that spirit blesses and sanctifies and unifies God, then he descends to that spirit with many hosts. 456. All those that are marked with the signs of the Holy One, blessed be he and his Shechina with the sign of Tefal and the sign of circumcision during the weekdays and are marked with remember and keep on the Shabbat. And they are marked by the written Torah given from the right and the oral Torah given from the left with the Holy One, blessed be he remember is from the right and keep from the left. Also with the Shechina remembering is from the right and keeping from the left. So also the head. Tefillin of man stems from the right and the Tefillin of the hand from the left so the Shechinah is called the Torah of Hashem is perfect Tehillim 198 from its right side and precept from its left this is all from the direction of the central column namely Zeir and that comprises judgment and mercy being remember and keep and from its position Malchut is also called remembering and keeping for from the standpoint of the precepts she is on an equal level with him 457 but from the aspect of Shechinah the Holy One blessed be he is considered remember and the Shechinah keep the Mishnah masters have established remember is applicable to the male and keep to the bride within the right and left from the chest and up of Zeir and the branches separate like the wing like lung where they separate above correspondingly the living creatures of which it is written thus were their faces and their wings were divided upwards Yeshiskel 111 correspond to the open Torah scroll. Now below meaning from the chest down is found in the called precept both Zeir and Pen and Malchut are together in one unity like the closed chapters in the Torah scroll where there is no separation so they are both even just as Zeir and Pen is called remember so also she is called remembering and keeping as mentioned it is not so above the chest right and left where Malchut is called only keep but not remember as a result at the place of unity the body Malchut is similar to the spun like stock of the lava if it breaks or splits it is rejected 458 in several markings did the Holy One bless be he mark Israel so they will be recognizable to the angels those of Israel that draw from the right are dependent upon the Holy One bless be he those that draw from the left are dependent on the Shechinah those dependent on the Holy One bless be he and his Shechinah are in one unity he explains those who have Torah in them are marked on the right with Jesus those that did precepts are marked on the left with viewer those who keep Tefal and Shabbat and the covenant are marked with the righteous namely Yezid 459 those of Israel that are beasts and ignorant are marked by the symbol of the removal of the foreskin and the splitting of the corona being two signs of purity and so are fowl also with two signs the crop and the peeled stomach the removal of the crop and peel of the stomach being the signs permitting the fowl to be eaten the two signs in animals are chewing the cut and split hoofs all are marked with two signs such as the foreskin and the uncovering of the corona that are removed from the holy people 460 but the students of the Torah are listed above some in the throne denoting Malchut some with the angels the four living creatures carrying the throne some with stars and planets some are marked with the measures namely the Sfirah through which the holy one blessed be he is made known those involved in the Torah and it Precepts for the sake of the Holy One, blessed be he and his Shechina, not seeking any recompense, but rather like a son duty bound in honor of his parents are indeed bound, and so this is marked in the central pillar, namely the Holy One, blessed be he and his Shechina, becoming as one one who has Torah without precepts or precepts without Torah, so to speak, is as if there is a split within him. However, when there is both Torah and the precepts, he is comparable to a tree whose branches spread to the right and left, but the tree itself is the unifying factor
Considered like a dead man some poverty is hidden from the eyes of man and some is public knowledge such as the sprinkling of cattle blood where the blood is shed before also there are paupers whose blood is shed publicly and they become green as corpses 463 if they repent do not complain before heaven and accept death without a murmur like cattle experiencing death without a sound and they confess saying I am speechless to speak back nor can I lift my head in arrogance if they will. Confess and declare the unity of the Holy One, blessed be he, and accept upon themselves to die, pronouncing one half Eshad with the twelve checks with the slaughtering knife of animals plus the knife itself. Now thirteen equaling the figure Eshad equals thirteen four hundred and sixty four. And if he blesses and sanctifies the Holy One, blessed be he daily with the bark of bless Hashem and Kadesha sanctification. And when eating or drinking, such as when the priest blesses who is Jesus, blessed are you represents. Blessing that sanctified us represents sanctification. When the Spirit blesses the Holy One, blessed be he daily with blessed and sanctifies him with the sanctification and unifies him with unification, which is his Shechinah. The Holy One, blessed be he descends to that Spirit with many hosts. Section seventeen A Spirit ascends and descends every night. They who offers their spirits as an offering to Hashem are happy, and every night their spirits ascend to him. They who Ascent by a precept, meaning the precept of Tephilin are happy. We read about the connection of deed speech and thought and about the seventy words in the psalm. May Hashem hear you in the day of trouble among the masters of Torah. There are two grades morning and dawn. The morning of Abraham, Jesus appears on the day of redemption, but the dawn precedes the day of redemption, being that such as the Shechinah from this aspect is called the star of dawn. The morning alludes to the right hand of Abraham, which alludes to Messiah, the son of David. 465 The faithful shepherd said to Elijah, Elijah, certainly when even ordinary people bless and sanctify and unite the matron, numerous hosts of the matron ascend with him and hosts of the king descend to him, and all with the purpose to guard him to make known to that spirit many novel ideas and forecasts within the dream of prophecy and many hidden matters. An example is Jacob about whom is written, and behold, the angels of Elohim ascending and Descending on it, Bereshit 2812 regarding the host of the king and the matron are written, and he called the name of that place Machanaim Latu Camps, Bereshit 322. However, the king and matron themselves do not descend there, whereas with regard to a repentant, the Holy One, blessed be he personally descends to that spirit as discussed. 466 Elijah said, Faithful shepherd, so it is as a result of your efforts in every precept to unify the Holy One, blessed be he and his Shechinah with all the host above and below. So the Holy One, blessed be he and his Shechinah and all her host above and below, unify with your spirit with every precept done as a prince whose parents love and kiss him. They do not rely on their hosts but choose to guard him themselves. 467 Explanation Your spirit stems from the central pillar, namely Zeir and being the Bob that comprises Abba and Iama, which are Yahweh, your soul is an only daughter from the aspect of the letter Hey, the lower Shechinah, namely. Malchut that does not move from you just as Abba and I am a guard the son namely Zeir and so they guard the daughter namely Malchut and the supernal hosts the two camps with the supernal thought which is Chakma they raise your spirit as was stated the thought of Israel came to mind being Yudhei Bavhe when does your spirit come up in thought when it is completed is said about it let everything that has breath let every soul praise Yahweh 1506 and with the Nefesh to being a hey. of Yudhei Bavhe meaning the soul ascends with the spirit 468 regarding the spirit of Hashem it is written come from the four winds also spirits O breath also spirit Yudhei Bavhe 379 when composed of the four spirits it is called the spirit of Yudhei Bavhe that is and the spirit of Hashem shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might Yeshua 112 if he is perfect with the four letters of Yudhei Bavhe the thought of him occurs. Namely Chakma and the cause of all causes adorns him with the crown within all this glory your spirit ascends and descends nightly all things are revealed to you with Chesed of which the verse says but you that did cleave of Hashem to Aram 44 you but not the nations of the world hence he that sacrifices to any Elohim other Elohim save to Hashem only he shall be utterly destroyed Shema 2219 469 fortune it is the holy nation that are called sheep of the holy one blessed be he ready to offer themselves as a sacrifice for him as it is written but for your sake are we killed all the day long we are reckoned as sheep for the slaughter Tehillim 4423 they would sacrifice themselves as sheep by fasting diminishing one's own fat and blood during a fast takes on more importance than animal sacrifice where the diminishing of animal fat and blood takes place as well as the nightly burning of the limbs and parts of the sacrifices 470 happy are they that offer their spirits as an offering to Hashem and nightly their spirits ascend to him if it ascends with Torah and the precepts meaning the Ten Commandments that were given by the Yud of Yudhei Bavhe as the number of the Ten Commandments are from the letter He equals five of Yudhei Bavhe adding to ten now with the Bab of Yudhei Bavhe with six books of Torah with the book of Bereshit five are called the five books as he counts two verses of and it came to pass when the ark set forward Bimidbar 1035 is an independent book as told by our sages of blessed memory so there are five books beginning with the book of Shema Bereshit is considered the sixth book if it occurs to thought being Yudhei Bavhe of the first three Sfirot it is written Yisrael occurred to mind let Yisrael ascended with thought to where does he ascend to Keter the site of the most wondrous concealed cause of all causes 471 happy is he who ascends by a precept meaning the precept of Tefillin containing the four chapters. Containing the name Yudhei Bavhe Yud of Yudhei Bavhe is the portion sanctified to me Shemot 132 Hey of Yudhei Bavhe alludes to and it shall be when Hashem shall bring you a bit eleven Bav of Yudhei Bavhe and hear O Yisrael Devarim 64 and the last Hey of Yudhei Bavhe and it shall come to pass of you shall hearken Devarim 281 all are included in thought meaning the first three Sfirot in the head to connect thought with the hand alluding to the Sheshinah referred to as the hand. Tefillin the Sheshinah is composed of deed speech the sixth Sfirot and thought she is composed of deed being the Hey alluding to her Malchut of speech being her Bina composed of six Sfirot being her Tiferet and composed of thought being Yudhav Dalat Hayalaf Bavalaf Bavhayalaf Yudhei Bavhe equaling fourteen letters equaling the numerical value of Yadlit hand which is her first three Sfirot the number fourteen alludes to four chapters and one compartment of hand Tefillin with two. Straps, now we have seven, two shins on the right and left of the tefillin compartment, now equal nine, with the knot of the strap, now ten, with the four chapters of the hand tefillin, which equal fourteen so that is why the Shechinah is called hand the hand of Yudhei Bavhe 472 about her it is written into your hand I commit my spirit Tehillim 316 the spirit is deposited with Yudhei Bavhe and the Holy One blessed be he descends to receive it and place it by the Shechinah. For the Holy One blessed be he and his Shechinah guarded who brought this about he who with every precept lifted the Shechinah to the Holy One blessed be he 473 the seventy words in the psalm may Hashem hear you in the day of trouble Tehillim 202 allude to the seventy sounds made by the expectant mother about to give birth being also the seventy sounds given out by the Shechinah for the distress of the children of Israel prior to redemption, considered then a day of trouble he asks. Why does she cry out? He answers, It is known that among Israel there are masters of Torah and kings from the aspect of the star of dawn, namely the Shechinah. There are two grades morning and dawn about which it is said, At your right hand are pleasure forevermore. Netzash Tehillim 1611. The morning of Abraham, Shesed appears on the actual day of redemption, but the dawn precedes the day of redemption, being Netzash as the Shechinah from this aspect is called the star or Dao of dawn. 474. Hence, the chief musician had Lamina written before May Hashem hear you in the day of trouble is spelled Netzash and Lamed Mem as the word Lamed Seach is spelled Lamed Mem. Netzash since the prevalence of dawn is forever had Netzash the numerical value of Lamed Mem is 70, which are the 70 sounds that the Dao of dawn cries out for her children when the darkness of the exile overcomes them, namely the darkness have Shachar of dawn have Shachar taking place at the last 70 years at that
Lion and his morning, namely the light of Jesus 476, that caused his glorious Tiferet arm to go at the right hand of Moses, dividing the water. Yeshua 6312, since Tiferet, the level of Moses, is considered a body that includes all six Tiferet. Jesus, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot, and Yezid, Jesus is his right arm. Moses is bound by the name Ayin, Bet, Jesus, which is the level of Abraham, as Ayin, Bet is the numerical total of four times 18 living. Three bobs equals 18 at the beginning of the three verses of And the angel removed and it came, and Moses stretched out Shema 1419 to 21, being the secret of the name Ayin, Bet containing the three branches of the fathers, Jesus, Burit, and Tiferet, as and removed the notes, Jesus, and came to notes, Burit, and, and stretched out the notes, Tiferet, there are three times 18 bound with the shin of Moses that contains three branches, which is the secret of the three faces, Lion, Ox, Eagle, as it is said about them, and the forehead, the face of a Lion on the right side, the face of an ox on the left side, and also had the face of an eagle. Yeshua 110 they denote Jesus Bure and Tifer at the MEMH of the name Moses IS for the likeness of their faces. They had the face of a man of denoting Malchut as Adam man, which equals MEMH being the 418. This being the secret of S Hashem lives had Chai equals 18 lie down until the morning with 313. Through the morning light IS completed the 418, which is Malchut and the name I bet that encompasses four times 18 in the four faces of the chariot indicated with the shin of Moses and with the MEMH of Moses. Section 18 to Messiah's the section begins by telling of Messiah son of Ephraim. Later it says that the verse may he have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth will be fulfilled in Messiah. The flag of Messiah son of David will come and the flag of Messiah son of Joseph. Will come the flag of Moses will be in the middle or central column. Messiah son of Joseph will consume the ministers of world nations, and Messiah son of David will divide the spoils for the children of Israel. At that time, no more converts will be accepted. Israel is compared to the five grains crushed during the exile. Once they are sorted from the straw, the other nations they will assemble at the place called Jerusalem. After leaving exile, they are compared to apples and other fragrant things. 477 of the left arm denoting Bure. It is written, the left pushes aside, the right brings near. Even though he sped up the time for redemption to the month of Tishrei, as the masters of Mishnah have posited that in Tishrei shall be the redemption, since Tishrei is considered the left side of months, it will delay the redemption in order that the Messiah son of Ephraim will not die by the judgments of the left. For Messiah son of Ephraim is the reincarnation of Yerabam who has accusers. Upon him for sinning and causing others to sin, so it was deferred from Tishrei until the approach of the right, namely Pesach Passover, considered the right arm denoting Chisa, then will they be redeemed to fulfill the verse, as in the days of your coming out of the land of Egypt, I will show him marvelous things. Mitchah 715, hence it is stated they were redeemed in Nisan, and in Nisan will they again be redeemed to fulfill the prophecy, but with everlasting faithful love will I have mercy on. You says your Redeemer Hashem, Yeshua 548, 478, and later all are taking from Bureau whence comes Messiah the son of Ephraim to avenge his enemies, so it is necessary first to cleanse the grain, namely Israel with the right, later it is necessary to burn the stubble which is with the left, as it is written, the house of Jacob shall be fire, and the house of Joseph flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, Obadiah 118, the gathering of the grain will. Be with the central column where it is said and was gathered Bereshit 258 where assembled to, to the house which is the Shechinah 479 but of the level of Messiah son of Joseph it is indicated now shall this company lick up all that are round about us as the ox licks up the grass of the field Bimid bar 224 referring to Messiah the son of Joseph called ox about them it is written when wicked spring like grass Tehillim 928 from Pesach until Tishrei will be the redemption called forever from then on will come their destruction as written that they shall be destroyed forever but until Tishrei arrives being an ox then it will be fulfilled as the ox licks 480 the support of Israel during the exile is with the right namely the lion Jesus but their rising their redemption is in the trunk of the tree denoting Zeir and therefore kneeling is always with the mention of blessed be denoting the righteous meaning is it as it is written and behold your sheaves. Stood round about and bowed to my sheath, bear sheet 377. This is what is written as Hashem lives lie down until the morning. Rod 313. For in their situation of kneeling and lying, they require support of Shesedim from Yazid rising is at the mention of name, being the level of the Moses above denoting that with Moses below denoting Tiferet will all the children of Israel rise as the limbs of the body when all line up at the time of standing with this. All who straighten themselves do so by the name about which it is written, and I know you by name. Shema 3317 481. Messiah the son of David designated as the lion, Shesed will be to the right of Moses, and Messiah the son of Joseph designated as an ox viewer to his left, meaning within the secret of the three columns where on the right stands Abraham depicting Shesed to the left, Isaac depicting Bura, and Moses himself depicted as an eagle. Tiferet stands in the middle their chain, meaning the three columns refer to his chain. Stems from Jacob meaning three columns incorporated in Jacob being Tiferet. This is the secret of the Shin in the name Moses alluding to the three columns incorporated in Moses being the central column to add the secret of thrice repeat holy unto you meaning that every column is composed of all the three from the side of the lion denoting Chisa. There are three facets of the fathers Chisa, Bura and Tiferet and all three are called lions the cattle meaning from three facets in the left. It. Three are called goring oxen now the three facets included in the central column which is Moses and Jacob are called eagles of them it is said I bore you on the wings of eagles and brought you to myself. Shema 194 the result is that the three columns become nine as each is composed of three the tenth or the fourth of the three encompassing columns is Adam man who is the MEMH of the name Moses riding over the three living creatures lion ox eagle being three branches of the Shin in. The name of Moses 482 it is written regarding Israel and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Bear sheet 126 meaning the ministers in the sea from the sphere of the serpent the minister of Egypt that will expand with the last exile from sea to sea and over the birds of the air. It refers to the evil crowd of giant Amalekites a mixture of all nations in the last exile from all spheres either Israel, Ishmael or Esau and over the cattle refers exclusively to the children of Esau whose dominion is over all the earth. 483 the verse may he have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Tehillim 728 will be fulfilled in Messiah and so with the two Messiahs and so with the children of Israel all through the merit of the MEMH in the name of Moses. MEM Shinhe being the face of man the flag of Messiah the son of David will come being of Judah with a lion marked upon it and the flag of Messiah the son of Joseph on which is the mark. Of an ox and the flag of Shiloh being Moses as his name numerically equals Shiloh and so we have the lion to the right ox to the left and eagle in the middle as Moses is the secret of the eagle namely the central column that incorporates within it right and left the man is above all as in each of the three faces a man is included as each of three creatures has four faces being the secret of the four tribes each having three living creatures lion ox and eagle totaling twelve by the face of man which is the MEMH of his name meaning the value of what Hebma MEMH will be the sons of Moses for at that time will be fulfilled in Moses and will make of you a greater nation and mightier than they be but bar 1412 at that time that Hebma MEMH which Shin has been it is that which shall be Kahilat 19 meaning Moses was the redeemer in Egypt and he will be the future redeemer and that which is to be has already been Kahilat 315 meaning the two Messiah son of Joseph and son of David as Joseph and David already existed 484 and only the Elohim can find the fleeting Ibn namely the children of Israel of whom it is said but you my flock the flock of my pastor are men Yashiskel 3431 they were the pursuit before the motley crowd evil wolves Benjamin is a ravenous wolf Bereshit 4927 against them that rents them and then will be fulfilled in the morning he shall devour the prey Habad Ibn meaning until Habad Shiloh comes Ibn 11 referring to Moses the morning being the morning of Abraham depicting Shesed meaning in the morning when the great Shesed becom
them who shall rouse him up, meaning at that time what deity can rouse him and not permit him to devour them, or what nation will be able to rise to stop him from eating them. 486 And Israel are like a dove pursued by the eagle, representing the birds of the nations of the world. At that time will be aroused the eagle of holiness, he shall spread his wings upon the mixed multitudes, Esau, Ishmael, Amalekites, and the evil multitudes of Israel, and devour them, and not one will remain to fulfill. That which is written about Israel, so Hashem alone did lead him, and there was no strange hell with him. Devarim 3212 487 From that time on, no converts will be accepted as the masters of the Mishnah have expressed it at the days of Messiah. No converts will be accepted. The nations of the world that will remain will see the Holy One. Blessed be he, stir upon them the beast of man to fulfill the words of the prophet. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Yeshua 6012. And to fulfill with Israel and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fear of you and the dread of you. Beersheet 92 488. Now from the subject of grain, five types of bread that are the most broken of them all with the threshing and melting are wheat, barley, spelled rye, and oats. Israel have been compared to them as it says, Israel is holy to Hashem. The first fruits of his increase have Tabuto also grain. Yermea 23 Tabuto is written with hay equals five to allude to it. Five types of bread when Israel will exit the exile they will be broken so that the edible will be collected from the refuse the straw which is a mixed multitude until Israel will be picked and recognizable from them already picked from the straw and hay 489 until they are sorted the yet of the name Yudhi Hay which indicates the tithe does not rest upon the hay of Yudhi Hay which hints at the bread of the five kinds thus fulfilling the oath because Yah has sworn by his throne Shemot 1716 the oath being that the name and the throne remain incomplete until the eradication of the seed of Amalek therefore chaff and straw are not subject to tithing until it is all sorted after the children of Israel are picked they will assemble at that place called Jerusalem like wheat after the removal of chaff and straw is brought into the storehouse so Israel will gather which are grains to Jerusalem that is built on the mountain of Hashem as it is written who shall Ascend into the mountain of Hashem or who stand in his holy place he that has clean hands and a pure headbar heart. Tehillim 243 to 4 clean is the corn headbar meaning grain after it was sorted out of the chaff at that time his kisses are clean headbar as the verse says let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Sure Hasherim 12 bar is Aramaic for son meaning at that time after being cleansed from chaff and straw headbar his name will hover over them and will call them Israel is my son my firstborn Shema 422 490 and so with the trees no tree is so broken like the vine in planting it is hammered as it has no strength to stand but lay on the ground its grapes are broken crushed under feet and so the olive is crushed Israel is compared to them in the exile as written you have brought a vine out of Egypt Tehillim 809 and so in the fourth exile for the vineyard of Hashem Seviat is the house of Israel Yeshayah 57 and likewise Israel is likened to the olive as it is. Written a green olive tree fair with goodly fruit, your Mayah 1116, therefore it is written, your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your house, your children like olive plants, Tehillim 1283, they here are side by side because Israel becomes broken like them in the exile, 491, after the grapes and olives are clean from all refuse, they become sanctified for the temple wine for libation upon the altar, the olives for kindling the candle, meaning the candles of the lamp who merits this wine not libated in idolatry, the mixed multitudes are like wine poured for idol worship among them are apostates and non-believers that transgress the whole Torah, 492, about Israel it is written, but were mingled among the nations and learned their works, Tehillim 10635, and until they are trampled under their feet in the exile, they cannot be sorted out from them about them, David of blessed memory said, why should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity of my persecutors? Also heals compasses me about Tehillim 496 about them Solomon said go your way forth by the footsteps heavy the heels of the flock sure Hashirim they are the same letters as Jacob about him is written concerning the original serpent who seduced Eve it shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel Beersheet 315 after leaving exile they are compared to apples and all matters of fragrance has happened when departing Egypt as it says I roused you under the apple tree sure Hashirim 85 section 19 concerning tithing the precept discussed here is to offer the first fruit and to confess by the first fruit and later to publicly announce the crop by tithing the question that arises is whether to tithe before or after the fruits and grains are formed Israel are compared to the tree and to grain they are called a large powerful tree with sustenance for all within it the Torah is sustenance on high and prayer is sustenance for those below even the sustenance for angels comes only through Israel because of their Torah study and their following of the precepts. The Torah is compared to water and to fire, both of which are required to ripen fruit. The sun being fire, those who study the Torah, the tree of life, follow the blossoming, and so they are tithed because Chachma dwells in them. 493. The following precept is to offer the first fruit and then to confess by the first fruit later to publicly announce the crop by tithing it. Masters of the Mishnah question in order to understand concerning tithing, if tithing should take place prior to its gleaning, meaning from time of its forming, so tithe according to that year or after gleaning, like the Ishrag, where the rabbi said in regard to fruits of the tree, you tithe according to the forming of the fruit. Some say with Ishrag, you follow the ripening of the fruits as the Ishrag is similar somewhat to the tree and somewhat to grain, namely seeds, where you tithe according to its. Forming and not like trees that follow the rule of ripening that follows its forming grain 494 and because they postulated to say blessing over bread on that which is well cooked excluding burnt bread but rather which tastes good so with grain you follow its forming which is equivalent to ripe fruit and it is tasty 495 Israel are compared to the tree and to grain like a is to the tree as it is written the first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring to the house of Hashem your Elohim Shema 2319 and so also and the first of the fleece of your sheep shall give him to 184 hinting to the children of Israel about whom it is written but you my flock Yashiskal 3431 and so Israel are compared to grain as it is written Israel is holy to Hashem the first fruits of his increase and so after being picked up from exile is the term for his tithing then they are called holy to Hashem 496 and Israel are called a large powerful tree with sustenance. For all within it within is the Torah being sustenance on high from the aspect of Zeir and within is prayer sustenance for those below from the aspect of Mukba even the sustenance for angels comes only through Israel for were it not for Israel studying the Torah sustenance would not have come from the Torah that is compared to a tree as is written she is a tree of life to those who lay hold on her Mishlei 318 and also from the fruit of the Torah namely the precepts 497 and so the Torah is compared to water and so to fire the waters would not descend and the sun being fire would not come to ripen the fruit of the trees only because of Israel for this reason it is written concerning Israel the fig puts forth her green figs sure Hashirim 213 referring to the doer of precepts and the vines in blossom give their scent but when people commence to repent immediately it writes about Israel arise my love my fair one and come away but from out of exile 498 by the Tree the tree of life meaning Torah being Zeir and those who study it the Torah follow the blossoming meaning as they start studying IT and they are tithed because the Yad being Chachma dwells upon them and so they are tithed one out of Yad equals ten with it is gathered from exile the last hay of Yud hay Bob hay being Israel the fruit of the tree which is the Torah and what is the tree this is Bob namely Zeir and being the secret of Torah the rest of the nation are tithed following there. Being plucked from exile however righteous men of whom it is written and you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of the tree Hadar Vayikra 2340 namely glory had Hadar and the deeds attached to and performed by students of Torah who perform precepts with this group we follow the blossoming as in a tree and so it says regarding them the first day as they do not need to wait until being plucked from exile 499 and so it was established in tractate Kitash and Ishrag's laws. That of a vegetable just as a vegetable can thrive from all sources of water and its tithing depends on time of picking it so the Ishrag thrives on all sources of water and so also Israel has a similarity to Ishrag in that it also thrives upon all sources of
20 And you shall be holy men to me. Rabbi Yehuda says that God told Israel that they should be to him a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, a holy people, and holy men. He considers the verse, but where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding? Saying that the Torah emanated from Chakma from the place called holiness and that Chakma emanated from the place called holy of holies. A lot to do with neither shall you eat any meat that is torn of beasts in it field is explored it is prohibited for those called holiness to eat of it. Rabbi Abba concludes by telling us that this law is considered one of the most difficult laws of the Torah and that all difficult matters of the Torah were given only to those fearing sin who keep God's commandments not to the other nations 500 and you shall be holy men to me Shema 2230 Rabbi Yehuda commenced but where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding Eo 2812 fortunate are Israel. As the Holy One blessed be he desired to honor them above all mankind first he said to them and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests Shema 196 he never removed from them his great love so much so that he called them a holy nation if it considered a more worthy statement love was not removed until he called them for you are a holy people Devarim 142 he did not remove his love until he called them and you shall be holy men live men of holiness to me the most worthy statement 501. It is written, but where shall wisdom be found? The Torah emanated from Chakma from the place called holiness, denoting Chakma. Chakma emanated from the place called holy of holies, denoting Kedar Rabbi Yitzhak said, so is Jubilee, denoting Bina called holiness as written, for it is the Jubilee, it shall be holy, lit holiness to you. Vayikra 2512 Israel is composed of them, Chakma and Bina as in the verse, and you shall be men of holiness to me. 502 at first the Holy One. Blessed be he called them holy, now he called them holiness. What is the difference? Rabbi Yossi said, holiness is most high in Chakma and Bina as mentioned, holy is not so as holy points to Malchut as it is written, and it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Yeshayah 43 in this place Zion and Jerusalem it is called holy with the most high when in Chakma and Bina it is called holiness. 503 Rabbi Abba was walking. And Rabbi Yussi and Rabbi Shia went along. Rabbi Shia spoke, and you shall be men of holiness to me. Was explained to mean Chakma. Whence do we know this? He replied, Rabbi Yussi, and all the scholars already said, It means Chakma, and it is because it is written, Israel is holiness to Hashem, the first fruits of his increase. Yirmiyah 23, first being Chakma, called first, as it is written, the fear of Hashem is the beginning of wisdom. Tehillim 11,110, 504. Now that Israel is called holiness, which comprises every perfection, the verse says, Neither shall you eat any meat that is torn of beasts in the field. Shema 2,230, as Israel are in a state of perfection, they do not nurture from the aspect of harsh judgment to which torn meat alludes. You shall cast it to the dogs, if it surely to the dog, which symbolizes insolent judgment. To also, since the harsh judgment dwells upon the torn meat and inserted foulness within it, is prohibited for those called holiness to eat of it. This is it. Essence of the verse, and you shall be men of holiness to me, neither shall you eat any meat that is torn of beasts in the field. So we see the connection between the prohibition of torn meat and people of holiness, but you shall cast it to the dogs where insolent judgment and harsh judgment apply. As the verse says, the dogs are greedy. Yeshayah 5611, 505. Come and see when the Torah mentions a thing that dies of itself. It refers to Israel as holy, not holiness. It says here, and you shall be men of holiness to me, neither shall you eat any meat that is torn of beasts in the field. There, with regard to a thing that dies of itself, it writes, You shall not eat of anything that dies of itself. You shall give it to the stranger who is in your gate. As for you are a holy people, Devarim 1420. Holy and not holiness, a thing that dies of itself is caused by one of Israel. It became so from an improper slaughter by one of Israel, so that it became forbidden to be eaten because of Israel. So the law is not so stringent however with the torn meat that is rejectable due to being ripped by wild beasts the law is more stringent so distance from torn meat is called holiness from anything that dies of itself is called holy there are other shades of meaning in relation to a thing that dies of itself as we explained 506 Rabbi Shimon said it is written here and you shall be men of holiness to me it is written therefore you are a holy people to Hashem your Elohim he asks why does it write to Hashem your Elohim instead of to me he answers the verse here speaks about the ultimate high namely of Chakma and Bina while there it refers to the Sheshan namely Malchut so it writes to Hashem your Elohim as Malchut is referred to as Elohim it is written and it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy rather than holiness because here in Malchut also called Zion and Jerusalem is considered holy while Above in Chakma and Bina we say holiness it is also written Yisrael is holiness to Hashem the first fruits of his increase had Tevoto Yermeyah 23 the word Tevoto written with an extra hay hinting about Bina being the first hay of Yud Hey and first alludes to Chakma as we established therefore and you shall be men of holiness to me 507 Rabbi Yitzhak was sitting before Rabbi Shimon he said to him it is written Yisrael is holiness to Hashem and the end of it verse reads all that devour him shall be held guilty what does it mean Rabbi Shimon replied it speaks well when it says all that devour him shall be held guilty as there is a verse and if a man eat of the holy thing let holiness unwittingly Vayikra 2214 and there is a verse no stranger shall eat of the holy thing let holiness if it tends since Yisrael are called holiness it follows that all that devour him shall be held guilty Rabbi Yitzhak kissed his hand said if I came only to hear. This it is worth it. 508 Rabbi Yitzhak said to him, Rabbi, we learned that holiness is considered higher than holy. If so, there is a verse, holy, holy, holy is Hashem Ksevayat Yeshaya 63, which expresses perfection, and yet it is written, holy. He said to him, come and see when you enjoin three holy together, it becomes one house, and this house is called holiness, being the sum total of the three holy, thus becoming total perfection. As a result, holiness is a generalization that includes all when Yisrael incorporates within the total faith, they are called holiness, which is the sum of all. As it is written, Yisrael is holiness to Hashem, hence it is written, and you shall be men of holiness to me. 509 a legionnaire, namely a general, asked Rabbi Abba, is it not written, neither shall you eat any meat that is torn, have beast in the field, yet there is a verse, he has given food, have to those that fear him. Tehillim 1115 Teref should go to dogs, why does it say to? Those that fear him, he replied, Fool, does it right? He has given trifa to those that fear him. Teref is written meaning sustenance, and even if you say teref is the same as trifa, assuredly he gave it to those that fear him. The meaning conveyed is they should be careful of it and not eat it, and what it mentions means that none can be careful in this save those who hold his name and all who fear him, and that is why this law is not given to you, as he knows that you do not revere him nor keep his commandments. This law is considered one of the difficult laws of the Torah and requires care. He gave it to those that fear him and not to others, and all difficult matters of the Torah. The Holy One, blessed be he gave to those fearing sins that are careful to keep his commandments, not to you. Section 21, and you shall be men of holiness to me. Rabbi Lazar teaches that since Israel are called holiness, and because they are holiness, no one must call his. Neighbor a shameful name, nor should he make up a name for him because there is a great penalty for it as a result of bad talk illnesses come into the world. Rabbi Abba says that Israel are fortunate because God did not call them just like holiness but actual holiness. 510 Rabbi Lazar taught it is written, and you shall be men of holiness to me. Why write men and then holiness? It would suffice to say you shall be holy to me. He answers good reason to write men of holiness. We learned. Israel had one freedom only as a result of Jubilee, denoting by after gaining freedom, Jubilee accepted them under its wings, and they are thus called its people, its children, and about Jubilee it is written, for it is the Jubilee, it shall be holy, lit holiness to you. Vayikra 2512, hence it says, and you shall be men of holiness to me. It's men indeed 511, and the Holy One blessed be he said this, and you shall men of holiness to me, and so Israel merited to be called brothers of the holy. One blessed be he as it is written for my brethren and companions sakes Tehillim 1228 as Yisrael are sons to Jubilee being Bina and Zeir and is son of
exhibiting cruel behavior but I did not call him a villain Rabbi Judah came and asked about this case of Rabbi Lazar he told him surely he is not liable and the proof there is a verse Hashem was like an enemy Egypt 25 but not an actual enemy were it now so nothing would have remained of the race of Israel in the world similarly like a widow Egypt 11 not actual widow but like a widow whose husband went overseas and she awaits him and being alone without a husband she is likened to it. Widow 515 Rabbi Shia said is the proof from here I ask it not from there which is the principal meaning the prohibition of image as it is written and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man Yashiskal 126 again it writes like the appearance of man not the appearance of man evidently like the appearance I ask not similar to the appearance Rabbi Yitzhak said it is written like the apple among the trees of the wood Sure Hasherim 23 meaning like the apple but not the apple to be understood like the apple is recognizable by its colors and unified through its colors as the unity of the Holy One Blessed be he is the secret of the three columns being the secret of white red and green as existing with the apple to be understood as Jesus judgment mercy Rabbi Yehuda said if I came only to hear this it was worth it 516 we learned it is written and he that stumbles among them at that day shall be like David Zechariah 128 meaning like David but not David for he says now behold in my trouble I have prepared for the house of Hashem I did Rahim 2214 and it is written for I am poor and needy Tehillim 861 and he was at the time king over kings and yet referred to himself so Rabbi Abba said fortunate are Yisrael that the Holy One blessed be he did not call them like holiness but actually holiness as it is written Yisrael is holiness to Hashem the end of the verse reads all that devour him shall be held guilty like a stranger eating of the holiness section 22 execute judgment in the morning we learned that the laws were instituted after the ten commandments because the earth can survive only with law consequently the world was created with law and so it survives Rabbi Abba talks about execute judgment in the morning saying that it means to judge before the judge has a chance to eat or drink so he will render a truthful verdict Rabbi Yehuda says that the institutions of it King are those mentioned in who exercise faithful love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. 517 We learned Rabbi Yossi said, Why did the Holy One blessed be he see fit to place the chapters of laws, meaning the portion of judgments after the Ten Commandments? He answers, We have learned that from the aspect of Bureau Torah was given to Israel as a result, it is important to establish harmony among them through lower and judgment in order that the Torah be the guardian from all sides. Rabbi Abba said, On behalf of Rabbi Yitzhak, the earth can survive only with law, without law the world cannot survive, so consequently the world was created with law, and so it survives. 518 Rabbi Abba taught it is written, Execute judgment in the morning. Your Mayah 2112 He asks, Why only in the morning and not all day? He answers, Morning means to judge before the judges has a chance to eat or drink, for we know that one who judge after consuming food or drink does not render a truthful verdict as it is. Written, you shall not eat anything with the blood. Vayikra 1926. What is meant with the blood? It is a warning to judges that they not eat before judging. For one who judges a case after food and drink is considered causing the loss of blood of the individual and giving it to another, as he is literally transferring blood to another through the means of false judgment. If this holds true in monetary matters, then how much more so in capital matters? Judges must be careful to judge only before food or drink is consumed. So that is why it is written, execute judgment in the morning. And it writes that I am Hashem who exercise faithful love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight. Says Hashem. Yirmiyah 923, 519. Rabbi Yehuda said, He who falsifies judgment is false to the institutions of the king. What are the institutions of the king? They are those of which we learned who exercise faithful love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. And further, for in these. Things I delight says Hashem and all these faithful love justice and righteousness are intertwined Rabbi Yossi said these are the institutions of the throne denoting Malchut as it is written righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne Tehillim 8915 and, and in mercy a throne was established Yeshayah 165 section 23 the assembly discussing the tabernacle here follows a long metaphorical exposition of the features of the head and body of the king's ear and pen hairs for it eyes eyebrows nose ears face lips the mouth the palate the body the legs and the kidneys linking them all to the various aspects and combinations of the Sfirot the text turns to the issue of judgment telling us that when judgments are not rendered below then the same occurs above all arrangements do not work properly then the mighty serpent controls and the righteous cannot draw from the nukba because she is not blessed Rabbi Abba recalls that Rabbi Shimon told him that. The river flowing out of Eden is bound and that it came out to water the garden Malchut to nurture it here begins the discussion of the tabernacle 520 we learned in the utmost secret that the head of the king is arranged with Chisa and Bura from that head of Zeir and hairs come down hairs upon hairs which are all flows through which the supernal and lower grades are united this means that through them each lower grade rises to the upper and they become one from few of the hairs are drawn men of power men of truth men of way who sigh who judge who are compassionate who possess secrets of the Torah about kinds of purity and impurities they are all called the king's hairs that is those which are drawn from the holy king and everything descends from the most ancient concealed one which is Eric and 521 the forehead of the king denoting Zeir and brings to mind the remembrance of the wicked when their deeds are remembered and their sins exposed this is Called for it of the king, meaning that Bureau becomes reinforced in its judgments and extends itself. This change comes from the forehead of Atika Kaddisha called Will 522. The eyes of the king means the overall supervision, supervision over the upper and lower. All these supervisors of the king are called so eyes with the eyes. The colors are unified, meaning white, red, green. By these colors are named all the supervisors of the king, each in his own way. All called colors of the eyes appears. The supervision of the king, so are the colors stirred. If the supervision is of Chisa, then it is white. If of judgment, it is red. If of mercy, it is green. 523. The eyebrows is the name of the place that the supervisor gives to all colors of the lower supervisors. These eyebrows in relation downwards, meaning corresponding to the eyes, are eyebrows to look and move on from that river that flows. Namely, by this is the place to draw from that river so as to bathe in the whiteness of Atika meaning. The light of Chesedim from the milk flowing from Iama he explains when Bureau being the left column extends itself and the eyes being the secret of Chakma become inflamed with the color of red from the abundance of judgment being Chakma minus Chesedim and Atika Kadisha being Keter shines upon its white being the light of Chesedim kindles Iama meaning Abba and Iama supernal and she is filled with milk denoting light of Chesedim that she received from Keter and she nurtures these eyes that wash themselves with the milk of supernal Iama that flows constantly Chakma that is the eyes adorns itself with those Chesedim this is the essence of the verse washed with milk Chirhashirim 512 meaning his eyes are like doves by the water courses washed with milk of Iama that flows constantly without stop as the merger of Abba and Iama supernal is an uninterrupted unity as expressed in the adjacent paragraph 524 the nose of the Holy King denoting Zeir and is the arrangement of it. Face when Burat expand and unite they are the nose of the holy king these Burat with one act of Burat join together and come out when judgments are stirred and each steps from their side they are scented only by the smoke of the altar then we find written and Hashem smell the sweet savor Bereshit 821 the nose of Atika being Eric Anpin is different however since it does not need the smoke of the altar and it is considered holy long suffering lit long nose and the light of concealed chakma is called its nose Heb Heb Jodam this is the meaning of the word praise as it is written and for my praise will I refrain Heb Eshetam for you Yeshayah 489 regarding this David commented in a praise of David Tehillim 1451 525 the ears of the king exist with the presence of good will I am a nurture Zeir Anpin with light of Shesedim and the light of Atika Kadisha shines the illumination of two hemispheres of the brain is roused and the light of Abba and I am a and all those Known as the hemispheres of the brains of the king and they inflame together and when they inflame together they are called the ears of Hashem and the prayers of Israel are received and consciousness then enlists for good or bad and with the stirring are awakened the winged ones that receive the voices of the earth all are called ears of Hashem 526 the face of the king being Zeir and is the light of
Chak McKindle Super Null Chisit from one light by a light shines called the brain of the king one light that remains suspended until the light of IMA ignites Yisrael Saba and Tevuna when the light returns it shines with five lights 528 he asks from what does IMA give light he answers from one concealed path that Abba clings to as the verse writes there is a path which no bird of prey knows 287 as the male clings to female and she conceives and gives forth five lights from these. Five lights are engraved 50 gates of manifold lights being Keter Shakma by the and Malchut with each composed of 10 Sfirot there are 50 facing them are 49 pure aspects and 49 impure aspects of the Torah there remains one not in this count namely the 50th gate the one sheds lights to all being the secret of the path of Abba about whom it is written a path which no bird of prey knows meaning Moses referred to as bird of prey as he too was not given the 50th gate Light of Abba remains suspended when Abba and Iyamah join and become clothed with the king's Z-E-I-R-N and they are called lips of the king as Abba is clothed with a supernal lip and Iyamah with the lower lip and as a result he decrees truthfully 529 the mouth of Z-E-I-R-N and the lips allow for a mouth opening he asks what is the mouth he answers that is concealed in the mouth of the king called Tiferet namely Z-E-I-R-N and as dead is the extension of Tiferet namely Z-E-I-R-N being the secret of Z-E-I-R. And then that ascended and became the central column to link Abba and Iyamah with each other all treasures and colors are united within in that being the central column as it is written and by knowledge that are the chambers filled Michelet 244 the stat is concealed in the mouth of the king and fills all the chambers and porches meaning it expands in Chisit Vira Tiferet Net Sachot and Yezit of Z-E-I-R-N and as Chisit Vira and Tiferet are called chambers and Net Sachot Yezit the porches when the light of that is stirred and emerges it is then referred to as the mouth of Hashem and the lips being the two lights of Abba and Iyamah when they meet the light of that they join by IT together and the matter is pronounced in truth through Chakma Tevuna and that and all words of the Holy One blessed be here pronounced with Chakma Bina and that 530 these three Chakma Bina that shed light and enter in the most inner areas meaning the head of Zeir and with the aspect of IMA and from there they expand and adorn with the one meaning the body of Zeir and as a result of the reasoning given above since the three of IMA are derived from one from Tiferet that ascended there with the aspect of the central column so one being Tiferet exists in three when Chakma Bina joins in one crown and the crown is called his mouth is most sweet sure Hashirim 516 they are the palate of the king found at the beginning of the body and called the sweetness of the king and so it writes, O taste and see that Hashem is good. Tehillim 349 Since the sense of taste is in the palate, and to this palate are linked all the appointees and officials of the king as it is written, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Tehillim 336 531 Within the palate, all perfection is present, so the perfection of all letters found in this place is discernible. Four letters, Aleph, Chet, Hayyin, are articulated in the throat. Their secret is as follows Aleph is the light of the most concealed at Hikakadisha, namely Keter, Shed is light of Chakma, not found nor grasped as it is written, man cannot know its price. Eof 2813 Hay is the light of Iyamah that sheds light, comes out, waters everything, nurtures the children, namely male and female, until the holy anointing comes and fills the righteous being, is it, and joins the lower nook of being Malchut that is blessed from it, and they do not separate from each other. The bounty of Iyamah is white from within the red, meaning that the Left called red is incorporated in the right called white as it is written the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. Sure Hasherim 46 this verse refers to Iyamah where myrrh spice is red and frankincense is white. Iyan refers to the light of 70 faces nourished from the breath departing from the mouth. There are the 70 names of the Holy One blessed be his E-I-R and corresponding on earth to all the souls of the house of Jacob who came into Egypt were 70. Bear she 4627. Jacob is the tree on earth corresponding to Z-E-I-R and his 70 souls are the 70 branches of the tree 532 from these four letters Aleph Chetayin four other letters Shine G-I-M-E-Y-U-D-C-A-F-K-U-F that emanate from the palate from the Aleph of the Aleph Chetayin group Gimel shines of the Gimel Y-U-D-C-A-F-K-U-F group being good reward had Gimel to the righteous called Gimel namely Gimel about this is written then shall you delight yourself in Hashem Yeshayah 5814 from Chetabit Aleph Chetayin group Yud shines of the Gimel Y-U-D-C-A-F-K-U-F group which is Chakma that becomes entirely enclosed within the Yud as it is closed on all sides containing no white so Chakma is not to be found as the verse writes nor is it found in the land of the living Yod 2813 as explained from Hay of the Chetayin group C-A-F shines of Gimel Y-U-D-C-A-F-K-U-F being the light and anointing oil poured from Iyamah to that place called Horn and called Rams Jubilee's Horn as Horn alludes to Malchut and Jubilee to Bina and when Malchut receives bounty from Bina she is named Rams Horn this is a kingdom of David hence so anointing of kings needs to be with the secret of C-A-F-533 the cup of Gimel Y-U-D-C-A-F-K-U-F shines from the Ayan of the Aleph Chetayin group just as Ayan is 70 containing the 7 Sfirot of Chisit Vira Tiferet Net Sachot Yezid and Malchut where each possesses 10 Sfirot so the cup is 100 as it possesses also the 3 first Sfirot Chakma. Bina at the completion of the 10 Sfirot it is so because the palate has the total perfection whoever is familiar with the secret and is mindful of it happy is his portion 534 the body of the king is the extension of the sphere of Tiferet wherein the colors white and red are linked being two columns right and left the body being the central column that unifies them the arms of the king are the lights of Chisit and Vira there are therefore the two columns right and left with the body. As the central column that unites them, the intestines, meaning the interior, are arranged with that that enters through the head and sets in between the two columns, Chakma and Bina, and extends to the interior within the body, denoting Tiferet 535. The legs join with two lights, literally two lights, meaning Netzach and Hot. The legs and two kidneys join in one place as the two kidneys are also Netzach and Hot. There gather the anointment and all oil of the body, and from there, from Netzach and Hot flows all holy anointing oil to a place called the foundation of the world, meaning is it from that place called world? What is this? It is Netzach and Hot, and so Hashem Seviat is his name, as Netzach and Hot are called Seviat, blessed be he and his name to all eternity. 536. All these arrangements join in the one meaning, Mukba, until it receives all the holy anointing oil and pours it to Mukba, namely Malchud, which is blessed from it. When is she blessed from it? When judgments are. Arranged below, and when judgments are rendered below, they are arranged above all adornments of the king, which are the holy name, are with joy and perfection, and he dwells in their midst, as it is written. Elohim stands in the congregation of El, he judges among the judges. Tehillim 821. Therefore, judgments are compared to fire, just as fire in a proper vessel gives forth light and cooks, but when improperly used, consumes and destroys. So it is with judgments 537. When judgments are not rendered below, so to speak, the same occurs above that all arrangements are not working properly according to the manner we described earlier. I am then deserts the children, they being male and female, the children do not suckle as it does not pour into the mukba, which is malchu. Judgments are stirred up, and the mighty serpent controls the adornments of the king are removed due to the judgment, since the mukba is not blessed. The righteous being as it does not receive for her, the mighty serpent has power. Woe to the world that is nurtured from them. 538 Rabbi Lazar said, My father revealed all these arrangements so he will not enter the world to come in shame. But why is it necessary now to reveal? Rabbi Abba replied, This is what I wrote from the Holy Luminary. I said it is for the friends as they know and understand these matters. It is important to know them as it is written that you may know that I am Hashem Shema 102 and, and they shall know that I am Hashem Shema 2946. Thus we understand. The things said from this point on the matters are treasured among us. Fortunate is our lot in this world and the world to come until this point. The Holy Luminary was adorned with this matter among us. 539 Come and behold, when I had seen him in a dream, I asked Rabbi Shimon Master, I learned that Yud of the name Yud Hey represents Chakma and this is assuredly so. Hey of Yud Hey why is it Bani? He told me, Come and behold, it is written and a river
His hand and kissed it during this period I was stirred cried laughed for three days I did not eat anything because of the ecstasy and also since I merited not to see him again still I feel bonded to him I see his image rising before me fortunate are the righteous in this world and next world of them it is written surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name the upright shall dwell in your presence tale of 14,014 end of the assembly of the tabernacle section. 24 And all things that I have said to you be mindful of we are told that it is important to serve God so that he will be mindful that no harm will befall us and that we must make no mention of the name of other Elohim Rabbi Yehuda says that the Torah cautions man in numerous places to observe the precepts of the Torah because the whole Torah is the name of the Holy One blessed be he 541 And all things that I have said to you be mindful of have Tishamaru Shema 2313 he asks why is it passive Tishamaru should it not use the active form he answers Tishamaru is correct referring to all things that I have said to you meaning I stress the point of serving me be mindful that no harm will befall you Tishamaru also be guarded by my protection alone and make no mention of the name of other Elohim if it is to be understood as we established another explanation of the verse and make no mention of the name of other Elohim meaning do not refer to it lest you will fall among nations in other lands and may become fulfilled what is written in a verse and there shall you serve other Elohim Devarim 2836 542 another explanation for and all things that I have said to you be mindful of Rabbi Yehuda commands here my people and I will testify against God here shall be no strange L among you I am Hashem your Elohim who brought you out of the land of Egypt Tehillim 819 to 11 David spoke these verses with the Holy Spirit let's examine them here my people in numerous places Torah cautions man in numerous places the Holy One blessed be he cautions man and it is for the benefit of man so he will observe the precepts of the Torah he who is observant of Torah ways and is occupied with it is considered as occupied with the Holy Name 543 we learn the whole Torah is the name of the Holy One blessed be he and one who is occupied with it is considered to be occupied with the Holy Name as the whole Torah is one Holy Name a supernal name a name Incorporating other names, one who deducts one letter from it is considered causing a defect in the holy name we learned, and make no mention of the name of other Elohim, meaning do not add or detract from the Torah as he causes a defect in the holy name and strengthens other Elohim. Rabbi Shia said, The name of other Elohim refers to those occupied with foreign books, not of Torah, neither let it be heard out of your mouth. It is forbidden even to mention them, learn from them, especially in explanation on the Torah 544. Rabbi Yehuda taught it thus, what is the reason for the verse? The name of the other Elohim and adjacent to it is this verse, You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. Shema 2315. The explanation is that one who keeps not this, the feast of unleavened bread, is equivalent to one who lacks faith in the holy one. Blessed be he, why the matter is closely connected to it. Rabbi Yitzhak said, So it is with all other holidays and festivals as they are all connected. With the holy name about this we learned it is written three times in the year of it 17 because from them is faith suspended being the secret of the three columns that Malchut called faith is constructed from section 25 every man of Israel who is circumcised should be presented Rabbi Lazar tells us that every circumcised man of Israel needs to be seen before the holy king in order to receive the blessings that flow from the fountain through a story he illustrates that Israel must remain separated from the unbelievers 545 all your males shall appear but he asks why all your males Rabbi Lazar said literally all males for they receive the blessing from the fountain of the spring denoting is it from here we learned that every circumcised Jew needs to be seen before the holy king in order to receive the blessings from the fountain of the spring this is the essence of the verse according to the blessing of Hashem your Elohim which he has given you Devarim 1617 and before the Master Hashem has explained the Master is Yezid because from there the blessings flow and they receive blessings fortunate is a lot of Israel above that of other nations 546 one time Israel made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem to celebrate the festival and there were non-Jews among them that year no blessings were present in the world they came and asked Rabham Hanasaba he said to them did you see any sign to indicate that the pilgrimage was unfavorable they replied we did see a sign when we returned from there all roads were blocked by water there were clouds and darkness so that none of us who went there were unable to return furthermore when we came to be seen the surface of the heavens became dark and stormy he said to them for sure either there were among you some uncircumcised people or idol worshippers for in such moments the blessing reaches only circumcised Israel the Holy One blessed be he looks for that sign and blesses them 547 the next year they made pilgrimage and idol worshippers were dispersed with them when they ate of the meat of the sacrifice and were rejoicing they saw the idol worshippers look like a wall namely sad they watched how everybody made the blessing but they did not they told this in a court of law they came and asked them what part of the sacrifice did you eat they did not know inquiring showed they were non-jews and they were slain they said blessed is the merciful one who saved his people the blessing rests only with israel holy seed children of faith children of truth that year the blessing in the world reached its scene they explained surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name tale of 14,014 548 rabbi she said due to the merit of circumcised israel the enemy is humbled before them and they inherit their land come and behold it is written all you males appear shema 3423 meaning circumcised males then it is written for i will cast the nations before you and enlarge your borders, Ibid 24, meaning in the merit of circumcision, the Holy One, blessed be he who possesses judgment and mercy, uproots dwellers from their place, referring to the enemy and replaces dwellers to their place, meaning the children of Israel. For this reason, all you males appear before the Master Hashem, namely the Holy One, blessed be he who is Typhoret, possessing judgment and mercy, and so he can uproot some and replace with others. Rabbi Yehuda said, The Master resembles the words in the verse, Behold, the Master Hashem, Seviat shall lot the bow with terror, Yeshaya 1033, which refers to uprooting dwellers, and there shall come forth a rod, Yeshaya 111, refers to bringing back dwellers. It is all the same judgment and mercy working together, and he uproots dwellers and settles other dwellers. Rabbi Yitzhak said, There is a Master which is Typhoret, and there is a Master Hebadon, which is yes, all are dependent in one, namely Malchut, called Adonai. Section 26 The Holy One Blessed Be He is called Adonai Rabbi Yossi says that Adonai refers to visions of Elohim that includes Sir Enfin and Malchut Rabbi Yehuda adds that sometimes the celestial are called with names of the lower levels and sometimes the lower are called by names of the celestial 549 Rabbi Yehuda said Adonai when written out fully is spelled Alatlain P.E. Dalatlain Tov Nun Bob Nun Yud Bob Dalat is called the Holy One Blessed Be He denoting Z.E.I.R. Enfin not Y.U.D. Hey Bob Hey as it is written that which is pronounced as written I.S. called Adonai who is it Rabbi Yossi said it refers to visions of Elohim meaning Malchut called vision he asks it is written visions plural number Y.I.S. it written visions he answers it includes also the entirely of all Yud Bob Dalat Hey Alat Bob Alat Bob Hey Alat denoting Z.E.I.R. Enfin he asks visions of what if to the name Y.U.D. Hey Bob Hey or the name Adonai he answers Alatlain P.E. Dalatlain Tov Nun Bob Nun Yud Bob Dalit as both are thus pronounced the one Malchut is pronounced as written while the other Z.E.I.R. Enfin is not pronounced as it is written with the name Y.U.D.A. Bob but pronounced as this name Adonai and so it is written visions of Elohim in the plural number for it includes Z.E.I.R. Enfin and Malchut for this reason both are called by the name Adon Master this is the reason for the words of Rabbi Yitzhak 550 Rabbi Yehuda also said sometimes the celestial are called with terms of the lower and sometimes the lower are called by names of the celestial and so it writes the Master Hashem with a supernal name Z.E.I.R. Enfin which is Adonai which is a lower name Malchut in many ways are the words clarified blessed is the merciful one blessed is his name forever and ever section 27 the kisses Rabbi Yitzhak opens with let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth and explains that kisses are the clinging of one spirit with another as the mouth emits. And is the source of the breath or spirit one whose soul departs through a kiss joins the spirit of the Holy One blessed be he never depart from him 551 behold I send an angel before you Shema 2320 Rabbi Yitzhak commenced the discussion with
Rabbi Shizkiya said hence it is written and wine that makes glad the heart of man Tehillim 10,415 and this refers to wine of Torah and so it is written for your loves are better than wine as they are better for joy of the heart more than wine that makes me happier than everything else 554 Rabbi Yehuda said it is written and Jacob kissed Rachel and raised his voice and wept Ere she 2,911 he asks why did he cry he answers when his spirit clung to her his heart could not hold out so he Wept one may inquire about and kissed him and they wept Bereshit 334 he answers as we learned why are there dots over the word and kissed him it is because his spirit did not cling to him at all about this is written but the kisses of an enemy are profuse also deceptive Mishlei 276 what is meant by but the kisses of an enemy are profuse but one who kisses with love spirits cling one to another clinging with love one who does not kiss with love there is no clinging but deception what is meant by deceptive it is coarseness as the spirit does not cling with that kiss and it does not cling at all so therefore it is written let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth which is the clinging of spirit to spirit section 28 behold I send an angel before you this section talks again about the spirit clinging to Hashem Moses realized that the angel of behold I send an angel before you would constitute a separation from Israel and he wished it presence of Hashem to be with him. Rabbi Abba says that one should not mix a lower matter with a higher one. The outside should not nurse from an inner level as the inner represents holiness and the outer represents uncleanness. Rabbi Shimon clarifies the matter by saying that the angel was meant only to guard Israel and it did not mean there would be a separation from Hashem. Although other commentators on Torah have disagreed on this point, Rabbi Shimon concludes that Moses did not want an angel. As it is written and he said if now I have found favor in your sight Adonai let my lord I pray you go among us 555 we learned as long as the holy one blessed be he goes with Israel a spirit so to speak clings to a spirit about this is written but you that did cleave to Hashem to 44 with all types of clinging with no parting one from another when it was said behold I send an angel before you Shema 332 Moses realized this would constitute a separation from Israel so he said if your presence go not with me carry us not up from here Shema 3315 556 Rabbi Abba said what is written before this verse the first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring to the house of Hashem your Elohim you shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk Shema 3426 he asks what is it trying to imply with these words he answers do not mix a lower matter with an upper the outside should not nurse from an inner what is the difference between them the outer meaning the kid represents the aspect of uncleanliness while the inner meaning its mother represents holiness who is his mother it is the congregation of Israel Malchut called mother for the extension of Malchut reaches until the clipot in the secret of her feet go down to death Mishlei 55 its mother's milk means that those who are not supposed to must not suckle from that side 557 here is written behold I send my angel before you so Israel who are the innermost and are clinging with Hashem are given over to the angel representing the outer aspect Moses said I received the promise from you that you would never part from us for as a result of the precept of the first fruits the outer world should not intermingle with the inner as explained surely if your presence go not with me carry us not up from here for in what shall it be known one must not insist that the latter verse is quoted from Kitis as there is no chronological order in the Torah 558 Rabbi Lazar said the statement the Holy One. Blessed be he uttered out of love for Israel and to find favor with them. It is similar to the case of a king who wanted to go with his son and not forsake him. The son came but feared to ask the king to go with him. The king spoke up to say general so and so will go along to protect you later. He said be careful of him as he is not a perfect man. The son said if so either I stay here or you go with me but I will not part from you. So the holy one blessed be he first said I send an angel before you. To keep you in the way later he said be careful of him at that moment Moses said if your presence go not with me 559 Rabbi Shimon arrived found him Rabbi Lazar speaking this statement he said Lazar my son what you are saying is fine but come and behold in this place when the Holy One blessed be he said behold I sent an angel Moses said nothing or retorted why at this point there was no separation from him as the angel was sent only to guard them and this matter was established with the friends however things were different regarding the verse and I will send an angel before you and I will drive out for I will not go up in your midst Shema 332 others understand these passages in an opposite fashion here the verse indicates separation whereas there there is no separation the early commentators did not see it this way when you look into the matter everything turns out to be fine each based their community using one interpretation 561 did Moses respond this happened when he said and I will send an angel before you after which it is written for I will not go up in your midst but here it is written behold I send an angel and the verse does not elaborate with the words for I will not go up in your midst hence it says here but if you shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak Shema 2322 all that I speak exactly so it writes next to it then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries if it all is dependent upon him blessed be he there is no separation here so Moses did not answer back 561 Rabbi Yehuda said if you question that in both verses we are talking about an actual angel with separation still Moses did not reply as he had no strong position since we see that even with regard to the verse in the portion of Tisa and I will send an angel before you Moses did not immediately react when did he answer when the verse writes if your presence go not with me carry us not up from here as a reaction to the verse my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest Shema 3314 there he could react Rabbi Shimon said in summary Moses did not want an angel as it is written and he said if now I have found favor in your sight Adonai let my lord I pray you go among us Shema 349 section 29 you shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk here we learned about the prohibition of eating meat with milk and other dietary restrictions all designed to prevent impurity from entering people due to the foods they consume like Daniel those who guard themselves from impurity become perfect in the image of their master and cannot be harmed because his image is not removed from them 562 Rabbi Yehuda said thus spoke Rabbi Abba regarding the verse you shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk Shema 3426 a kid being of the other side should not suckle from the Sheshanah it should write in the verse the mother's milk why write its mother's milk if you say that the congregation of Israel being Malchut is the mother of an impure aspect this is not so for I have heard from Rabbi Shimon the congregation of Israel is the saintly mother joined in the portion of Israel as it is written for Hashem's portion is his people Devarim 329 563 Rabbi Shimon replied well spoken and the words of Rabbi Abba are fine things are intertwined come and see I am a being Malchut joined with them above in this aspect of holiness and also that aspect of impurity there are two one to the right and one to the left meaning every aspect has right and left so some of them are of the right and some of the left they all depend upon that mother the holy mother namely Malchut and are attached to her 564 when are they attached to her when this mother suckles from the other side and the sanctuary thus becomes unclean and the mighty serpent begins to reveal himself and the kid suckles from the milk of its mother and harsh judgment arouses so Israel need to hasten and come forth with first fruits and when they bring them need to commence to speak about Laban meaning the chapter starting with the words and Aram and Aram I wish to kill my father Devarim 265 he wished through sorcery to control Jacob and his holy seed but he was not permitted and Israel was not given over to the side and so they removed the power of the serpent so the kid would not be able to suckle the milk of his mother and so it says the first of the first fruits you shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk so that side would not suckle on the milk of his mother being malchute so it would not desecrate the sanctuary and awaken judgments 565 as a result those of the holy seed do not eat meat with milk and so also those that trace their lineage from the holy aspect in order not to give any opening to that not desired it depends all on one's actions as a deed below is needed to stir above fortunate is Israel more than all idol worshipping nations for their master said of them and Hashem has chosen you to be a special possession to himself. Devarim 142 and for you are a holy people to Hashem your Elohim and it is written you are the children of Hashem your Elohim. Ibn 1 566 come and see when deeds of Israel are unacceptable. The verse writes as for my people children are their oppressors and women rule over them. Yeshaya 312 literally rule over them so it is derived from the hidden lore of the text of King Solomon and so we found.
And the verse says you shall therefore sanctify yourselves and be holy. Vayikra 1144 One who wishes to profane himself he is assuredly defiled as it is written that you should be defiled have venetmetum by the Mibbid. 43 Now the word venetmetum is spelled in the verse without an Allah meaning a solid impurity more than all other impurities that he cannot ever cleanse himself as with other impurities. Furthermore he fears dangerous beasts for he appears before them as a kid and they are capable of harming him because the image of man has been removed from him. 568 Rabbi Yesa permitted to eat chicken with cheese or milk. Rabbi Shimon said it is prohibited for you. A man should not allow an excuse to evil types as the expression goes. Say to the Nazarite, go, go, go around, go around, but don't enter the vineyard. This item is forbidden for it entails the complex laws of ritual slaughter just like cattle. One who permits this brings to mind the verse, but you gave the Nazarites wine. To drink Amos 212, one who permits one matter tends to permit other things and a defect made above is one of them and the verse writes you shall not eat any abominable thing. Devarim 143 and he includes everything. 569 we learn for what merit were Daniel, Hananiah, Missal and Ezra Yaseb from their test it is because they did not allow themselves to become unclean due to the foods they consumed. Rabbi Yehuda said tt is written but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's food. Daniel 18 and we learn from the secret of Mishnah that the food of that evil Nebuchadnetzar Shadnitzar was meat and milk cheese with meat in addition to other foods this menu was served up daily. 570 Daniel who guarded himself from it when he was thrown into the pit of lions he was perfect in the image of his master and his image did not alter to any other image and so the lions feared him and did not harm him but the tyrant when the kingdom was removed. From him and his dwelling was with the beast in the field. Daniel 420 The image of his face was removed from that day. His image did not resemble that of a human and any animal that approached him thought it was its own kind and a female and so all came into him. Many times the beast of the field would have attacked him were it not for the penalty decreed for him as it is written and they shall scoff at kings. Chabakuk 110 As a result all denigrated him all the time. 571 Come and see. What is written and at the end of ten days they appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the youths who did eat the portion of the king's fair. Daniel 115 They appeared fairer meaning that the image of their master was not removed from them but was removed from the others. What caused this? They're not soiling themselves with the soil food. Praise a lot of children of Israel where it is written and you shall be men of holiness to me. Section 30 And he said to Moses come up to Hashem. This section talks about the covenant established when Israel were circumcised and the uncovering of the membrane was completed. Then there he made for them a statute and an ordinance. Rabbi Yitzhak explains that Moses sprinkled half the blood of the sacrifice on the people and half on the altar. The half that he sprinkled on the people made a bond with the Sheshanah so that the Sheshanah and Israel were perfected together through Moses. Lastly, Rabbi Yitzhak speaks about and there was under his feet a kind of paved work of sapphire stone, saying that this is like that with which the Holy One blessed be. He will build the sanctuary. 572. And he said to Moses, Come up to Hashem. Shema 241. He asks and he said, Who said this? He answers the Sheshanah. Come up to Hashem as it says. And Moses went up to the Elohim. Shema 193. What was all this? It was in order to establish with them a covenant as they completed the uncovering of the membrane. This did not. Happened when leaving Egypt where they were circumcised but did not complete the uncovering of the membrane now it was done and were complete with the sign of the circumcision as it is written there he made for them a statute and an ordinance Shemot 1525 meaning the circumcision and the uncovering of the corona and there he tested them with the holy sign that revealed itself in them now the bond was ratified through Moses as it is written and Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people Shemot 248 573 Rabbi Yitzhak said referring to the verse and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar the verse does not say at the altar as the altar hints at Malchut whereas enactment of the covenant is in Yezid but the verse writes on the altar for an exact purpose as on the altar hints to Yezid that is above Malchut and bow down afar off what is meant by far off he answers it is as the verse Hashem appeared to me from afar your Mayah 312 and, and his sister stood Afar off Shema 24 Rabbi Abba taught the moon being Malchud remained in its diminished state and so it is said and bow down afar off at that moment Israel merited more of the holy share and the implementation of the holy covenant with the holy one blessed be he 574 and he said to Moses come up to Hashem he asks what is the reason for all this he answers the Sheshanah said to him go up because I and the children of Israel will together gain perfection through you something that did not exist until this time then the verse writes and Moses took half of the blood dividing it in two as is done in making a covenant half of the blood he sprinkled on the people and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar as we explained that on the altar indicates yes and the verse writes behold the blood of the covenant which Hashem has made with you and put it in basins Hebagonot Agonot is written minus of similar to the verse your navel is like a round goblet Hebagon that Never lacks blended wine. Sure, Hashirim 74 Agonot is Malchut being around goblet, and hence it is written minus Bob. So the half of blood that he sprinkled on the people made a bond with the Sheshanah called Agonot, and thus the Sheshanah and Israel were perfected together through Moses 575, and Moses alone shall come near Hashem Shema 242. Fortunate is Moses' lot that he alone merited what no other man did. Israel was now writing what they did not merit until now at that moment. They lived in a supernal holy existence at that time. They were informed that in their midst shall be the sanctuary as the verse writes, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Shema 258 576, and they saw the Elohim of Israel, and there was under his feet a kind of paved work of sapphire stone. Shema 2410 Rabbi Yehuda commands this year's stature is like a palm tree. Sure, Hashirim 79, how beloved is the congregation of Israel before the Holy One, blessed be he that she Never moves away from him like this palm tree where the male never departs from the female one not growing without the other so the congregation of Israel never moves apart from the holy one blessed be he 577 come and see when Nadab and Abihu plus the 70 elders saw the Torah rites and they saw the Elohim of Israel for the Sheshanah appeared to them Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi said et and the verse rites the Elohim is written for a specific reason et tells us that it was from a distance et includes the inner part meaning they saw what was in the internal part of the Sheshanah 578 Rabbi Yitzhak said it is written this is the same living creature that I saw by the river Kevar Yashis 1015 what is this living creature Rabbi Yossi quoted Rabbi Shia a small living creature denoting Malchut is there such a small living creature he answers yes there is a small living creature denoting Malchut and a supernal living creature which is in Shisid Bura and Typhoret from the chest up of Zeir and Pen and also a very small living creature denoting a creature from the world of Yetzirah 579 and they saw the Elohim of Israel eat in the verses therefore a specific reason as we said and there was under his feet a kind of paved work of sapphire stone having the appearance of a gem with the like of which the Holy One blessed be he will build the sanctuary as it is written and lay your foundations with sapphires Yeshayah 5411 Section 31 and upon the nobles of the children of Israel when they went to the mountain with Moses and upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand the verse says and did eat and drink and Rabbi Yossi explains that this means they fed their eyes with the light Rabbi Yehuda adds that they ate actual food and fed from the light and thus connected themselves above Rabbi Lazar says that Israel was proper at that time and the Sheshanah was bound to them and in the future days the Holy One blessed be he will reveal himself to his children and all will see visually his glory 580 and upon the nobles of the children of Israel Shema 2411 referring to Nadab and Abihu he laid not his hand he led them to justice later but they were not punished now Rabbi Yossi said this matter can be interpreted to their credit as the verse says and did eat and drink meaning they fed their eyes with this light Rabbi Yehuda said they ate actual food and fed a bit light and thus connected themselves above meaning they extended the light from below upward there was no sin in this unless they turned astray later as explained 581 Rabbi Lazar said even Israel at that time were all proper and the Sheshanah